Today we're checking out RimWorld Anomaly. This is the new DLC by Ludion Studios for RimWorld. Uh, we are going to be playing the Sigma Male Adventures of Joe Bearden and his neckbeard enclave. Uh, but more on that in a second. This is a, th a horror-themed DLC. We're, we're dealing with SCP types of, of anomalies and scary beings coming out from the void. We need to investigate and research them, growing the cult of Joe Bearden un until he becomes a powerful cult leader. This is canon um we, we can literally summon demons and teleport people from the world to suck out their brain and sap their youth one of the most interesting dlcs released to date i've been looking at some of the features but yeah looking at uh looking at the game with only vanilla we are going to be using no mods uh just other dlcs but we'll be focusing on anomaly of course uh, I want to see it as it's intended, but disclosure, I did receive a key. Um, I didn't actually request one. I normally would have bought, as I have with many of the other past DLCs. Uh, but I did receive a key from Tynan himself, which was quite cool. Um, I, like, turn into it slightly a fanboy whenever I get a message from him. Here is the scenario. Um, we have a research expedition. All you really need to know is this. We have a, res a research expedition with two researchers or two colonists that have been blasted out of the sky, and one of them has been made into a ghoul because we got shot by a beam from a monolith. Uh, and now the other person is basically a living zombie, and uh, I will explain that in a minute. But we have some gear that gets us off to a slightly faster start than the normal game. I actually have a pre-loaded save that I wanted to start with. Uh, here it is, and let's begin. All right, so we've just spawned in uh, nearby the monolith of evil, uh, and Joe Bearden has spoken to the monolith. We are going to continue focusing on the, the on the anomaly. This is going to set in motion the events that make this DLC what it is. We're just going to allow Joe Bearden to begin the occult summoning right now. After all, he is our famed cult leader. Oh, look, it's already taken out three tiles of the mountain. It distorts reality all around it. Uh, and we unlock the anomaly research category, building category, and the entity codex. And we can study anomalies. So quite a crazy string of events has been set in motion. The anomaly DLC is basically going to be our entire quest arc here. We're just going to ignore most other stuff. Pog. If I have any say in it. Pog indeed. Also, thank you, Lavafa Lolly. Appreciate the prime. Um, but our our starting protagonist. Let's just get a look at our colonists before we set in motion these events. So we are led by Elon, uh, who I forgot to rename, but his name is Sam Root Boston. A pretty good name, honestly. Uh, but Elon is his is his moniker. He is a kind, sanguine colonist, incapable of none, uh, and we need him to be pretty good with intellectual and social. These will be useful later on. And then we have, of course, our expedition leader, Joe Bearden. Not based on any real-life people. Totally original persona. He is a quick sleeper, which is quite useful, and is good at construction. Uh, perhaps more interesting going on right here. Uh, I totally forgot to rename all my colleagues. Eh. We have Milady. She is our ghoul. Um, incapable of all work. Perhaps more thematically appropriate here, we have Milady, who is our ghoul. Uh, she was the one who was shot by a blast from the monolith on the ground. Here is the monolith that shot our research ship out of this guy. Oh, we did arrive in Drop Pod. I just skipped past the intro for a second. Um, but anyway, so she is kind of problematic. She's very good at melee combat. She will regenerate anything wrong with her health. Uh, but she is a ghoul, so she basically feels no pain. She is essentially a feral ghoul, but um, she, she can't really talk. She can't do anything. We can command her. We can draft her and move her around. However, she kind of needs to eat people or flesh or animals or something in order to stay alive. She won't have any other real interests. But anyway, it's all for Milady. We want to keep Milady happy. Um... Joe Bearden, e Elon, and our neckbeard compadres. Um, in the meantime, we will set up a base and we will get started. Let's just go ahead and give everybody some work right here. We will say work, 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 work all day and all night until we get this base finished up. We will go till exhaustion. I want to get these guys equipped with some important items to begin, though. Um, actually, Joe Bearden already is carrying around a knife, like a shank. 
Um, and Elon has a back turret as well as a pump shotgun. And he's a slightly better shot, I believe. So, uh, honestly, a decent place to begin. A decent place to begin. We will continue our development of the colony as we go. We are setting up a stockpile zone. I do want to just get some basic stuff set in place. We will get into more of the anomaly stuff in a second. But, um... We have a gray pall that has descended on the region, which is a little bit creepy. Um, and could lead to potentially an anomaly attacking us. So I want to keep all of my colonists close together. Oh, also, if Milady isn't fed for a couple of days and she gets hungry, um, she will turn on us. So we want to make sure that she keeps eating wild animals and stuff. We can command her to do that, but it's a little bit tricky with the way it's, it's done right now. Um... Anyway, we need an anomaly project. We'll handle that in a second, like I said. Let's just speed up time. Oh, and we might want a corpse dumping spot as well somewhere. Preferably outside of our walls. This was a really good spawn, was the reason I'm keeping it. Just because this is... Like, look at this place. There's only two openings into it right here. Incredible. I will put just one piece of wood down here so that they have to come through this opening. Um, Man, also just hats off to... um. Alistair Lindsay, like, the the soundtrack here is great, and it just hits in, like, really subtle ways that just do a lot of work for this DLC. I, I think it sets the mood beautifully, though. So, okay, here we go. We've got our steel into a pile. We've got some basic stuff going on. Um, I think the only other thing that I'm going to do right here, I want to keep my work, like, relatively contained. I'm going to set up a grow zone. It feels, like, too scary to go about colony management tasks, you know? Like, I need to be careful here. We will just slightly expand this zone. Maybe, like, one more tile. We don't need too much. It's only two people who are eating these plants. Um, but what are we at? We are at the 11th of April, May. Oh, I should probably show where we're at in the world, too. Um, there's the very beautiful anomaly. They really do a good job with that. Um, so we are pretty much in the middle of the world. It would be really interesting to do this scenario in, like, a tundra biome or something, just based on a lot of the buffs and debuffs in many of the anomalies that I've seen. However, I just feel that it's going to detract from the overall learning experience of the beginning. So let's continue with this. So we're not actually assigned to studying. We have a new work type called Dark Study. And I'm just going to wait till they're a little bit more set up with this, but uh, we can study, and instead of doing regular research, which we already have a good amount of regular research, it gets you started off on the right foot, we can do anomaly research, which we want to do void provocation. This is my preferred starting area, because it allows you to just start to call in more of the anomalies, uh, which can be kind of cool and often uh, a little bit scary. Um... Here we go. We are cleaning. Are you doing... Okay, we're missing the wood. Hang on a second. Just chop down a tree. We need you to just do a little bit of this. Just, like, clean up and tidy this main base area so that we can get started on our real work here, man. Here we go. Chop down this wood. Maybe do a little bit more cleaning. Okay, I'm all right with that, but those dead bodies are just degrading. Let's put down another zone dumping for dead bodies and we'll put that we want to be careful with where we put dead bodies now because some of the dead bodies can come back to life which isn't like super awesome uh and then attack us and that's bad obviously uh we will just do yeah i'll just put corpses in there that's fine but no chunks i'll just put that for all corpses right now we'll worry about the rest later Okay, cool. Dead bodies going down. How are we doing in terms of our mood? We've also got a new mood. Uh, oh, wow. Speak of the devil right on time. Um, we've got a new mood indicator in vanilla where it will just light up yellow if a colonist is tired. I'm thinking... Okay, cool. We got our first anomaly event. So this is a harbinger tree spout, uh, sprout. And this eats away dead bodies so it is good to create a corpse pile here so i will probably um uh, trying to decide this is kind of a long walk for them i might actually clear this one for right now like let's just delete this zone but yeah these trees eat dead bodies and that will be useful later on i'm just gonna leave them out here because i don't want them traveling too too far from the base for right now to begin 
Uh, but those will be helpful when we start to encounter some of the events that will kill us. So that is good to have spawned anyway to begin with. Right, I've got a little bit more chopping to do here, just taking down some of these things. And then maybe we'll get started with some just basic beds. Uh, we'll put them... Let's go, like, in here. This is probably going to be our living area, so I'll just preempt it right now with these two. Um, Joe Bearden is slightly stressed because of all the rotting corpses. Come on, Joe Bearden, you're going to be like an unwilling cult leader. We're just going to put you through a lot of stuff. He's also going to have to witness the horrors and the monstrosities on the other side of the void. However, he will shoulder this burden for our colony and be rewarded with eternal youth if he succeeds in his task. So, um, you know, like, it's a trade-off, but that is to say, um, I guess it's kind of worth it in the end. Keep working, work harder, and then let's send out Milady because she's not getting any food right now, and we don't have much for her. We do have some of that meat lying around, but I do prefer to kind of send them out. Uh, no, there's too many of those over there. Let's melee attack this turkey. And you'll see, she could actually fight really well in combat. Um, there goes Joe Bearden. Okay, Elon is chopping down more trees, and she got into a fight. I actually had her fight the turkey to death, and now she will consume it. Now, she's sustained injuries from combat, but she's n she's going to recover from these pretty fast. Um, which she will just do on her own. We don't even need to tend her, which is very useful. So let's just get down the rest of these. Let's get that room done. And then we will have you two go to bed in the daytime. I know this is a lot of work for day one, but... I think it's kind of necessary right here. Okay, cool. We've got a ro uh, roof over you. We've got you guys indoors. And our adventure begins. One full day, 24 hours of work, but followed by... Oh, let me just unrecruit my lady. Uh, and finish consuming that turkey. Don't let it go to waste. Now, we do need to be somewhat careful with her because she's going to... Um, she could pick fights that are, are more than she is capable of really finishing off so that could be problematic and bad but you know we'll keep an eye on that as we go because we don't want to lose her she is a very good meat shield in combat basically if you think of it like this it's kind of like a dedicated melee colonist which is more of a late game thing but for right now will be okay for us all right we are roofed i think it's time for bed oh god sight stealer has been revealed okay so we have one more encounter before we go to bed uh, this is the first anomaly. We can actually capture this thing? <laughs> I wasn't really, like, prepared to do that before bed. I'm just going to have Milady try to run back. Hopefully she will be faster. How is her health right now? Her moving is at only 94%, so Joe Bearden is unfortunately stressed right now. And has observed, observed rotting corpses. But he's not actually as useful in combat, so let's just have Elon. Elon, it's all up to you. You are slightly tired, but I, th I deem you more ready for combat. Let's go ahead and have them both um, switch back to doing anything. I will just give them anything all day. That's cool. Wow, we don't actually have a schedule for um, Milady. There she goes, just unrestricted all day. All right, let's take Elon over to Milady because Milady is going to be slightly not outrunning this thing. I will walk outside because she's not going to get all the way away. Um, yeah, okay, run in there. That's the right idea. But get Elon over here. How long is she going to be able to outrun this thing? Ooh, no. Okay, she did get hit by it. Did Joe Bearden go to sleep? Oh, no. Joe Bearden didn't go to sleep yet. Go to sleep, Joe Bearden. <laughs> we have to put Joe Bearden to bed. All right, it looks like Milady is in a bit of trouble. Now, normally she is like a, a, like a very, very powerful unit. But, uh, I kind of need to use her as a meat shield. She might die. I'm going to put this turret right here, and then I'll come out with Elon. We Actually, let's have Elon just stand over here. Cool. And she is basically okay to just leave there. Okay, sorry, we just got a raid. Um, we got a, a Twitch raid in the meantime. Okay, we have accidentally killed the sight, the sight stealer. I'm happier that it's dead rather than alive and captured because that thing is very dangerous. Um, these things can, well, as the name implies, steal your sight. But we don't want that. We don't want that to happen, obviously. So I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, 
later on, some of the anomalies we can resurrect, like ghouls later on you can resurrect. So if we lose Milady, Milady we should keep her in the refrigerator and eventually we could resurrect her. But I'm not going to do that right now. And in fact, I don't know if we should dispose of this corpse. That might be better later on. Anyway, what we could have done if we had taken it alive would have been to keep it at this holding platform. But there are other ways and means of studying the anomalies. And those ones are a little bit risky uh, to handle. So this might actually be better. Um, later on, what might happen is even if Milady turns on us, we could like... Um, capture her and then study her but for right now when she's on our side i'm pretty sure that we can't do that we also have an entity codex here uh we've already discovered some of these things so the void monolith is something that can be studied uh in order to get the rest of them we do have like this is a um like a toxic cloud that brings all dead things back to life you saw the sight stealer there um that is quite a scary one i don't like that one and harbinger tree which eats corpses there's also uh these are some type of shambling ghoul and then these are flesh sticks or something like that i don't know what this one is yet i've seen it but i don't know what it's called so i'm still kind of discovering that for myself as i go okay joe bearden and elon have a good night's sleep because there probably won't be many more left to come um, we also have the proximity detector. Oh, did we discover that from this? We have to do just a little bit of work right here. Hang on a second, I just have to... Here we go. My monitor was just a little bit dark. Um, uh, oh yeah, and then we... You can get some really bizarre events. Like, we had somebody come to our colony all dressed in red, who was beautiful and had 20 stats and everything, and was very, very suspicious. And we thought that she was going to turn on us. This was in another save file that we tried. But she turned out to be totally awesome, except that she was trying to free all of the anomalies because she was crazy. Um, I will put the proximity detector right nearby our base. Arguably, I should put it at the front gates. But what if the anomalies themselves get out? I mean, I can build more. Eh, maybe I will just put it. Ah, what do I do? I'll put it there. Yeah, that's fine. You can also extract power from these anomalies, too, later on. But we will just start with normal boy wind turbine. Yes, totally normal. I don't want to force them to get too far from the base. The last time my base was a little bit spread out. Let's go ahead and do... Oh, we also have hin hidden conduits. I'm going to try to differentiate things that I'm pretty sure are RimWorld 1.5. I'm pretty confident that all the quality of life additions here are Remoral 1.5, but we don't have to bury conduits in the walls anymore, which is kind of nice. We can just hide them. It takes a little bit more, um, uh, it takes double the steel, so, but, but that's not really that much when it comes to power conduits, man. So, um, anyway, speaking of which, let's go ahead and, I'm still gonna probably just bury them in the wall anyway, because, like, why not? I don't, I'm so used to it at this point, and it just kind of makes sense. Uh, the way that I... I mean, it already makes sense just to bury them in there anyway, so. Let's do that. Uh, we will also need a battery. Battery, battery, battery. Um, I just realized that I don't have Minify everything on, so I'm going to have to be pretty confident about some of these decisions as I go. I mean, we could always just rebuild a battery. It's not that big a deal, but... Yeah. Let's put that down inside of our wooden base. <laughs> nah, maybe we'll just dig out a hole in the wall. Let's uh, see where there's overhead roof. We will go into... Uh, let's put a small battery room. We have mountain overhead right there. So maybe we'll do one right... I'm just going to do a three... A th three thing there. Yeah, that will do. That will do. Oh, did Milady go crazy? We, now we gotta keep. If I forget to feed Milady any for like a few seconds during this stream, please let me know because I accidentally let her turn on our colony before. I'm just going to have her attack the turkey and stuff. She does gain combat experience here very fast too, so having her train on some stuff might not be a bad idea just because she's gonna recover and she's not immune to damage. Like, she will take damage and remember, she is a human body. I mean, she's a ghoul now, but. Like, we might as well get her some experience right here. So she's being scratched up by turkey claws. The nefarious turkeys. 
So I'm just gonna have her fight more of these things because she gets a stupid amount of experience from... I'm not even sure if this necessarily helps her in combat, having more melee experience, but I mean, it must, right? I guess we gotta be kinda careful with these turkeys, though, because... Like, um... <laughs> <laughs> you know, they could be resurrected from the dead due to some of the anomaly events, too. Also, Wolfelden, thank you very much for the sub. And the very last, uh, Lardine. Appreciate it. Yeah, she heals super fast. How do I have melee skill? Yours has shooting only. Yeah, I've seen them that they have shooting skill. I guess that's just in there because they're combatants. I really know why. I actually uh, customized these colonists before. I, I randomized them and did like a hundred rolls on each of them. I waited till I found a colonist with an, a beard. And I made that Joe Bearden. Uh, and you can get a, a ghoul with um, double passion in melee. I would recommend that. Not sure how much of a big difference. I mean, I've heard from other people that they seem to gain experience very fast too. All right, let's go ahead over here to our um, mm, uh, furniture. And we have the greatest addition, which actually wasn't even just part of the DLC. This is just a general thing. Wall light. Oh, I love you, wall light. <laughs> what, what would we ever do without you? Rip the person who made the wall light mod. Start a GoFundMe for the wall light person. Honestly, I should go to uh, that wall light create modders page. There's probably a lot of... These are always the best mod ideas, man. And when they get brought into... I mean, like... I guess not brought into is the right word, but whatever. Like, something similar. Or, like, functionally the same into vanilla. What else did this person create? Anyway, um, proximity detector. We already got that. Uh, let's go ahead and do some of the other anomaly, anomalous stuff. So Elon is really best at studying, so I'm going to prioritize him at studying the Void Monolith. So what's gonna happen here is he gets like a little bit of a progress bar up on this thing, and then under our research, we are going to get some Void Provocation when we do this. So we got 0.4. Um, I do believe when we provoke the Void too much, it will send us an anomaly. Correct me if I'm wrong about that. That might be like subtly wrong. I have to figure it out a little bit more. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly is going on. But yeah, uh, this is going to unlock a psychic ritual spot, which will allow us to perform a psychic ritual that might send someone into a coma. But at the same time, um, they become like a soothsayer, and they might send an anomaly to us, which we can study. So that'll allow us to get more anomaly research faster. R anomaly research is basically what will replace our normal research. Now, we could keep researching normally, but, I mean, for the sake of doing this DLC, we're going to play this through like anomaly the whole time. Cool, so we've just hit construction level 7. Ah, uh, man, I'm loving these wall lights. There's so much stuff that I really like in RimWorld 1.5 with the update. You know how Ludion does like an overall game update whenever they release DLC? At least so far, I, I think they've had a track record of doing that every single time. I really like all the 1.5 quality of life updates. I, I think I like them better than any of the other updates so far. Um, not that I didn't like them. Farming was useful, but it, it seemed very case-specific. Bassett93 also. Thank you very much for the sub. You get a guaranteed anomaly too? Uh, oh, maybe you had a ghoul that was incapable of melee. Aw, sad. So sad. Alright, so now we have 6,511. We want to max out that 4,000 experience. Although I did fight the ghoul against a... um a warg in an earlier playthrough, and it didn't do particularly well. So I'm going to go against... Like, weak, weak animals. First, I will fight this alpaca. Oh, whoops, I didn't realize that it was in a pack. An alpaca, get it? <laughs> so funny. Oh, God. Will I die to the alpaca? I guess I should have some backup in here if this doesn't work out, right? Nah, we won. Okay. Victory for the forces of Milady. All right. <laughs> 
We're just going to try to keep Milady happy. Come on, Joe and Elon. It's such like an unlikely alliance. Joe and Elon, there they go. All right, let's go ahead and do, um... Hmm. Let's make some beds. Who is the better constructor? Who is better? <laughs> oh my gosh, the puns are just off the charts today. Elon is not as good at constructing as Joe. Come on, Joe, bring in your infrastructure plan. Bring us some beds, Joe. Make a bed for Elon. Uh, what did we just have happen? Need a meal source, need batteries. Yeah, we do need a meal. I bet you that Elon, that real life Elon eats packaged survival meals. Doesn't that seem like something that he would do? I feel like he probably does that to begin with already, right? Here, let's give Elon a no. <laughs> Get up, Elon. Damn it. Um, well, we need a better quality bed. I, I don't think it's worth it sticking with that. Come on, Joe. Let's go. Or, like, you ever eat that astronaut food at a museum when you were a kid? Like, the, dude, do you remember astronaut ice cream? Oh, that stuff was the best. Oh, why don't I just get some? I'll get some for lunch. I live in Florida. I forgot about this. There's all the astronaut stuff down here. They do trust us with launching people into outer space, despite all the bad stories about our state. No, Joe, don't do it. We will make this a medical bed. There we go. I mean, it, it doesn't really make sense to. I'm just going to deconstruct it. Maybe we'll make it a prisoner bed. Whatever. Okay, so what we have now, uh, a couple meals. We also have the Vadinox, which is another way that we can study the void. So Milady is still recovering over there. Let's have Elon. He's hauling that. Man, they're so, like, dutiful with this. Um, let's go and have you read the Vadinox. And I'm also going to just get a few other things ready. Let's get some basic floors over here. We will have, let's just do paved tile for now. I want to keep this job simple. And I want the floor covered. I don't know what is under there. I'll just do this. We will do this over here. Just trying to cover up any dirt on the ground in our base area. Cool. Give them a minute to do that. Now, the Vadinox is kind of a... F uh, can I select it? So, basically, every time that we read this, they get a slight chance of a mental break because they're reading about, like, occult things. But also the void provocation goes up to 0.3 per hour. So that does take our research a little bit further. Can I actually speed up time here while I do that? I guess I can't see those both at the same time. But yeah, see, there we go. So we are getting, like, pretty nice um, void provocation here. Um, as it happens, void provocation. Oh, that is actually just the first technology's name. Never mind. I think I, I misspoke there when I said that. Okay, now we've also got another little hole in the wall. I'm just going to build a temporary battery area because I don't want to go crazy with the batteries right here, but it would be useful to have, like, one. Maybe I could do this out of... S Does steel burn now in vanilla, or have they updated that as well? It does, doesn't it? Oh, man. Well, whatever, I'm doing it anyway. Science will lead the way. Oh, or we could also do bioferrite, but I kind of want to save bioferrite for what it's actually intended for. We also have a mad rat. Will it just walk itself into the turret? No, but Milady has caught the rat. See, this is so useful to have one sacrifice combatant colonist. I mean, considering that so much of the time one colonist will basically just sustain injuries and it slows down your colony having the ghoul is actually quite useful melee attack the rat to death i wonder if she can eat rotten stuff too i'm not sure you guys haven't reminded me to feed her in a while are you trying to sabotage me man look at elon there he goes okay milady maybe we should have you do more combat before the end of the day. Another thing that's been added in is this quality of life thing where you can like see animals icons when you zoom out, which is quite useful for spotting them. Here, attack this squirrel to death. Here we go, auto save, cool. Um, attack the squirrel to death, there we go, and consume. Cool, all right, so just hang out, do whatever you want. Well, n don't do whatever you want because sometimes you want to eat people too and I that's not as cool. All right, but cool, we've got a basic bed area up. 
Uh, we can also go for like just some basic living arrangement stuff. Let's give them, yeah, maybe some dining chairs, two across from each other. Look at that, Elon and Joe eating across from each other at a table. How nice and civilized. Let's have um, a table there and we will have an end table. You know, I guess we could just reinstall this bed right here. And then put a, um, I'll put a dresser right here. And then we put a wooden end table between the two of them so that they both benefit from it. Amazing, right? Where's Joe Bearden? Okay, good. Building the battery so that we can keep that power. That is useful. All right, let's also chop down these trees in the way of this thing. Very good, yay verily. Victory for the forces of neckbeardism, sigma males, and uh, America, actually. All right, the D4. Thank you very much for the prime, appreciate you. Kraken Priest, also thank you very much for the 28 months. All right. Here we go. Um, all right, so our base is kind of humming along nicely. We're getting a little bit of research done. We're halfway through to Void Provocation. Our... See, like, this is a relatively smooth start, all things said and done. Let's... It's gonna be tricky to spot these new, um... Power conduits here. Let's just put that one all the way over there. I'm glad we got such a great constructor here in Joe. And we're running a little bit low on package survival meals, but we will get up a... Let's go to production and we will do an electric stove. We'll just do this all in one room to start. Cool, and it's relatively clean in here. So that's a help. All right, how do we do, Joe? There we go, and Wu-Tang. All right, we are finally storing power. Wu-Tang indeed. Uh, and we have a trader as well. I won't ignore the trader. Uh, I'll take a little bit of herbal medicine. That's not bad. Do we have any silver? We have none. Uh, do we have anything to give? Uh, actually, I don't really want anything. Never mind. I thought we had some silver. Go away. Here we go. I need to feed my lady again. So we will do a simple meal times four until we have... 10. That sounds good, just so that we have a little bit of food on hand. So she's fed. We haven't had any of these alpaca attack us, but now what kind of melee skill are we looking at with her? Cool, now she's got up to 11. I wonder if that's in her combat log at all. Like, how good she is at this. She seems to be beating the alpaca by a bit, right? And the other ones are okay with their friend just being led to the slaughter. But she basically, rec like, recovers all of her health every night, which is quite crazy. All right, what's the next thing? We don't actually need a research table in order to do any of this, what appears to be research, which is odd, you'd think, right? But now you are hauling the alpaca. Actually, you don't really need to do that. Why don't you just go ahead and back re back over there and read the Vadinox? Okay, now the monolith has a period of time between when you can study it, so we're going to wait on that. We'll just spend some time. Just read the Vadinox. What is the Vadinox, man? What is that like a reference to something? Because it's been called that both. Boomer's Handbook for Cooking. <laughs> well, Poi Cug's Insights on Machining. Okay, so you can actually gain some skill through books now. We've got basically a full-fledged Sims system going on here. I do like this. This is nice. I, I think there was a mod that did something similar, but it seemed like a very RimWorld kind of... Uh, um, uh, type of activity going on here. Oh, did Kleeper have his ghoul already? <laughs> Kleeper nicknamed his ghoul Starvig. Uh, I love Kleeper. Hmm. I'm gonna have to see his RimWorld playthrough when it comes out. I've watched a couple of people's. I watched, oh, I watched Hazor's today. Um, Hazor, who went, like, wide cam... He made himself a wide boy when he was playing it. I was just enjoying... I was enjoying it over the ham sandwich I was eating before this. I enjoy just watching him. I leave comments so that I can try to get some attention on his videos, you know. Try to 
uh, get his viewers to watch me instead. No, watch me, senpai. Ew, cringe. <laughs> no, I would never do that. No, oh, the only thing that Hazor and I do, actually probably the greatest thing that Hazor and I do together, aside from a lot of other things, has been um, our scuffed Stellaris playthroughs together. <laughs> <laughs> we, we won't go back to that one for a little while. Oh, I love our Stellaris playthroughs. They're the best Stellaris playthroughs. Uh, yeah. Blish Nasty, thank you very much for the Prime. Alright, so, Milady is, like, continuing to, um... Oh, her food need... Food is the amount of nutrition... So, I wonder why her meter is showing this special line in the middle here. The world may never know. Now, if we do run out of meat on the map, then she will get angry and turn hostile toward us or just start killing animals and then go hostile toward us. We won't be able to control her anymore, so we do want to keep an eye on that. But in general, this is one reason why it's kind of good to pick an area that is full of life, just so that these ghouls have somewhere to eat. Um, like an Arby's would be a great place for it. Let's see, are you fully recovered yet? Nah, you need a, a little while before I have you attack more alpaca. I do want you to be strong so that you can, you know, fight people off in combat. Okay, we have our colony names. It is the, um, the Sigma Male Neckbeard um, Enclave. It is the Sigma Male Neckbeard Enclave, and we are the, the... United States of Sigma um, Sigmerica. There we go. All right, cool. Hope I spelled that all right. Harbinger, another harbinger tree spout. So do these always sprout up right nearby each other? I suppose that they must. Might not be a bad idea to put some of these corpses in there now because this is going to become increasingly problematic because there is a void event uh, or an anomaly event that will cause these corpses to come back to life. Let's get rid of this corpse area right here. You know what we should also probably do is just start butchering the animal ones because if we can avoid uh, that, it is going to be better. And we might as well get more meat out of them if we can. Yeah, let's have a butcher table. Um, also, let's just start to chop down some of these trees. 96% uh, grown is good enough for me. This one looks fully grown. This looks fully grown. This looks fully grown. Cool. And that is just about fully grown, so I'll take that as well. And that one. Okay, cool. So we can do that. Uh, and then afterward... Wow, these two colonists are actually doing great. One thing that a lot of people have been asking is, like, what should I do because this start is hard? Just be really picky about your starting colonists. Uh, if you must go in with EDB, prepare carefully, or colonies, customizer, or whatever the mod is called. Um, just, I had to be super picky and randomly pick these, like, a hundred times when I made them. Didn't I make them before stream? Oh no, we did do them pre bef during stream, but yeah, it was like a half hour that we spent on the colonist randomizer. It is just kind of annoying. That's the way it is. Uh, we want to put the butchering table in a place that is not our kitchen, so we'll put it there. And what about Elon? Is he ready to do another ritual? So he's got three more hours before he can do that. Joe Bearden... Joe Bearden, wait a minute. You have the turret on you? Oh, he picked up the, de the deployable turret. But Elon had it still. Okay, we are in summer. Safety feature 27. Thank you very much for the prime. Oh, I forgot. Did I forget to make it Sigmar? Sigmar? Oh, I've lost my Warhammer 40k reference. This is supposed to be a jumbled universe combining America, meme culture, the internet, and Warhammer 40k. What have I done? I have failed as as a YouTuber. Oh well. All right. Well, AA canceled. There I go. All right. Okay. So now we have the. Well, here goes my the rest of my career. I will butcher creatures forever. We will do that. And let's have a place for 
Um, dumping stockpile zone. We'll eventually move all these. I just don't want to make 20 rooms to start. I want multi-purpose rooms. Um, actually, this won't really work for our containment room because it needs to be cleaner. But we don't have any of them yet, so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We just want um, no corpses. We just want animal corpses. Is that under animal? Yeah, animal corpses. And we want only fresh, uh, no rotten. Fresh animal corpses, and we will make that preferred. Cool. So hopefully they will bring in the turkey corpses there. And we will say um, these will be only... This could be either fresh or rotten, but... Yeah, just don't bring the animal corpses here. Oh, no, they've already brought the turkey there. Oh, well, whatever. We lost one. Never mind. Cool. All right, so we have that. And we are getting the meat in here, too. All right, and do we have any meals yet? Cook simple meal times four. Good enough. All right, so cool. We've got our basic base operation in line. Okay, Milady is getting hungry again. This is going to be continuously... A thing that occurs. Let's attack this Ibex doe. Let's see what the other one thinks of it. The other one doesn't really seem to care. Okay, good. Ibex does are a little bit tougher than alpaca though, right? So, no, go all the way to death. What's kind of cool is that Milady can eat the corpse and then we still can skin it. So this is basically a free hunter in a way too. Like if geared right, I mean, are you able to just Haul the Ibex doe? Yeah, go ahead. Do it, Elon. Use the zombie-infested corpse to hopefully feed us in our colony. I almost want to get a refrigerator up and running right away, because it just this colony seems so disposed to having a refrigerator right away, you know? Uh, yeah, let's go under the mountain. Let's just call in the mega scarabs, too. That seems like a great idea. Actually not kidding here. I'm thinking if we have our planting operation here, what is currently our bedroom might ultimately make a good fridge, you know? And then we could put the beds over here or something. I mean, beds, yeah, you want beds on the side of the colony anyway, so kind of makes sense. Or we can put them all the way over here. This looks like a very defensible spot. Hmm, so many options here. We could even combine the fridge sort of with our containment. Yeah, I'm liking this. Uh, actually, this is not a bad setup. Not too bad at all. But I don't want to think too much about food preservation yet. This is an anomaly playthrough. So let's see if we can... No, you're not assigned to studying. We can do a little bit more void studying. And let's get our first void provocation. Let's get Joe Bearden to read the Vaddy Knox again. Where is... Who put the, va the Vaddy Knox down? There it is. Read the Vaddy Knox. Oh, cool. So they do actually bring it to the table to read. That's nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, we are about to get void provocation. Sweet. We've unlocked it. All right. So our first anomaly unlocked. Woo! Woo! Everyone, we have got an anomaly unlocked. Okay, cool. Uh, build a psychic ritual spot and perform peace eye chick rituals. Use the void provocation ritual to discover new entities. Very cool. Hooray. So this is kind of where the game gets crazy. Um, we can abduct someone from somewhere in the world. Perform a psychic ritual that abducts a random hostile person from anywhere in the world, putting them into a short-term coma for capture. This could be stupidly useful because what if it's someone with really good gear? More likely than not, it won't be because most of the geared up factions have no interest in you. However, it could be, and it could be really cool. You can then take the person and drain their brain through psychophagy, and then chronophagy will dr literally drain their youth from them into the psycaster. So you can create a cult leader, aka Joe Bearden, the leader of Neckbeardia and the Sigma males. And then you can use philophagy um, to drain their experience. So we basically make Joe Bearden into the immortal cult leader of the neckbeards and win the heart of milady and that is the secret uh sauce of this playthrough although we're being attacked by a colony that is literally called trash team so uh some things do remain quintessentially rimworld right here so i um my 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 victory will be swift though someday okay let's get joe bearden uh they're attacking right now get milady 
Get my lady to safety. No. Joe Bearden. Fight alongside my lady. Yes. Alright. Amazing. That is the idea of this playthrough. Aren't I such a brilliant content creator to have formed this madness? Uh, the one thing I can't get is the tactical turret seems to run out of battery, so I don't know. I don't seem to be able to power it. Uh, whoops. I thought you were the guy with the gun. My bad. I think Milady will be fine in this fight, though. Pretty confident about that. You know what? Joe Bearden, get in there and fight alongside her. I really don't want you getting hurt, but, I mean, if it's... If the guy with the club is fighting her... Oh, and we didn't even need to do anything. Now, there are heinous things that we can do to this prisoner, like... Geneva types of things that we can do to this. Oh, uh, wait a second. I wanted to actually show that there for a minute. This is a cool new thing. Now, uh, colonists, when they're down, yep, they can turn into a torso. I mean, they already are a torso, but they can crawl away from combat, leaving like a blood trail. So, very cool stuff uh, that they actually have some type of movement or manipulation remaining, but... I think for right now, this colonist is not that... I mean, great with plants, but I don't like that's useless with plants for right now until we have hydroponics, so... Yeah, sorry, we gotta... Hate to see you go. We can eventually make this person into a ghoul. Which is rather sinister. But... Um... We're not gonna do that for a while. Alright, so we'll leave it there. Milady, Consume. Alright, so we have our own real-life crazy people. Isn't this a nice colony? It's oddly overpowered, though, in a way. Like, if you know what to do with it, at first I was thinking this DLC is hard, man. Like, you have all these crazy creatures coming to terrorize and bother you. But no, I mean, just the fact that you have one colonist that self-heals eats. This is basically just a guard dog for the first part of the challenge. Um, really, really useful. Really, really useful. But... A bit annoying to progress in at first. Let's go ahead and fight more wild animals. Sign wave mood says, I love the sea ice series. Great to see you coming back to Rimworld. Hey, I love you back. Thanks very much for the very kind words. I was actually thinking of just starting with this DLC from the sea ice colony because these types of colonies do great in the cold weather. You'll see when we start to capture some more of the, um, of the occult beings, we will, like, uh... We will have that happening. Okay, uh, Joe Bearden is bringing back yet another wild animal from the hunt. What else have we got? Research going on here. So, I'm thinking the very next thing... Oh, I was got so caught up in explaining what these different crazy things we could do were, but I didn't actually do them. So, bioferrite is a material that we can get from the anomalies, which is very useful for containing them. Uh, as well as other types of things things, which I forget right now. Tools, weapons, flooring, and more. There's a lot we can do with it. I'm still figuring it out myself. Uh, or build holding platforms and inhibitors to better contain entities. This might be useful because sometimes people will come and try to free the entities. We currently don't have any free uh, entities, but let's go ahead and make a... Na -na 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 -na. Psychic ritual spot to summon occult demons! Woo! Hooray! Um... So, we are going to summon a d d d d d demon Some of these can be extremely stupidly powerful, so... I'm going to just take my time a little bit right here and make sure that we are fully set up and a little bit defensible before I summon all of the demons. Because it could get very bad very fast. First off, I want to get some stone cutting up. I think stone cutting is going to be very useful for us. So I'm just going to get these guys off to work. We have a basic living space. The only thing we could really use would be refrigeration. Um, let's replace these walls with stone. So let's go into our production. And we'll get a stone cutter's table and put that maybe like out here nearby our, well, you know, our stones. And kind of between that and this stockpile. That's decent. Put it out there. It'll get the outdoor penalty, but that's not so bad. And then we'll put in, uh, let's just, eh, let's move over this area slightly. I'm just going to do this. And then we will do this. This is kind of a scuffed way of doing this, but 
I am who I am. I'm a little bit scuffed then. We will do... Do, 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 do. Chop down the wood. Uh, all the wood by our base. And then we will... Let's get all these stones out of the way. I could also use some stone spike traps too. Oh man, this is great. These guys are very good colonists. Yeah, start yourself off with decent colonists to begin with. I do recommend it. Do until you have, let's say like, I don't know, 110 stone blocks. That's perfect. And then we will just use blocks that are nearby. Just limit yourself to things that are nearby. Cool. We just want the things that have been hauled over here. Cool, so we've doubled that over and made it a little bit easier. Um, kitchen workflow is still kind of developing here. Um, next kind of priority on this list would be to just build... Let's get ourselves some type of security, maybe a granite spike trap. Now, there's too many entrances to this base. I haven't really seen how Milady does when we have... Milady. <laughs> Feed Milady. Uh, oh, this feels so, like, dark. I mean, it's a horror DLC it's going to be. I just thought it would be ironical. I kept spawning, like... I know it seems like maybe not the most feminine thing to be a flesh-eating ghoul. But any time I was spawn, I kept randomizing this. And any time it was a good colonist, it was always female. And so I was just like, I kept like meeting these vicious female ghouls. And I was like, all right, I guess this is a sign from Providence that uh, that it is desirable that I should be in command of violent women. And that's what we're getting. Uh, passing near the remains of ancient Exostrider mechanoid uh, intact transponder. Uh, is this... Okay, this is the ancient Exostrider. So... As far as calling in the anomalies, it can be useful for stuff like making them into a neutral third party that will fight mechanoids for us. So if you harness the power of the anomalies, you basically, like, you are commanding occult demons, which can be kind of OP when you really get down to it. Um, other stuff going on here. I'm thinking, la 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 la. Let's go ahead and put in maybe just a, like a spike trap. And then perhaps we replace these walls. Yeah, let's just go in with these. I'm not going to use the replace walls mod because I'm stupid. I'm just kind of doing this willy nilly because again, I'm playing vanilla room world because I'm a person. Um, I just need a minute to handle this. We are starting to move over to heavier materials for this um, for this part of the base. One thing I'm just going to highlight is when you do start to capture some of these anomalies, which I'm preparing to right now. Um, and in fact, let's move this butchering table outside of here. Let's just move it somewhere else. Uh, whoops. Wrong thing, excuse me. We are going to keep that there, but let's reinstall the butchering table out here. Because we want this room to be very clean. Uh, and we will expand this zone just out here. Whoops. Stockpile zone. Oh, no. I did it wrong. Um, animal corpses. There we go. Okay, so we will get rid of this. We want to clear this room so that it is a place only for anomalies. And I'm going to replace all of the walls with stronger wall materials. I will just move this light temporarily. Reinstall maybe like here because these entities are going to be like kept uh, this is kind of confusing they average out the wall strength of the room to tell you how well the entity is being like kept in here i'm not sure it's a very good idea to keep it right next to the monolith but in general we're going to start to like repurpose this part of the base for capturing our anomalies. We'll probably make it under mountain and we'll make it very, very cold inside uh, because they like the cold or they are like not agitated by it when it's cold out, you know, like it kind of, it kind of freezes them from their monstrous state because otherwise they can like escape and attack you. Um, and let's also do these of, uh, let's use granite right here. Yeah, that would be good. 
Alright, so we will make granite walls. I think just granite walls is good practice right here. But then we are going to start to use bioferrite. Maybe I'm going to deconstruct this door. See this door? It has only 270 health. I need to improve the door strength. So there are security doors here that can, like, calm them down even more. Like, maybe calm them down isn't really the right word here, but... I'm going to use bioferrite, which is a material we've been given, and that is a much stronger material. Uh, and maybe... Do I have enough bioferrite? I do have another 50 right here, so let's do another one of those here. Cool. And then the rest is... I'll use granite, because granite is a fairly strong wall. I don't think it's as strong as bioferrite, but... You know, y you do what you gotta do. Um, and then we will put in more granite here, and then we will do our first occult ritual, uh, or anomaly ritual, because that is going to summon more people to our base. Cool, let's just finish this up. And what are you doing over there, Elon? Okay, cool, so he's doing that. And do I have this in range? Yep, that's cool. Alright. Give them, like, two more minutes. Uh, raccoon meat, uh, rotted away. Alright. Cool. Uh, one more, wh whoops, one more wall, two more wall, three more walls, four, five, six. That's about it. We'll just start replacing the last of that, uh, that wood there. And cool. Alright, so I'm going to schedule a void provocation here, which basically works like the ideal legends. I'm going to make Joe Bearden uh, the main participant, and he might go into a coma after this. Oh wait, it happens right away. Darn. We'll just have to finish up our construction after the uh, demonic ritual has been completed. Never mind. Hopefully this will go okay. So you get, like, some sort of weird distortion field here. Um, it, we have to go, like, Ah, ho, hoo, ha, hoo, ha, hoo, ha. And maybe that will help it out somehow. Yeah, it's safe. Wooga shaka, wooga shaka. Alright, and we're almost there at the end. We've been speaking in tongues or whatever. And now this we should... Boom! Okay, he has gone into a brief temporary coma. For only three hours, though, I'm sure Elon will be fine on his own with the monster. Everything is fine. Okay, so the void provocation psychic- What are you doing over there, Elon? Stop eating your packaged survival meals. Go help out Joe. Don't strip him. Help him. There we go. So Joe Bearden in a coma for only three hours is a pretty quick coma, actually. Uh, which is <laughs> it's a quick coma. Uh, we will just assign you to crafting as well. I need more stone blocks, like, basically right now. Um, something bad will come. Hopefully not one of the sight stealers. I'm going to get Milady ready because Milady is going to need to fight for Joe while he's down. And hopefully we won't get the death pall because that can be kind of a pain in the butt. Um... Here we go. Joe is really, like, you know, and I picture that this must be something that happens to Joe Biden in real life. Like, when he goes into the Situation Room, like, they show Joe, like, some military operatives show him, like, uh, visions of occult demons working. And he's he's basically using, like, you know the Emperor in Warhammer 40k? How he has to use, like, his psychasts and telekinesis to hold off the forces of chaos from the void storm i think this is probably something that joe biden is going through like on a daily basis that's why you know like when you see the media cover him like oh biden had a hard time getting to the stand to talk today that's because he's holding off the forces of occult demons he's and this is what him we see him as tired and you know like uh elderly no he's just been getting his life force sucked away by monsters every day that's why he wears the tinfoil... Well, he doesn't wear a tinfoil hat, but... You know, I mean, if he did, maybe it would help him hold off the occult demons. Just a theory. Um, that is to say, alpaca self-tamed. Oh, joy! Well, we'll probably eat it anyway. I'm going to keep my lady here for just a minute. Um, let me just haul these back. Uh, no. No, 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 no. 
Okay, Joe Bearden, I need you to finish off this proximity detector as detected an invisible creature. Well, where? Okay, we are probably getting a sight stealer coming in. Elon, get out of there now. Everyone stand right next to each other. I don't know what will happen. This is a little bit scary. Yeah, it could be that Joe's aviators are, like, keeping away the demon's souls from taking his soul. So I guess that's all that you get. Yep. Dude. It's right in front of Elon. Do not steal Elon's sight, or we will need to use Neuralink to get it back. We all know how this plays out. Oh, no, he hit Elon. Okay, Elon is probably fine. Phew, that was a close call. Milady, stand in front. Okay, Joe Bearden. Um... Actually, we're not really in that much danger. It's only one sight stealer. Uh, equip the steel knife. We might be able to capture this thing. Wait a second. No, it is an injured sight stealer now. I wonder if we could just use Milady to, cap to capture it then. Come on, Milady. Save us from the occult demons. We will pray to you. Cool, it has been injured. Um. No. I don't want to kill this thing if I don't... I mean, if we do, then whatever. We'll just keep studying the occult in other ways, but... If we could just have Milady... This is why we've been training you in combat, Milady. Hopefully, you will be able to win this. Hang on a second. I'm going to keep Elon right there with his shotgun, just in case if anything goes awry. Okay, good. We have downed it. We can, um, capture it. Ah, uh, no, we need a second here. How much time does it have left on its health? Death in 13 hours. Okay, Joe, get to work finishing off sealing in the occult demons. We're going <laughs> I love where this fanfic is going. Um, Milady, heal, Elon. Uh, Self-tend. And don't use the good medicine. Use the herbal medicine. Joe. At ease. All right. Can you capture? Okay, she can't actually capture. Let's just finish these off. It should take less than 13 hours. Isn't that kind of exciting, though? We have captured an occult demon. Very fun. Very fun. Men, run away. Let... <laughs> Let Milady do the... We have... <laughs> uh, I know it's slightly, like, backwards. You know, aren't the neckbeards supposed to be doing things for Milady? Isn't that the... The actual way that this fanfic goes. No, in this alternate universe, it's the opposite. Um, Joe, use these to finish constructing. We have how much time left? 11 hours. Joe, finish off the construction here. No. Let Elon tend himself. He's fine. Not assigned to doctoring. Hang on a second. Let me just give him doctoring uh, duties for a second. Heal thyself, Elon. Okay, cool. Finish off these walls so that we can capture this thing. Go, Joe. Uh, go, go, Joe Bearden. Wait a minute. Why do we... Okay, haul the blocks. Quick, and then... Yeah, there we go. All right, so now we're going to capture this thing. Um, capture the sight stealer, and it basically gets put into stasis right here. So we have captured it. It's sort of like chained up, but it also... Oh, we actually do have to heal it. I stand corrected, because I've seen some of these things hunger bars, like, go on standby when they come in here. Death in 12 hours, so we finish off healing it. Cool. All right. So we've revealed it. So that thing was in the right spot. I'm glad that we put the uh, sight beacon there. All right, well, let's get you fed again. It starts to... The one concern that I have with this DLC a little bit is will it start to become like a babysitting monsters DLC? Because if you get a lot of them, it does become like wrangling them and they become about as much maintenance as animals. Although some of them can be used to deadly effect. Like Milady has been used to great effect here. Consume, milady. We wish for you to grow. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Alright. Oh, A little stressful. A little bit stressful. 
Uh, not assigned to studying. Let's have Elon come back. Yeah, study again. You might as well. All right, but what do we now have is when we look at our entity, uh, containment strength. So how securely this can contain an entity. Uh, an entity is just any of the occult demons that we find. They come in various forms. Some of them are these flesh monsters. Some of them are these sight stealers that we've found. Some of them are shambling ghouls. Some of them are basically just resurrected corpses. Um, like you could have a, a mega sloth corpse come back as an entity. There's so many different things that could happen here. Uh, what it basically does is this. It takes the average lighting in the room. So you want a well-lit room uh, that is surrounded by strong walls. So preferably bioferrite, which I think is even stronger than granite. Than granite. <laughs> uh, and strong doors. High door HP. So we could get maximum security doors. We might end up doing that. Uh, but then it takes all that, and what you don't want is more other entities in the room, and you don't want it to be warmer. Like, you want a cold room with one entity. What it basically means is you want to create an ice prison of entities. So we'll end up putting this near the refrigerator. Yes, the refrigerator, that's right. Uh, it's a little odd, but it kind of makes sense. And what you can do is, uh, over the days, you start to study these things, and then they will give you some of this, like... Um, anomaly research. And we're going to try to do that. We're going to try to get better at our entity containment because we don't want these things escaping. And then we will... Um, so bio, Bioferret Harvester to generate... So I guess we don't actually just, like, um, butcher them. I guess we just harvest the Bioferrite from them, which is kind of cool. I'm still trying to figure out some of that stuff myself, though, so... That all kind of remains to see, uh, to be seen. All right, let's get back to our normal colony tasks because this thing is pretty well contained, I think. I hope. Our doors have 320 HP, so as compared with granite, I think that's even a bit stronger. I want to say that the bioferrite walls are 600. Granite is a great material to have around here, though. So that's fantastic. Uh, other stuff going on here. Yep, that's about it. We want to kind of space out the timing between these entity captures because getting too many at once is going to be useless, but we can get a lot at a time, and it's helpful to have a lot of cells. Um, let's go ahead and attack this one to death. Consume. Okay. Do they need to be fed? As far as I've seen... No, I want to say, because I captured a ghoul, and it had its feed bar still around, but it didn't go down. I don't know if I'm doing it right, or if I had something weird happen. I don't think that they do need to be fed, though. So they, they seem to be less work than prisoners, depending on how you look at it. But sometimes people want to free them. Like, we had a lady come into our colony who was an awesome colonist. She had, like, 20 and everything. It's a special event for this DLC, I'm pretty sure. And she seemed kind of sus, but um, she didn't turn on us until she tried to release the entities, and that was actually not that bad. She turned out to be a good enough colonist that it was just worth it to just have that, like, quirky behavior around. Um, I'm just going to cover all of this in concrete because I don't enjoy having dirt around. I generally find that colonists tend to track a lot of dirt into the rooms, and that causes debauchery. So I'm going to do like maybe three tiles out here of just straight up tile. It's the way I am. It's the war on dirt, man. All right. So really, uh, the one thing that I, I will say that I, I think this ooh, alpaca one has wandered away. We will just let him go anyway. I don't really care. Didn't really want an alpaca. Uh, what other things? Don't take that rock for granite. <laughs> Rimshot.wav. Oh, 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 oh. Suffering. Yep, yeah, so, I mean, it is like, uh... uh the one thing I, I think would be kind of cool would be if you could, like, uh... Take the ghouls, because sometimes you will get a ghoul. And, like, to use them for your own. But I, I think that involves prisoners more, so... Kind of remains to uh, see age 57 site. So can we get a little bit more information on this one? The Sigma male neckbeard enclave. Study, release. 
So we, we basically have the same prisoner options. I think study works here or execute. Um, we'll see if this guy, sentience, 62%. I guess that's just like consciousness. Consciousness. Uh, transfer that. You could transfer it to another area. I don't know so much about having the monolith in the same room, but we'll keep moving around parts of our colony as we go. I'm just trying to develop the land. I think the, the next thing we really need to do is get one more good working colonist, but it now is beginning to occur to me just how much easier your life is when you have a specialized combat colonist who is just like a tank. Oh God, why are you taking so much damage? Still only melee level two. We could use a little bit more experience here. Seems to be helping a little bit. I hope you can see what I mean though, that I, I do hope that the rate of feeding on these things kind of goes down or that it just automates itself. The one thing that you can't do because they can't shoot is they can't hunt. So I think one of the first quality of life mods I would turn on here would be the melee hunting mod and I would set uh, actually, that might not work. There's probably going to be somebody who makes just a, a mod that has them automatically eat stuff out there because it's kind of annoying to have to have your colonists. Like, I'm not going to just produce all the meat for this thing. Otherwise, I'll be babysitting this thing all the time. At least it kind of takes care of itself. But look at how quickly its feed goes down. Like, already two ticks and it's been just a couple hours. So we basically need to go for a meal with this thing once per day. Other things that we can do is start to get bioferrite, um, like, statues around that improve our psycast rituals so we can kind of harness these anomalies better. Um, flesh monsters, that's fine. We did have one come up out of the ground before, too, so we haven't gotten on that adventure yet, though. Apparently there's a whole set of quests related to it. Seems kind of cool. So we have several ways that we can continue advancing the research of the anomalies. So we're getting some research from Elon over here, uh, studying the monolith. We're also going to have him study the entity at the holding platform. But then we also have Joe Bearden reading the the Vadi Nama Homa Nama Dex. It's basically a Necronomicon, right? It's got to be that. Um, and putting all of this together is now actually adding to a sizable amount of research here. Why aren't you getting any more experience? Yeah, the Vadinox. It's gotta be a reference to something, right? Oh good, a visitor. Are you a bulk trader? We don't really need that many goods. I do like how many resources we've been set up with at the beginning of this scenario. But here we go, how much do we get from this? So we're getting 0.4 for each research on that and 0.38. Now the other thing that happens is the more like secure this organism or the entity is in its holding cell, the more research we'll get. So we have containment strength times 277%. Oh, that's actually for the escape interval. So this thing isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And average door HP, average wall HP. How much HP do... How many HP? These have 700, so the solid limestone is great for this, I suppose. New quest has become available. Um, Desperate Refugee is approaching the United States of Sigmarica. Mm. No. No. I mean, I wish we could get more information on these people. Oh, wait a minute. Uh... Oh, wait, no, this is just totally positive. Okay, I mean, she's not part of any faction. I'll allow it. Come on in. We could use your organs, maybe. Good at art, psychically hypersensitive. No, go away immediately. Do we have a way of just getting rid of her? I don't like her. She's going to break everything. She is a night owl. Um, that does actually improve her global work speed. She doesn't have pessimists. That would be really awful. Um, very neurotic. So, okay, so as long as we don't have any type of psychic drone, especially on females. She is, yeah, she is female, age 37. Um, we will be okay. 
But she's already not in a good mood. I don't like these types of colonists. They're just a lot of high maintenance work. Ratty apparel. All right, I guess we could have her do some type of work. Well, why don't you sleep nearby um, Elton John? I mean, Elon John. I mean, just Elon, whoever he is. And uh, Joe Bearden. There we go. Join our neckbeard tribe. Dalton. She has like a giant face tattoo, man. That's kind of hot. Um, <laughs> see, she has a face tattoo of a goatee, man. She is kind of a neckbeard then, I suppose. All right, she'll fit right in. Beautiful. Oh, does that actually lower the sensitivity? Did I mess, did, uh, mess it up? No, I think I got it right, didn't I? Yeah, psychically hypersensitive. That makes it even worse. At least she's good with what? Plants? Okay, so she's good with plants. She'll help out with that while she's around. If she joins, though, I'll probably just banish her. Unless if she happens to be... Some of these colonists... It can go either way with these colonists. Sometimes they can be really good, but oftentimes they're not so good, too. All right, keep on training, milady. We really don't have any other option to not. Go, milady. Slay the beast for Neckbeardia. She is like our avatar. <laughs> ah. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, Elon, do you have any social skills? He does have a lot of social skill. Trade. Okay, wow, we could trade away the Vadinox. It's worth a lot of money. Boomer's Handbook. I can't stop laughing at this name. Um, <laughs> dies. Uh, do we really need much else? We could get, nah. We got pigs, turkeys. Insect meat. Hmm. Uh, nothing is really shouting at me right here. We could get some clothing for that neurotic person, but I think that is also not so great. The only one that could really be useful here would be herbal medicine. And we aren't doing much with our plain leather and stuff, so yeah, I'll take that. Let's give away all of our cloth. Eventually we'll use this, but there'll be more of it, so... Um, rice, smoke leaf joint, dye. Uh, yeah, give me that herbal medicine, please. 194 still coming in. Uh, what else could we do with... I'll take some pemmican. That's pretty good. Uh, let's take, like, uh, 50. More like, uh, I don't know, 70. Cool. And then I'll keep the rest as silver. Not a bad trade. And we cleared out our stockpiles a bit. We could probably clear up our stockpiles a little bit more as well. Uh, let's get another zone for our blocks. So we will go uh, clear all and we will just do blocks. Stone blocks. This will be preferred. And then we can start to continue our study of the... Can we need another 1.7 days to study this entity. We will have Joe Bearden go back and study the Necronomicon. This is what we're going to do. We're going to have Joe Bearden sap. We're going to teleport an evil person to our colony and then drain their youth from them. Does that make sense? Are we all on the same page? The lack of shelves. Ooh, thank you. I keep forgetting about this ever since the other... Um... Yes, thank you. Yes, let us build. Ooh, a bookcase as well. I'm forgetting we can do this now too because of... Thank you. Yes, let's build some shelves. Let's have them. And let's make them from limestone. I'm so sorry about that. I'm sorry for what I've done to your eyes. Ooh, he's actually gaining intellectual skill. Wow, Joe Bearden. Good job. Soon we'll begin fedoraism. Do you think... Do you think Joe, Bi Joe Biden was ever like a neck... Neck had any neck beard qualities? Like maybe he would like see see the logic in our ways, you know? You know this colonist is not that bad, Dalton. Dra dragon. Yeah, we didn't get any gifts. Oh well. Man, look at all the just the crap that they left all over the ground. Disgusting. Okay, butcher forever. Oh, she has cool hair. Aside from her face tattoo of a goatee, that is a little odd. That is slightly odd, you gotta admit, you know? 
Oh, cool. So they're actually starting to put the books on it. This is so cool. I love the bookcases. This is something that was missing from RimWorld, man. We needed some way of storing information. I'm glad that it's here now. All right, we can build yet even more of these. Uh, where is it? Build a copy. Yeah, why am I not seeing it? Whatever, I'll just build another one like this. The normal way. I guess we'll have them in rows across from each other like that. Build copy. There we go. You see what I'm going for here? Like a little column on each side. All right, so now our storage doesn't look as awful as it did before. And it did look pretty awful before, not gonna lie. Now, no, 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 uh, we can... Ooh, what are you doing over there? Are you trying to escape? I don't know if these animations actually correlate to its attempts to escape. Also, should we... Let's clean off our area over here. Yeah, I think we also have some bioferrite. We could potentially make some type of statue involving that, right? I think we want to do that with bioferrite shaping, which... Um, Bioferrite Weaponry, Ghoul Enhancements, Ghoul Resurrection, Ghoul Infusion, Disruptor Flares, Proximity Detector, not what I wanted. Not what I wanted, not what I wanted. Um, Void Sculptures, this is the one. Enhance the quality of Psychic Rituals. So I'll do that next. I don't want to do too much more than 10 for right here, though. Just keep on reading that Necronomicon. 23 more hours till we can study this thing. Research, 5.90. See, this is a little odd to me. I don't understand why when he reads this now. We should be... Oh, Void Provocation. Oh, so this only begins the Void Provocation. Okay, so the Vati Nox, we've already gotten about as much use out of it as we can. So, I stand corrected there. I don't know why I was reading that. So now we really just learn about them by capturing more and studying them and completing rituals with them. So really, the next thing that we should do here would be to... Um, just expand our prison cells and capture more. And that's going to be the next. That's going to be the way it goes next. I will do more... Can we do a security door here? We need plasteel and... Ooh, very cool. Yeah, I could do this. I don't know how many it is in each room that we could really sustain and manage. But let's just get started and find out. See from there. We will do... Maybe a bunch of prison cells over here. We need a miner first, though. Who is the good miner? Elon is doing some of it. Uh, really, neither of our colonists is particularly good at mining, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, we'll just build another containment cell. Let's do another ritual in a few minutes. Void provocation. We have 0.9 hours until we can do another one. So good timing, good timing. Study in 17 hours. Major break risk on... Yeah, Dalton is going a little crazy. Let's get some recreation out here, too. Horseshoes pin. Let's make it from something stone that won't just burn down. Void provocation ritual can be performed again. Great, great. And then let's do maybe a chess table over here so that they don't all go crazy. Mm. Limestone chess table. Oh, that's kind of cool, isn't it? Then we'll do more wooden dining chairs. Sweet. All right, this base is actually fairly functional up and running without too much effort here, man. We did good. I'm happy with this. And Dalton is on a daze, but that's not a bad one. That's totally fine. Yeah, I could probably plan this out as a fridge. I'm trying to put all the movable furniture in here, and then maybe I'll end up doing, like, fridge in this zone kitchen right here or f f uh, fridge and kitchen and then maybe we'll have the cells along here I've got to slightly bring this back and then we'll do like workshops over here I think eventually I'll just have the bedrooms over here but for right now I, I kind of want to get on with it let's keep doing void stuff or uh, not void anomaly I don't know why I keep calling it void there's probably a void somehow involved I'll just wait till they get up from their sleep tonight. So, anyone see any good movies? Uh, scary movies lately? 
Now, we haven't got too much of the uh, scary music, but let's have another one right now. Uh, who cares if Dalton is going crazy? She's probably not too happy in our colony. Uh, sorry. How is Milady doing again? Milady has been fed part of the way. All right, so here comes another anomaly ritual, Wu-Tang. Um, let us go for this rabbit. Ooh, rabbit, everyone. I keep misreading Elon as Elton. <laughs> Elton John. Elton John and Joe Bearden. Cool. All right, we are fed and happy. Go, come back, though, because I might need you as a meat shield bodyguard. Okay, Joe Bearden. Oh, no, it was Elon who was holding the ritual this time. Elon is our primary fighter. This is no good. We are, like, slightly undefended for a little while right now. Um, do, 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 do. Equip the pump shotgun, Joe Bearden. Just for a minute. Just for a minute. Bring back milady. Come, milady. Good. Feed Elon. Feed him. Okay. All right. This could be mysterious. Uh, transport pod carrying a ravenous hostile ghoul has landed nearby. Okay. An opportunity to capture another uh, being here. I will probably just put this one in the same room as the first one. Eventually, we'll do a transfer. I just wanted to get a little bit more stuff to study right now because I'm impatient. We will just put it right next to the first guy. And what could possibly go wrong with that? Um, Elon glimpsed something horrifying beyond human... No! I mean, honestly, Elon probably does this on a daily basis the same way that Joe Biden does this. But, at the same time... Oh, so it's just... Totally fine. This is Kiki, everyone. Flesh mass, stomach. Cancerous mass of semi f sentient flesh. The harsh acid it produces is painful, but strong enough to prevent most food poisoning. Ugh. I have not encountered this yet. This will be interesting. Um, we will just capture this person and, or rather, ghoul and. Probably not do too much else. Okay, Joe Bearden, I don't want you going in there alone. Let's have my lady defend you. Capture Kiki. As far as I know, this is just going to be basically a prisoner. Stand right there, just in case. I don't want any funny business. Now, this is going to behave more or less the same. Uh, to think that you could have your own entire army of ghouls is kind of crazy. Okay, I'm pretty sure that it's harmless now. All right. Victory screech. <laughs> All right. Great stuff. This guy, like, hangs out there. Man. Where is Elon? Root Boston. I gotta change my last name to Root Boston. My last name is actually redacted. I did meet someone recently. I have kind of a weird last name. But I did meet someone recently who knew it through my YouTube channel. Um, it's a guy I work with, but um, should probably never know who this person is. But it was an amazing experience because it was tremendously validating because I didn't know anyone. I thought we were unknown and I thought that all of my people were dead. But I met one. Well, he didn't have the same last name, but he knew, he knew of other brethren. Oh, God, why? Another sight stealer. Oh, this isn't such a bad for a bad place for a sight stealer to appear. I mean, it never really is a particularly great place for one to appear, but uh, this might be too many for one room. I wasn't expecting another occult monster to come out today. <laughs> not, not the right time for this. Okay, Joe Bearden and um, Elon, come together. You need to hand over your pump shotgun to him. Here, we want you to drop the pump shotgun. Uh, get back your knife. Where is your knife? Equip the steel knife. Elon, grab the pump shotgun. Come, milady. All right, there we go. Go to Elon. He will defend you with the pump shotgun. Save, milady. Save, milady. Uh, actually, milady, you can just stand in front of me while I shoot this thing. I don't really care whether this thing is alive or dead. 
Cause, cause I have enough occult monsters to study right now. Just don't shoot her. We want her to stay alive. Uh, I don't think this is gonna take any more. Eh, actually, you know, just get in there just to be safe. Okay, we're fine. Everything is okay. Just ignore all of that. Capture it if we can. What happens when we take hostage three occult monsters? It would have been Jaegerman Jansen. <laughs> it's, uh... It's a Hawaiian last name. Ooh. All right, we have three demons uh, hostage in our base now. And everyone... Honestly, our main two colonists have been, like... Have gotten away scot-free for most of this. Let's see how Elon does. Now, the other thing I was wondering about was who is a better researcher, because... Um, Joe Bearden will also research them. I'm not going to have him do it, though, because he just researches really slowly when he's studying these monsters. Uh, Elon does a better job at it because he has better research skill. At least, I believe that's what I can attribute it to. I've seen another pawn who does it even faster. I think the reason for that was because they had even higher research skill, but I'm not 100% positive about that. Oh, we have another one. Okay, this is just a normal one from Trash Team. God, I love the names of the Raiders. <laughs> Got, gotta make like an eSports team like that. Oh, wow, these are like fire-breathing people. This is not a bad colonist, but basically just a walking demon. Go, m'lady. Devour him. Isn't there, like, some sort of Warhammer 40k faction? It's the the Battle Sisters, right? Oh, no, Sisters of Battle. <laughs> Whoops. I was going to say Battle Brothers, but... I got really confused because uh, I was playing Manor Lords the other day, and I really like one of the faction names. It's like the Flock of Angry Geese, and it's all of these mercenaries, and they... um. They, they, it's just like the only requirement to join this company is a general desire is a general lack of fear of death uh, yeah it's just a some of the writing is just really good by the way manor lords had a chance to check it out the other day that's why it took me a little bit longer to come on rimworld fantastic it's really good it's like everything that i expected it to be or everyone did and more uh, or maybe it is i mean there's quite a lot of hype around it it is good, is what I'm trying to say. It's, it is fantastic. I did get to try it a little bit early. Um, I got lucky, but I've also, uh, actually as publisher, I've, I've just like done, uh, it was the same publisher as, uh, Nessess, although I think, I'm not sure if they're together anymore. I have to double check on everything. Oh, uh, but yeah, they've been publishing a lot of stuff, Hooded Horse. They've got a lot of good projects, uh, on their kind of dossier. Mm, but cool stuff, though. All right, not assigned to studying. Elon, let's have you... Oh, God. So how are we doing with these entities now? Uh, containment strength is doing worse, especially because there's multiple holding platforms in here. Let's start to split these things up. I think we've got to get in more... Uh... Do we have more granite? I don't like this. Um... Nah, 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 nah. Escaped demons. I'm just going to keep on building more doors in here and ignoring the consequences. Maybe, Elon, let's build another holding cell for these things. A couple more, and then we'll get the fridge underway once we get a bit more of this under mountain area. Oh, cool. He's getting more intellectual skill. Hopefully, he won't be attacked by demons. Yeah, Dalton, just stand in there. Dude, it would be a disaster if these things got loose. Because they've all we've healed them all and they've become more powerful. Very scary, very scary stuff. I wonder if one of them is stronger than another. Let's build a copy of it over here. Classic Elon smoke leaf joint. Mm. Let's transfer you to the um. What is it? It has a requirement. Containment strength, 96. Let's move the ones in... Because this one's going to stay because he has a stronger... Like, containment device. Okay, just finish that up and then stop meditating. 
Now, I'm not sure if it actually has a... Like, how, what is the escape interval? 3.3 years, 3.7 years, 2.3 years. Knowledge gain 1.8, 1.6, 1.7. Okay, so it's slightly different. I'm going to have to look into what it is for each of them. So these ones are, sh are weaker. This is the one that we got in as a prefab when we spawned. Um, <coughs> uh, excuse me. Ah, uh, sneeze. I have sneezed. I am a weak man. I was unable to contain my sneeze. All right, so that's a little bit better. All right, the containment strength has slightly gone up on these now that we've separated them. What is yours at? 74.9, so this is the weakest one. I'm thinking we get a lot of like five by five rooms like this. That, this might be a bit overkill. I think I could go for like whatever it is, three by four or something like that. It would probably be sufficient. And I didn't really see much reason to give them a lot more room, but we should probably start to think about refrigeration now. Maybe we'll get one more level of these things. But once we get these things ready, it becomes like a factory of research rooms. And the more of them we have, we could create like this demon research facility, which is honestly kind of a cool thought that it, the more of them you contain, the more research you get, the faster. That is kind of sweet. Yeah. So what's with all the vibrating people in chains? They're just kind of... Uh, they have a lot of... That was a weird way to say it. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what we've got here. That's true. I stand corrected. Uh, why don't you continue... No, Joe Bearden, you don't need to take his corpse. I will just eat it. That's fine. Maybe Good, eat his head. There we are. All right, nice. All right, we've done a pretty good job keeping our ghoul... Uh, like, from trying to kill everyone. Let us start with our farming. So we're going to have farming occurring over here because this is where our rich soil is. So it'll probably be in, like, a line over this area. I'm thinking then if we have refrigeration and batteries nearby each other. Refrigeration and batteries go together pretty well. Batteries can go anywhere, but you just kind of want them out of the way. So let's go ahead and maybe make... A refrigerator up until we get to the edge of this soil, because this gets tricky to build on. Whoops, wrong thing. Yeah, that can get kind of problematic when we get into mud. So maybe we say right till about here, if we want the fridge to go. And then maybe we refrigerate. Let me just get out some planning. Um, plan, plan, plan. Zone, orders. It's funny because it's under orders, you know, you wouldn't think that. But if we make our fridge go like this, that way they still have access to this rich soil, these little plots right here in the fields, which are a slight help. Uh, and then if we do the entrance to that, like an airlock, maybe right about like one here. Well, we really want this double width. So if we go like that just to kind of insulate it better. Then that gives us room for a double doorway right here, that kind of spot. And then we could put in an airlock. Are we better off with it outdoors or should we just make it a chimney? I don't really know, but we could put it over here. That would be fine. So let's say remove plans like there. Uh, and maybe we'll say one here. It could be like where our airlock is. I'll make it one wide to start. That's kind of enough to know for right now, but basically that. And then we could have a kitchen area over here. Awkwardly, that is slightly near the prison for the demons, but it's a start. Okay, I'm happy with that. Then let's get this going. Um, let me just order these constructions on the walls. What do we have a lot of, too? We have kind of a lot of everything, but let's just order these. This will be one, that will be a doorway, and then we'll have a cooler right there. All right, so we finally have our general temperature regulation going, which seems to be, excuse me, like a pretty early technology here. Whoops. Sorry, I'm like slightly nasal. I'm still just getting over the last bits of a, I had like a three day cold this week. It was kind of odd. Uh, raid by trash team, trash team. Dude, I'm totally making that a channel network. I'm just going to get as many of my YouTuber friends together. Trash team. Here we come. We're playing Fortnite. 
Oh no, Joe, Joe Bearden is very close to that. Send Milady in. Ooh, she's not even anywhere close. Scarad. Sounds like a, an actual Viking. All right, let's get Elon and Joe together. Ugh. Has my SCP foundation going? It really is. I mean, it it basically could have been RimWorld SCP edition. I think it's kind of neat. Once you get a hang of it, it, it's it's a pretty overpowered colony type. It's strong. I like it. It's good. Um, I thought I would struggle with it. Ideology? Uh, actually, ideology can be really overpowered if you pick certain builds with ideology. But when I first played ideology, I was sort of like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to weave this into my playthroughs as easily. Now, this one is is pretty easy, I'm finding. And the one thing, you got to keep the ghoul alive at the start. Otherwise, you run into some trouble. I think I can get through this fight without deploying my auto turret, but I don't think we're going to be able to get through this guy fast. He seems kind of slow to me, though. Yeah, he has major asthma, cataract. Why do they always send, like, someone who is very frail? An age 71 drifter from Trash Team, incapable of all these different things. All right. The one thing we didn't get this time was that super mega overpowered colonist. Let's just see if we can kite this guy. Ooh, he's not doing too good. Not doing too good at all. I think we could just shoot with Milady there because... Like, we're not worried about her because she can just regenerate everything. Skip Scarad. Eventually we'll be able to make Scarad into a ghoul as well. Breaking the, uh... uh every, well, every possible convention of warfare. Uh, but we could just use this as food for her right now. Yeah, I don't really want this colonist around anyway. Sorry. Oh well. You're better off in me than with me. All right, for a completely not suspicious discovery, we have uh, learned more about entity containment, which means that we have access to a whole slew of new things. So 40 steel for these uh, holding platforms, which should be easy enough to get because now with the quality of life update, and wow, we actually don't have any steel here. That is sad. Oh no, I stand corrected. There is a slight bit of steel. And now we have the new mine vein control, which is quite useful and I like. We'll mine another vein over there. We need to keep feeding you. This has to be the first mod that someone adds in. Or either that or I hope that they add this in as an update to the game. Because admittedly, this is really annoying. Just having to keep coming back and do this. Although I could see how this process being automated could be bad. Because what if your ghoul goes out to try to fight something really strong? Like a simple warg my ghoul died to before. Might also be useful to have the fridge, because if our ghoul dies, we could preserve the ghoul in the fridge. Or a freezer, one or the other. Um, because we don't want to lose it totally. Yeah, that could be bad. But anyway, uh, what other stuff do we have is holding platform for steel. We will make one of those soon. Then we also got electric inhibitor. Construction needed for a device that emits a specifically tuned electromagnetic field, which numbs the neural activity of captured entities. Okay, so it sort of like makes them into vegetables. As long as it is powered, it improves the containment strength of any holding platform that is pointed at. Okay, so it does one, I suppose. The electric field does not affect humans or normal animals. Okay, so it strengthens the holding field. Shard inhibitor, a shard of dark archaic technology. These are all surprisingly cheap. I like that because all of the biotech stuff was very expensive and took till very late in the game to do. So this is kind of a nice alternative. Uh, it resonates with psychic energy. We do have a shard increasing the containment strength of any holding platform in a spot within its radius. Okay, so that's interesting. This effect does not stack. So you have all kinds of things that could be helpful for this. So you kind of can put them into one room. There's just little ways around it. I'm not sure how much of this we really need. Just other regular steel holding platforms might be enough for now, and I don't want to use up tons of electricity on it. So, I think that'll work. I think that'll work all right. Uh, in the meantime, we've now got our fridge done, and that is important because of things. 
I think it's time to actually start to plan out the rest of our colony. So let's go over to orders. We will plan. I'm thinking that this area, kind of from where this cliff ends, this will naturally be a wall because it contains under mountain areas. So let's just say that this kind of area divides. This is going to be like bedrooms over on this side. We'll probably have like several pores to allow feeding in and out of the colony over here. It will be porous, that is to say. Uh, these will be workshops over here. This will be general filtration area. They don't really need to go to and from their bedrooms for much of the day. But then this area is going to be a fridge. And then behind it is going to be our prison cells. Because we need to feed cold air in there. Because that will help contain them better. Also, call me Luna1234. Thank you very much for the sub. Alright. So, let's go ahead and... Um, now, where do we want to put, like, communal rec areas to? Probably somewhere kind of centralized. And that would make sense near the kitchen, too. And near the fridge. There is a great video on base planning by a YouTuber named Loreplays that taught me how to... I really was not good at setting up bases, but... Um, it should, like, organize things in a very good way. And I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Why haven't I been doing it like this for a long time? And we could even put the uh, occult ritual spot into our rec room, maybe for fun. Let's go ahead and make this all our rec slash dining area. So this is going to be this. We'll move the chairs over to here. What, they don't want, like, a dining room table near it? <laughs> we might move that further out. I could put that... Um, up here. Yeah. Let's put that there. We'll put a more dining room stuff. Oops. Reinstall that there. And then we'll put the beds over on this side. This is going to be kind of bare bones for now. Let's just clear this whole area out and we will kind of shrink this zone in too. Yeah, kind of like that. Alright, this is good. We're kind of containing some of the stone chunks as well. We don't want those just all over the place anymore either. Uh, and, we, you know, we could even extend this over down there as well. Workshops and stuff go over here. And then we don't really need a giant storeroom anymore ever since they added in these uh, shelves. I like that. All right. Now let's go ahead and make... Uh, what is the temperature in here? Let's bring it down to... Uh, we're all in Celsius here. What is freezing in Celsius? It's zero, right? Because uh, it's 32 in Fahrenheit. So I like to bring it down slightly lower than freezing, just in case. Is it negative 10? Zero in Celsius, right? Freezing is zero. Okay, so I'll bring it slightly below freezing. I know it's going to take more energy, but in case if our fridge dies out, we're in kind of a warm region right here, so... It makes sense. Uh, let's go ahead and... Man, these colonists are fast. You know, this Dalton colonist is not that bad. What is her general mood? You know, she's actually doing okay here. Uh, what... I haven't even given her the right schedule either. Let's just give her anything all day so that she works at night. I'm not doing a very good job with her. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> I could be doing... You could do... You do better, AA. Um... Hmm. What else? Well, he's humming along. All right, our next research that we should probably engage in will be... If we did bioferrite harvesting, then we have a better chance of... Bio of void sculptures doing better, so... Void sculpture. I think we should do this. Or, well, we, we're going to need the bioferrite to begin with, so let's research that so we can get the bioferrite out of our uh, entities, the anomalies. Uh, can we give the ghoul a hat? Do we have gear? Unfortunately, no. But wouldn't it be fun if you could dress them up in, like, cheerleader outfits? You know, like, go team. Go team Neckbeardia. Yeah. Woo. Uh, no, unfortunately, we cannot do that. <laughs> Which is really too bad. It is. It's too bad. Let's go ahead and take all of this stuff, though. Uh, the bookshelf I will reinstall over here. Because that could be in, like, our rec room area, right? Man, I'm kind of liking this. I kind of want to keep it in that other facing. I just... I like to show off the books that I have. 
I'm like a, an overly educated person on Zoom. You know how that became everyone's default background? And I guess I was working in schools back when I did that. Um, a lot of my colleagues would have like bookshelves behind them. And that would always be at any news show that you saw. People would just put a bookcase behind them. My favorite ones were the green screen bookcases where people would pretend that there was a, a bookshelf behind them. <laughs> those were my all time favorites. Yeah, those ones were funny. <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. Yeah, it's like the Zoom educator meta, you know? Walls of bioferrite is very good for. Yeah, if we can get more bioferrite out of these things, that will be ideal. I, I would just have a bunch of empty bookcases behind me. That's like, the, I guess the only danger there is that's kind of a serial killer type of vibe. Like just a guy sitting in a room with, it's kind of like a bit of an all work and no play makes Jack a little boy kind of look, you know. I might freak some people out if I did that. Ah, <laughs> oh, there he is in his empty, in his room full of empty bookcases again. What are you talking about? Put in more... I prefer not to do concrete in these rooms because... Uh, actually, we don't really need it here. We can just do this. Cool. Let's put in more granite. I'm gonna double up on granite here because I prefer to insulate the rooms better. It's tricky how you do this with the coolers though. I think in general this should be okay. All right, but now we are going to move all of the food inside. So let's go ahead and make another zone. We will do actually a limestone shelf. Let's do two of those and we'll start to put the food in there. All right, I think it's about time that we have another occult ritual or avoid provocation. Uh, 1.4 days. Just to get more beings to arrive. And I think the other thing that we could probably do is bring in these chess tables over here. We're going to start to make this into our uh, void prison. Okay. Beds. I guess we don't really want them sleeping with the void monsters. You know, let's build this thing out here instead again. Eh. There we go. We'll just put it in one of the bushes or something. All right, bring that out of our rec room. We'll just have another area up there for it. Let's, uh... No, we're going to be doing the planting over there. Eh. We'll do it, like, up here. That'll be a sufficiently away from the planting. And let's give it some type of nice kind of outline right here, too. Let's give it some paved tiles around it just to make it look a little bit cooler. Not bad. All right. So alongside all that, we're getting this stuff finished up. Let's move out these beds from here as well. We'll just put them into our rec room for right now. And here. And then we'll put our table or this thing here. We'll reinstall this here. What a great looking rec room. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh God. What have I done? Why does everything turn into this? Let's put in... Uh, uh, we'll need three wall lights. I just like the wall lights so much. I know that they're not as efficient as some other lights, but... Or like having them on these parts of the room isn't great, but I think that they look good. They look good, damn it. All right, let's put more down here and then set these shelves only for... Uh, what am I doing with my life? Clear all, we will do only food in here. Just all food and we'll make this important. Maybe important isn't really my favorite keyword for this, but we will copy the settings from this one. Paste settings, there we go, okay. So now we've created uh, effectively a fridge. We've finally got specialized uh, colony layouts pretty much in line. Nice. All right, feeling happy about this, feeling happy. A budding artist named Midori has arrived and wants to join the colony. She is willing to contribute 
but will not leave voluntarily, claiming to have nowhere else to go. You can choose to turn her down or send her away. However, your colonists will be disturbed. Uh, yeah, it's sending someone. Away. Okay, so it is a relationship. This is Joe Bearden's aunt. So let's go ahead and accept and see what happens. Uh, I mean, they were going to be upset either way, right? Okay, so this is Midori. And she is actually not that bad. Has really nothing negative to speak of. Could be useful. Anything that she is particularly useful? She has decent intellectual, so she might be able to help with studying. Not really any of the skills, skill areas in particular that we really need right now. Um, artistic might be useful at some point in time. That can generally make the colony more agreeable, but it's more of a late game thing. I'm just probably going to use her as a general laborer right now. That is art, what it is to me. I am going to rename her, though, um, to fit with my theme, Angela Morekill. All right, we are going for Mimi spin-offs. Angela Moore kill <laughs> for our like, um, like uh, uh, powerful world rulers, but uh, not actually, you know, just spin-offs of their names. E I guess Elon will just remain Elon. All right, there we go. There's Milady. Come, Milady, <laughs> join the Sigma male enclave. Oh, no, I need you to... Elon, stop trying to get the alpaca. Here we go. Let Milady eat the alpaca. Go home, Elon. Go home. King... King Pre-Fight. Thank you very much for the 45 bits. And Psycho Buddha. Thank you very much for the prime. All right, so, yeah, we have a natural courtyard this time. It was kind of a rare formation of the place. A great time is being had by all. Also, King Preflight. Thank you very much for the sub. Appreciate you. So, um, generally speaking, what we are going to be handling next is the um, personification of the base. Let's go ahead and make some of those lights, though, maybe. Maybe Joe Bearden go work on those wall lamps. Do we have that? No, we don't actually have any steel in reserve. We still need to do some work on that. Okay, what are Angela Moore kills um, stats? No. Handling, hunting. Joe Bearden. Oh no! Well, this is past. Oh my god! Grew up pulling carts and digging hole, diggy diggy hole on a medieval world. Simple manual labor is his oldest companion, along with the master's lash. He didn't read until age nine. Wow, like, honestly, the story of the American dream. Joe Bearden pulling himself up by the bootstraps. Amazing. Also, Sean Sheep, thank you very much for the, uh, five gift subs. Hope you're not putting yourself at any financial need, but please, uh, I mean, thank you. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Hope you've been enjoying those videos. Th them videos. Yeah. Dead Burger Boy, thank you very much for the Prime. Also, appreciate it. Yeah, 16 and with such a glorious beard. All right, so here comes Joe Bearden. Hi, there Andy he is. Ampy. Are you going to try the new zombie game Dread Dawn anytime soon? Uh, Isometric action to be had. Dread Dawn, I feel like that was on my list. Dread Dawn, I'll write it down. Isometric does sound good. Uh, sometimes I get pitched a game that's like isometric in my emails. It is a time. Don't worry, sir. Keep me sane during a metal torture. That is the daily grind of work. Oh, well, good. I hope that your work is treating you well. Thank you very much. That means a lot. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. He is a, he is a wealthy sheep. Just kidding. You are probably not actually a sheep. Although I do enjoy the idea of a sheep. Like, watching the videos... You know, and enjoying them, and bang and pleasure, like, bah, bah, I love this. You know, that could be, I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, laser eyes emoji immediately. <laughs> ah, yes, be a sheep. Become one with the sheep. Ah. Oh. Why do I think of Minecraft sheep when I think of a sheep? Are you a Minecraft sheep? 
Mm. Deliver to wall lamp. Go, my people. Go. Crab people. Cra clean that dirt, you slob. Common sense also, too, would be a good mod. All right, another thing that might be useful to have here would be perhaps some sort of steel flooring just in order to improve the, um, the dirt. The animal filth, I think this was from those goddamn traders who were standing in the dining room with an animal. Young travelers request charity. Uh, oh, is this free labor? Group of poor children are approaching looking for help. The children are begging for three medicine. They need medicine to help their friends in a nearby settlement that was devastated by rays. Give the items a uh, ray clicking it. it should, we'll move on after one day. All right, that is a little bit crazy. I don't trust this. This seems like a little too, a little too innocent. Like there could be some evil afoot in what's about to happen here. Let me also just go ahead and put out Another one of these. I will also reinstall this over, let's say, like here. And then let's build another doorway in here. Because we just want a very strong airlock to our, um, to our refrigerator. Put it in the refrigerator. There we are. Am I playing chaotic neutral? I suppose we are. Like, we kind of... We're not, um... Um, I mean, all we're really doing here is... Ooh, the other thing I just realized, too, is we're going to have to take this kitchen and plunk it somewhere else. Because what we have to do next is... join these two rooms together. The, the kitchen really doesn't need to be a very big room. We could have a deep freeze in a refrigerator, but I don't know if that's really necessary. What we want to do next is put the kitchen over here. And then have the refrigeration refrigeration seep into the holding cells of the demons. Do I sound like some sort of televangelist? Like exorcist? I'm, uh, like, going to be just at the risk of doing that for much of this playthrough. It will be very much that way. Let's go ahead and just allow... Th they have to go through the refrigerator in order to get in here. Yeah, and we will put in a doer there. And then we could hold them under mountain in the cold. That would be good. I sound like a weird guy from the corner store nearby. <laughs> That's, that's the best review I've ever gotten. <laughs> uh, plunk it. Oh, uh, man. Plunk it in the refrigerator. The robot. What was that from? This is like I was chatting with some friends the other day. <laughs> I actually have real life friends now. Um, oh, this is kind of a cool thing. So you can just clean the whole room with a... This is new. Is this a 1.5 update? Just clean room, clean barracks. That is a very welcome adjustment. Also, is this broken asphalt? Is that tracking dirt anywhere? Might be important to handle that. Clean the storeroom, then clean the containment cell, then clean the kitchen, then clean the refrigerator. Oh, it actually knows that it's a storeroom. Oh, this is also a storeroom. That is kind of crazy that it can just identify it. I have never played RimWorld. Would you recommend it for a casual player? No. I fall down let it. Uh, no. The Night Shifters, thank you very much for the Prime. Also, thank you for the sub, I fall down ladders. Hope you recover from your ladder falling. No, I would rec rec uh, recommend this game only to the most hardcore players. Actually, <laughs> the people that I would recommend this game to would be these ones. Um. Uh. uh okay. To to be honest, I will answer the. Uh. Probably yes. If you, if you're willing to sit through a lot of col, if you have like some patience, because there are people who will just play it and then hate the game and say like everyone died. The end. That can happen. That's true. Oh, also, Angela Moore kill is a, um, is a night owl, so we should probably change her work schedule. There we go. You can make the game slightly easy. Ooh, clean room is new in 1.5. That is good to know. That is very fun and cool. 
Look, there go the meals, man. Uh, this one could be... What is this room? This is important for meals. Cool. All right, quest active... Sh we won't be doing any of that, though. I believe Elon is the most socially gifted among our colonists. Gene pack skill trainer intellectual artistic. Uh, maybe I should have saved some monies b from before. We do have a cow and a bull. This could potentially be useful, but do we have anything worth trading? Um, we do have some plasteel, but I don't really want to sell my plasteel, and I don't want to sell the shards. I don't really want to sell any of this stuff. I mean, there is some cool stuff, but I, I think we're just better off keeping. Can we buy components? We could buy some components. I'll buy one... Okay, literally one component. Can we sell some packaged survival meals in return? Just generally speaking, you want as many code, uh, components as you can get for general RimWorld stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is this. I am going to take the rocks and plunk them here. No, I am going to... um. Ooh, the hunted dame. Nah, I mean, we could... There's all these, like, royalty quests and things like that going on. You know, on the one hand, having all the DLC installed it is kind of giving the, uh, the general impression of the game. But at the same time, I'm also kind of just feeling that, like, uh, it might have just been better to just have on Anomaly. So I will just refuse all of those other quests. Ignore that. Let's have some bioferrite harvesting, and let's start to assign Elon to more just, like, research types of tasks once we get the rest of this done. I think once we get to the rest of our construction. I'm thinking also, too, I would like to use paved tiles on much of the rest of this. Do we have enough steel around? We could use, like, a bulk goods trader coming. Visitor. Visitor. I am visitor. Progenitor of Ultron. Pew. Who am I? All right, a little bit of this. Go, Angela Moore, kill. Now, we do also have the outdoor lamps. I might as well go through a few of the um, Rimworld anomaly. Are these something that needs to be actually researched? Let's just go back to the main. If we go to advanced lights... Oh, so what is in it? So floodlights here will be helpful because of our, um, whatchamacallit, our... Yeah, you know, I will do this because this is a RimWorld 1.5 thing, so this is technically new content. This is nice because that'll help your colonists move around faster and work faster at night. So let's go ahead and do that. We will get a, an actual research bench going here, because why not? Uh, and we, ooh, we have like a bonus for being close to the bookcase. Wow, very fun and awesome. Amazing, very amazement. I'm finding this colony to be very, like, satisfying to play. Let's feed milady. Uh, should she attack a bear? Her bare hands. No, we still aren't very leveled for that. I will have her attack an a, pa a pack of alpaca. Go, milady. Oh, no, there is a rat over there. We must continue fighting small animals for experience. There we go. Level 14. Kalukale. I am glad much happiness has been had by me. My ghoul lost to a couple turtles when I tried to use them to hunt. Oh, did you have multiple ghouls? Multiple ghoul were slain in the conflict. Uh, you know what we could also do is probably um, just deconstruct all of this over here. Uh, we will do that as well as ancient nav beacon. Uh, we could... Whoops-a-daisy. That was the floor removal thing that was happening. Let us do that. Uh, and then what is this? This is also a thing that we have to attack. So... Ancient war spider remains. There are some things on the map that will attack us when we try to, like, dismantle them, such as this, for example. The ancient, ancient exostrider midsection. This turns into a gigantic mechanoid, which I do not want to awaken right now. Maybe before it would have made sense when there was a trader nearby, but for right now, no. Let's just give them some time to rest. How are we doing? 
Honestly, they've been pretty like, oh yeah, now we've got slept in the cold. We were in mostly 18 degrees Celsius. Hang on a second. I'm going to change for the remainder of the playthrough to Fahrenheit. I'm sorry. It's just what I... I can get freezing temperature, but I don't have a good sense of like... Uh, what? Everyone's going, no, it's been in Fahrenheit. I know, screw me. I, but Or maybe I will just change it. Okay, so 14... 14 Celsius is 57 Fahrenheit. That's actually not that bad. Okay, I'll switch back just for the sake of being consistent. There, I did it. All the Europeans and non-Americans are rejoicing. Fahrenheit is the best height. What other ones are there? Fahrenheit really... I don't know. Why 32 for freezing? We have kind of weird units. Admittedly, like, our system makes no sense, the American one. Inches... And feet happen to be a fairly convenient measure for, like, a lot of things that you use on a daily basis. Because I feel I feel as though as that the centimeter and the meter are a bit too small and a bit too large for normal everyday measurement. But maybe that's just me. Um, why must we have, like, this scientific debate? We should actually be talking about decimeters when we... I don't know why I get into these fights. No one's ever happy with me at the end of these discussions. Um, so we're going to go ahead here, and we will try to just carve out as many cells as we can into these walls. Let's do that, and we will also just get more wall lights in here. Uh, I'm, I plan on carving out much of the in internal mountain uh, for what comes next. We've got one in there. Good, very good. Just make <laughs> move everything to Kelvin so that we all feel equally unhappy. <laughs> now, I, I do want someone to be happy. Otherwise, that might have been the one mod I should have put on was Fahrenheit and Celsius. Although, I find it... It can be helpful for seeing it. Oh no, Grizzly Bear is hunting Elon. Oh, uh, hang on a second. Elon is right there. No, no, no. Not like this. Do we have any other weapons on you? Okay, Joe Bearden, get out of there. Elon, get out your pump shotgun. Milady, where is Milady? Fight it. Okay, Elon's life is actually at stake right now because we had a grizzly bear wandering around in the compound. Get out there, deploy the turret at the grizzly bear. Elon, run to your friends. Run to thy friends. I know it's slightly closer to the grizzly bear. Why did we get like such a... No, Elon is fine, but just a grizzly bear has decided to end him. Here, put that out. Go, 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 baby. Go. Can I have this thing shoot this? Go. No, Angela Morakil, do not approach. Do not approach. Shoot that thing and wait for Milady. Joe Bearden and Angela Morakil stand behind the turret. Wait a second. No, it's hunting Elon. Swarm it. It's our only hope. Wait, Elon, go inside. Elon, go inside. And then in the meantime, can you two swarm it? Why is this turret not shooting this thing? No, don't hold fire. Uh, uh, come on, Elon. Run, 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 Elon. Well, actually, stay in this area. Stay in this area, Elon. I know, I feel like meleeing the grizzly bear is a bad idea too, but I don't have to, like, oh, what a great idea it would have been to not be attacked by it in the first place. Okay, run to Milady. We might get hit once because Milady might be the only one that can actually tank the grizzly. Okay, Elon has been bit. On the right arm by a grizzly bear. Swarm it, swarm it. E I don't think he can get to the next square in time. Hit that thing. Go, Elon. Shoot it! Okay, it's been stunned. Fortunately, it's been stunned momentarily. No, uh, get closer. Get closer, Elon. Swarm it! No. No. Release one of the horrors! Okay, Joe Bearden and Angela Morakil, get back. Get back. Get back, Joe Bearden. Okay, great. We need to heal. Use the good medicine. 
Alright, we haven't had anything this bad happen yet. Use, yes, industrial tech. I just, I want them to survive this. Um, actually, maybe just for these basic ones, use herbal medicine. Angela Morkill isn't as important as Joe Bearden and um, Elon. Yeah. Go away. Save thyselves. Okay, my lady, uh, let's go ahead and consume the dead grizzly. All right, so that's basically how um, RimWorld works. Uh, let's see. Who is the best doctor among us? Level two. Level two. Level three. Okay, Joe Bearden. Good job, Joe Bearden. So why don't you tend to Elon? I think Elon might be the easiest to save. And let's have Angela Moore kill tend to herself. Uh, work doctoring, doctoring, doctoring. Just your injuries don't look as severe. So I need you to tend to thyself. I will have Joe Bearden. Actually, Joe Bearden... Uh, arguably, this is like the worst of both worlds. If we can have him just tend to the other and then the other tends to him, that's better, but... Go, Angela Moore, kill. Unfortunately, everything is kind of dirty. Eat that grizzly bear. I knew it was bad to have one of those things around. Okay, Elon is tended. Joe Bearden, heal thyself. Do you have more medicine on you? Is he using medicine for this? Elon, why don't you tend to Joe Bearden as well? Tend to Joe Bearden. Angela Mora killed. No. All right, I need to recover from this. We have had one kind of very RimWorld type of conflict. It's kind of taken us away from the anomaly stuff, so I'm just going to take a minute to get this colony back under control. Another anomaly type of thing is attacking us. A mo group of monstrous human-like abominations are attacking. Their bodies are ravaged by thick keratin spines, which they can launch. What? At a distance. However, their fleshy forms can do little damage at close range. Okay, so basically engage them in melee combat. Uh, where are they? Okay, so these are the last anomaly that we haven't seen yet. The Gore Hulks. I have not actually encountered these things in combat yet, so this will be a new and unique experience. Uh, you will probably do the fighting with them. Let's just wait until they come closer to our base. You may... How fast are they? They're kind of fast. Okay, bring in Angela Moore, kill, and Joe Bearden, and then let's have Elon ready with the pump shotgun in the background. There we go. Come on, everybody. Come on, gamers. These things are kind of cool, actually. Uh, we need to get another room ready for our anomaly research. I guess we could do another copy of this in here. Technically, it's currently the kitchen, so that's no not great. That's no bueno. Um, uh, how powerful will they be? How much HP do they have? Uh, or can we get inf any information on their health? Log. Information. Melee DPS, 0.36. Study interval, biofight generation. Oh, so each one has a biofight generation. Okay, pain shock threshold times 80%. Psychic sensitivity times 200%. Gore Hulk. Gore Hulk just sounds thick, man. Melee DPS, but what about their ranged basic health? Just get the sentience. Okay, I guess you don't really have HP. Ah, records. That is kind of nice. All right, um, go home and just try to avoid fighting it. I'm going to put our ghoul in nearest conflict with them. I will use our ghoul to kind of test out how their ranged skill is. We could stand by our turret as well, but there is no battery power in it. You know... Do I need to, like, connect this via a wire? Can you I rank the RimWorld for DLC from oh my worst gosh. to best? Uh, okay. Uh, biotech uh, is number one. Um, mm, I personally like ideology after that. I think this is coming in third, although I really like the 1.5 update, but that is kind of being combined with that, but I also haven't fully experienced and it. And the snack. So there is that. And then I think royalty comes in last. In general, the trend is upward. Okay, we have something like this. Why are you not attacking me? Are you a melee Gore Hulk? Hang on a second. This is also this is an 18-year-old Gore Hulk. He's only 17. This Gore Hulk. 
Gore Hulk smash. All right, we will go here. Go, Elon. Na 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 na. Elon. Na 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 na. Elon. All right, go, Angela Moore. Kill. And Joe Bearden. Go, uh, friends. Allow my lady to tank the damage. Okay, is this guy going back to try to do a ranged assault on us? I never really got a sense of their power. Let's go. Go, Elon. What is it? Retreating. Go. Take the other one. Uh, this one must be captured also. Go, Angela Morick. He'll slay the demon. Exercise the demons. Okay, uh, wait a second. I don't really think I want Angela Morakil taking the vast brunt of the melee damage here. Milady, go. You can tank the damage. Okay, now the other ones go in, just so that they're not, like, generally feeling its wrath. Go, Elon! Use your pump shotgun, Elon. Don't shoot any of our people. That would be very dangerous. Okay, Elon. You can uh, uh, sorry, I always get scared of that voice. Uh, we are beginning to capture the flesh demons. Uh, we clean the containment cell, but also capture this Gore Hulk. He's just sitting there. Dude. Now we have how many of these things? One of them is in the fridge. <laughs> I love that. Look, it's in the fridge. Uh, we gotta... Actually, it's probably not a bad place to contain it. Holding requires 60. Uh, uh... We might have to do a transfer here because these things look strong. Uh, uh, um, come on, Joe Bearden. Oof. We have contained them, although they require greater containment. So we need to, like, not maybe be healing them, but maybe put them into a better holding cell. We could do some sort of transfer, but this is a little bit risky because some of these need to be put into other holding spots and then they can be put back into that. So that is tricky and annoying. Uh, let's just start to get these holding cells done better. We need another holding platform. I think we should put it... I actually don't have any room in here. Let's put a holding platform in here. And then another one right here. We just don't have any room. We're going to have to, like, move over things in the fridge. This is kind of like the American Psycho playthrough. Um, Bliss Lobotomy. Oh, cool. So we actually have more options because of making them happier while rendering them capable of incapable of intellectual and skilled labor. Oh, so you make someone into a permanent vegetable that serves your colony. That could honestly be useful, but the risks of the surgery seem great. Insufficient containment. So how long is it until it escapes then? I've never had this happen. I'm a little bit nervous about escape interval 6.8 days because we just don't have enough containment for this thing. Uh, Elon, we need you, like... We need you um, mining. We need you in the mines. This feels like a very Elon type of thing to do. Milady, there goes... Oh, Angela Morkill is actually a pretty good miner. Hang on a second. Go, Angela Morkill. Don't actually do any doctoring. I take that back. You know, I was having you do that. Go, Joe Bearden. Actually, work on this granite wall. I don't want this combined with the kitchen first. Uh, this is kind of weird and freaky. Um, uh, think, Rob. Think. Um... We will transfer the sight stealer to here. Go, Joe Bearden. Do the transferring mint. Do that. Okay, so that thing is in there, and now we need to just move this one into the fridge, because this thing is going to break loose any minute now. Deliver to holding platform, and then just transfer this one to a better containment device. Okay, uh, this is a little bit crazy, so... These things are stronger than... Transfer it. Move it through. Okay, now it is... How is the entity being contained? Okay, escape interval 2.4 years. Containment strength has been raised. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, this one is 61. So this one is actually contained as well. I hope a mod that let schools do basic work like hauling gets made soon. Oh. Mm, yeah, probably. I feel like they're pretty strong. I'm trying to see, like, how they'll balance it. Also, Ventorian, thanks very much for the $5. Am I milking them for energy? I will once I have the technology. Yes, milking will be in order. 
Um, in a sense, in a sense, lactate will be extracted. It's very dark in here, man. Uh, we need more just steel and other basic stuff. Go, milady. I think that this is more well balanced, though, than the what was the last one? Biotech. Biotech was pretty well balanced. It just had re high requirements because it was strong stuff. All right, we are basically now. We've got like five or six of these things we can study. I would say that if we had the time in the day, we could do it. But we now have a fully functional colony. As long as we have some type of security, let's go ahead and get um. Maybe, like, a better spike trap here that we could potentially use for some things and some stuff, man. And let's put a bunch of these. We will put, like, an array of them, which is um, French for array. We could use these, like, here, and then our colonists are still able to step through them like normal boys. We put those here and do that. And then everyone is happy. Go, Angela Moore, kill. All right, that is enough to make me relatively happy. What could possibly go wrong with an array of... And, sorry, I'm mispronouncing it. An array of, sp <laughs> of spike traps. Man. I, you know, on the one hand... Have you ever taken, like, a foreign language class? And then you'd, like... I'm not very cultured, so I can't roll my R's. So when I try to roll my R's, like, people laugh and make fun of me. But then I feel like if I just say an array, <laughs> it is definitely an array. Ugh. Uh, it sounds so bad, though, when I say it, man. It's got to be. Ugh. More on that topic later. One wall. Uh, what would we do for a wall? I mean, they would still get in, right? I mean, I, actually, I won't be doing embrasures. Do ghouls evolve, or are they the same the whole game? You're French, and I'm lying. Yeah, I am lying. Sorry, France. Don't come after me, France. I saw what you did about your uh, the riots in the streets, and I don't, I don't want any part of that on this channel. I'll have nothing to do with France. I mean, uh, Spain. They seem more chill and relaxed there. Actually, I don't know. I, I would really love to visit... Actually, southern France seems like a very interesting place to visit. And Spain. I would like to go there one day. Ah. All right. So let's go ahead and see what we've got going on. We've got the flickering lights. We really need just better... Um, security. We are coming into, like, kind of mid-range colony types of things going on here. We've got a bunch of other beasts and demons that we have to contain, but these things are well enough contained for now. So what does that put us in terms of, like, entity research? Entity codex. The only things that we haven't seen, these are shamblers, these are flesh things, and this is death paul. Death paul is really the scary one. It's just very persistent. It's not that strong, but all the dead things come back to life with it, and it is kind of a pain. But um, beyond that, I, do, I literally don't know any of the other stuff. The ultimate stuff looks quite cool. I mean, I've seen the trailers, but that's about it. Let's just give them a little bit of time to catch up on these tasks. And I'm I'm going it a bit slower, just in order to make sure that no one dies. Losing a colonist here would be quite debilitating, and I actually like my people, as it turns out, this time. Usually I don't like them, but, no, well, this time I do. All right, we are about to finish up transferring all of our uh, anomalies and entities into other things. But we do have shamblers approaching now. Uh, shamblers are tricky. They often can just die when you attack them. We have three of them there in the distance. I'm probably going to send out Elon. They are a little bit faster than you might think they are, though. So we could do that, or we could go in with Milady. Uh, we do have draw shamblers, so this can be useful for taking out other threats that approach on the map. But kind of more importantly here, we have finally got all of these entities. If I can just do this one, transfer the sight stealer here. Uh, these ones are very difficult to contain, but we have good containment strength on them. What do they require? I want to say 60 or 70. Isn't really that high, but we had pretty terrible holding facilities. So we've now managed to kind of separate their jail over to this side of things. 
I also need to replace some of the doors. Like, there is a little bit of work to be done here, but I'm not going to make the max security prison that I'm hopefully going to be able to make uh, just yet. I also just want to get them away from the monolith, too, because what if they break out? I don't want them to damage the monolith. Wow, he's meditating right by them. That's kind of crazy. Uh, but in other news, we do have these shamblers approaching. So let's send out Milady, uh, who is very hungry, actually, and will need to eat something or someone. And then we can send them in, because this is the second to last type of entity that we have faced, right? What are the other ones? Let's just go over to our, whoops, toggle study, entity codex. So now this will be the second to last. Oh, no, we still have not encountered the flesh things. The flesh things. But let's send out her and Elon. Because I really want her just her to be in melee combat. Okay, consume the Ibex Ram. Where are these shamblers going? They're just kind of hanging out over there, honestly. Not too bad. Go, lady. See if we can just kind of provoke one of them. Because I don't want her to deal too much. But she's also better trained in combat now. So, should be alright. Put Elon there. And Milady goes there. Oh, Milady. All right, let Elon do the shooting though here. So just kind of hang out. Cool, all right, that one was successful. Elon, what is your... His shooting is at only two. What is Angela Moore kill? Unfortunately, Angela Moore kill is not that strong, despite her name sounding very strong. Uh, let's back up a bit because we did damage their movement. And we are probably a lot faster than them. Okay, Elon, go, Elon. Fight, Elon. Don't stand so... Don't stand so close to... Uh, here we are. Uh, that one in the background is not very heavily aggroed. Let's stand over here. Pretty easy to... I find these anomalies to be, like, fairly well-balanced or not so impossible to fight. That was my kind of fear would be, like, will I just get totally overwhelmed? No, I feel like that they appear in well-balanced and fair amounts and strengths to begin with. Although I haven't really seen the scaling yet. At least the start is manageable. Uh, okay, cool. We got another one. You stand there. I think we could just take this one now. Not too worried about it. Shambler Doc. Strong Malinger. Ma. Am I saying that right? Melon. A Malinge. Come on, Elon. Let's go, Elon. Ugh. So you're being very badly injured here. I don't really like the look of this, but I think just staying in combat is better than... Come on, Elon. It's right in front of you, man. All right, there we go. Phew, that was kind of weird. We won't be able to study it, but... It is what it is. All right, do you... Are you hungry? now? Nah, you're fed. I don't really want you to get into combat again. Let's just have Elon stand there. Go, Elon. Exercise the demons. Uh, okay, one. Although his accuracy has been pretty terrible. What are you at now in terms of skill? We need you to improve in your... I can't believe he's done this well considering this shooting skill level. Run. I don't want to deal with that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ugh. All right. Safe range. See, like, they're fairly easy to just kind of kite them for the most part, so... Whatever. Go, Elon, go. We believe in you. Why is he so inaccurate to install combat extended? Just firing at the ground in front of him. Oh, cool, we've made it into a shambler. Are we able to capture it? No holding platforms available. Okay, I might actually be good in terms of holding platforms, but let's build another one just so that we can have one of each type of thing. I mean, eventually, having just a huge prison of anomalies here is, I guess, for the best. You can go over there. Let's capture that thing. No, it's it's going over there. Eh, just let Elon capture it. Yeah, it's pretty tame and docile now. That thing shouldn't give us too much trouble. Okay, so now we have a massive prison full of anomalies and all of the steel that we need in order to, like, take care of them. Now we want to kind of start to extract some of their um, bioferrite just to improve the strength of these holding cells and start to, 
uh, make room for improving our rituals more, you know? So that's kind of the next task here. I'm going to go in. Let's just take Elon and have him study these things because he is, like, relatively mentally stable. So if we do this, we can just now get tons and tons of experience in relatively no time at all. Um, here we go. And then this one we will just schedule to transfer into here because we did have these things about to break out, but now they are well contained and it is fairly safe. Again, I'm a little feeling like funny on having so many of them stored together. I'd rather put them in individual cells, but for right now, this kind of works. Guys, I'm feeling like all this talk of Taco Bell is making me hungry. Bioferrite harvesting has been researched. Uh, let's go back to the research room. We want void sculptures to improve our ritual effectiveness, but also bioferrite shaping might be useful because ceremonial hood, but everything here is really cool looking. The crazy one is Philophagy, um, because it will drain experience from a victim that we abduct from somewhere else in the world, which is kind of freaky. Uh, let's see if we can abduct someone from somewhere else in the world, because I think this is going to be one of the weirder rituals that we can perform. Um, this is part of Void Provocation, so we will do this. It's going to be a very expensive one, but it yields some crazy results, it looks like. And right now, we can also shape... Oh, we can do bioferrite harvesting. So now it's really just a matter of, like, um, studying these things for long enough. Can we do multiple? Oh, we can actually harvest from multiple. So which ones are going to yield the best bioferrite? Let's... I'm guessing, like, the stronger ones. Bioferrite generation 1.6. So for sight stealers, it's 1.6. For ghouls, it is one so they're not as good as sight stealers generally it seems that the stronger the entity the more bioferrite it generates uh the shambler is similar to the ghoul i think these things were like three point something i guess we could put them closer together but then that kind of risks it so bioferrite generation three let's have bioferrite harvester in here yeah cool Ooh, demonic monsters are being milked of their hard, like, uh, like kidney stone lactate or whatever it is. It's really weird. Um, but this is kind of an interesting DLC. I, <laughs> these systems always seem so detailed, man. And by detailed, I mean, who thinks of this? Yeah, bioferrite harvester, containment offset minus 15. Okay, so it does actually m make it easier for them to get up, but um, at the same time, like, I will be using better doors from this, I suppose. Where is it actually going to put the bioferrite? Toggle bi bioferrite unloading. Bio okay, so this generates six bioferrite per day. Grid access. This is so interesting. It just feels like something from a very robust RimWorld mod. And I mean like a really good one that should have been put into the game, but they ultimately did decide to. So amazing. Um, there goes Milady eating our dead ram. You know, that's fine. Just be a normal person today. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, 719 steel. Elon's going a little bit crazy because I just had him... Yeah, recreation deprived. I've just had him studying the entities for days. So that's a thing. Otherwise, though, let's go ahead and just finish paving all of this area with tile. I know it looks kind of weird, but I do enjoy doing this with my bases just because ultimately if you just cut off all the dirt, then there's no dirt to track anywhere, which is kind of nice. But you kind of got to contain the fields too, so that can be a pain. Um, but it's just less work on us in general. Okay, we're being raided by... I can't even pronounce that. Just a guy with a shot, pump shotgun, and a guy with a revolver. I'm not as afraid of these ranged uh, attacks anymore. Iron Wild and Tough. Ooh, this guy is... Actually could be a great hauler. Of the pig skins. Do they have a harder time joining us because they're, like, not human? Um, Sammy and Steven... A little bit worried to go out because my colonists are just not in too good a state right now, so... 
Let's just leave them and then wait for them to come in, but let's make sure that Milady is ready and standing by. Yeah, honestly, at this rate, they'll probably just trip over all of our spike traps and die before they come in, so... Oh well. Alright, let's see what they do. Let's see if either of them even survives. Beginning their assault. Oh, Angela Morkill was up there. Hang on a second. Run away. Uh, damn. I should have seen that. Joe Bearden, go. Elon, go. Yikes. Uh, this is bad. I might just be able to have her run away, though. She's fine. She's fine. Okay, send in Milady. Send in everyone else. Ah, uh, why? Oh, God, why? No, God, no. Not like this. No, really, not like this. Elon hasn't even been able to sleep. Oh, his mood is improving, though. Okay, cool. I've got them to come along. Never mind. Go, Angela. Just be free in nature. Genius. I am a genius. Whoa, that was crazy. I want this guy in my faction. Hang on a second. Uh, Joe Bearden? Alright, Joe Bearden, you can get in there. Actually, run away, Joe Bearden. I really want you in this fight. There goes Sammy Steven. Steven, was he the good one? No, he's not really the good one. Sammy is the strong one. Why does Sammy not just give up? He's about to die in 11 hours. Come on, give up, Sammy. Give up, Sammy. Join our faction. We could use a pig skin around here. A pig skin. More like it. Man, these guys do not give up. I'm gonna need Joe Bearden back in there. Is he's just going to fight? Like, feel no pain. This guy is a space marine. Jeez. Okay, come on. Um, Joe Bearden, let's actually capture this guy if we can. This guy feels no pain. Dang. I will p keep, uh, maybe not such a great idea to keep him with the occult monsters, but he's incapable of getting up, right? So, so, put you with the demon. That would be kind of a creepy way to hold somebody for holding. Uh, let's put another sleeping spot in here. I will just make this a prison. Uh, do, 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 do. This will be for prisoners. I will probably change this as soon as he gets up and heals, because this does not seem particularly safe. Capture him and take out the other one. This one I'm not as crazy about, so he can just kind of die. Sorry. Bring back Angela Morkill for uh, the equipment of the revolver. Um, actually, she's a little bit better in other stat areas, but whatever. What about Joe Bearden? He's better. He's also better in melee. It's too bad. I don't really need them for melee. Pump shotgun. Normal 99%. Is that better than ours, our current one? Eh, nah, it's about the same. All right, whatever. Good enough. All right, go back to work. All right, let's see what we can do with this guy. Uh, Sammy, so he is probably about to die in four hours. Uh, all right, I don't really want to use up the good medicine, but do your best. Already tending to Sammy. Good luck. All right, this is going to be kind of interesting. Have we done anything, like, awful to him? We didn't cut anything off of him, so he's, he could recover. Mind-chattering pain. He kind of deserves it at this point. Incapable of intellectual and cleaning is fine because he could haul. It's still useful to me. Uh, I've got enough intellectual here. His melee is very high, but... His shooting will pass. The animals, the crafting... This guy could basically be a crafter and a hauler. Like a very good... person for the colony. I think we will try to recruit him. He is a pigskin. I mean, she. I call everyone he when I can. <laughs> Why do I do this? This one was a myth. Stephen Wilcox. Sounds like a real person. <laughs> what have we done? Check needs of prisoner, yeah. Um, man, not maintain only. Let's do recruit. Uh, reducing resistance might also help, but hemogen form... Ooh, there is some crazy stuff you can do here. But I think I will just do use this guy to kind of accelerate the whole colony. We could make him into a ghoul if we were, like, especially dastardly. But I think I need more regular colonists before I handle that. Slay a raccoon. There we go. Uh, 
Wu-Tang. All right, do I think it would be interesting? Yeah, I could work with RimWorld Medieval. I could see this happening. Actually, it'd be really interesting with RimWorld Medieval, because they aren't necessarily... I mean, they're pretty strong, some of the entities, but... Probably enough ways to mod it. Like, wasn't there Sky RimWorld? Do you guys remember Sky RimWorld, the mod set? I want to say it was Astartes Gaming who... It wasn't actually Skyrim World, but he just created enough mod associations that it was like, this is essentially Skyrim, but in Rim World. And it was very cool. Um, playthrough from actually many years ago now. It's one of the first interesting Rim World playthroughs I'd... I was just like, this looks like a cool idea. Shout out to Astartes. <laughs> this is when I think I first started doing, like, themed playthroughs. He did really cool stuff. I like Astartes. Hmm. Tend. Joe Bearden, go ahead and eat. Eat for thyself. Winter has begun. Man, we really messed up this guy's day. Uh, needs of prisoner. It's pig's kin, of course. He's not a... He, they all pigs are kin. Of course. Imprisoned with entity. So he doesn't really like being imprisoned with an entity. That makes sense. It's good that this has a moodlet because I feel like it, it does kind of deserve to be... Have something said of it. Let's go ahead and try to separate his bed. We will build him a real bed. Because, yeah, nobody really deserves that. I have to share a cell with a, uh, a monster. Let's go ahead and put that... Th Actually, we will put that somewhere else and then move it. All right, uh, a little bit more maintenance to do here, but then we hopefully can get this guy over to our faction. I think this would be jolly good, actually. Um, and we'll see what happens from there. Missing 45 wood. We need a little bit more wood. So I just got a few more tasks I got to catch up on, but cool stuff coming. Elon tried to woo Angela Morakil by boasting about his own friends. <laughs> My own friends was attracted and is now Elon's lover. All right, now they're going to sleep together. We're gonna jump to location. So we are going to give them, I uh, will let them have uh, their own place. Although I'm worried about Joe Bearden because Joe Bearden was like coming on to Angela Moore kill, although he's been rebuffed. So we've got like kind of a love triangle. It's a good thing that Sammy the pig will be joining us soon, who I think we've, we've almost got a new name, but we will wait until he's recruited to officially give it to him. Um, but yes, let us, let us have love. We will, um, probably use this as an excuse to begin working on bed, double beds. Because uh, we're running out of time and space. And I, I think I'm going to put all the bedrooms over here. So I'm just going to plan that out super quick. Okay, things are moving and shaking and changing. We have had the red visitor event. This is, I believe, a cultist. We had this with a very mysterious woman last time, but now we seem to have gotten the same event with Ichabod Vortex Fenwick, which is already an amazing name. Um, we are going to talk to him with a human, but we're also being attacked by uh, the Gorehulks, so there will be more containment occurring soon. But let's send over... The actually, let's send in Joe Bearden. Wait, who is better at social right now? <sighs> no, Elon is improving. Okay, Elon might take over the free world instead of Joe Bearden. It's a it's a standoff. All right, a stunningly good-looking stranger named Vortex stands in front of you. His face beams with confidence as he opens his hands in a gesture of fellowship. He says he is here to make a deal and will help you exchange for simple hospitality. This is his purpose, and he always fulfills his purpose. Vortex is skilled in everything to an unnatural degree. Regardless of the subject, he has mastered it. In addition, his work ethic is remarkable. Uh, he appears to be the perfect worker. He may be very useful, but it also sense there's something he is not telling us. I'm just going to take him, because why not, like, kick the hornet's nest, right? Uh, yeah. Um, it's totally fine. Let's do it. This can go awry. Maybe it always does. I'm not sure. I've seen this event in another save file. Let's just have him. But otherwise, he will basically do this. He will sometimes release the anomalies. Because he has, like, a weird fascination with them. Where is his trait? At least the one I've seen. Oh, no. He doesn't have a void fascination. Maybe he'll create Neuralink. Yeah. Something like that. 
All right, anyway, um, we will use you for your abilities. We are going to give you... I'm kind of debating on this. Is this a very good idea to give him a pump shotgun? I'm just going to do it anyway and maybe regret the consequences later on. These things will probably just fall into our traps, but let's do it. Honestly, even if he does betray us, unless if he turns into a giant, like, uh, tentacle monster, which uh, he could, we never know. Probably he will at the end. Um, I mean, it is kind of net overall a good thing, unless if it totally destroys the colony, so we'll just invest in some more security. Okay, more of these things coming through. Send in milady. Oh, whoops, it actually got an attack on us. Send in, uh, actually have Vortex go over there. All right, we captured two more. Uh, we are really starting to get a lot of anomaly monsters in our base. Let's get some more, uh, how much do these things cost? They cost 40, that's not really that much. I'm going to put one more in this totally normal prison cell and another one over here, and we now have more bioferrite that we can use for these things. I'm kind of cramming them all into our prison, it's... Probably not very well advised, but uh, now Vortex will be able to study these things. He is feeding a fine meal to... This is going to basically speed up our colony by like a thousand percent having this guy in here. Oh, also we do need these things, but let's... How much time do they have left? Cannot crawl. Death in 12 hours. Death in 7 hours. Let's see if we can even just build these things faster than they come in. Joe Bearden work on this one and actually vortex as soon as you're done feeding that meal work on this thing we need this th these two things up like now okay capture those things now capture the gore hulk send in milady to actually get her away from that thing send vortex to ca uh in one second capture it capture it okay cool two more gore hulks let's just make sure that this doesn't cause the other ones to escape They've been captured. Are they... They are still losing health, but we will tend to them in a moment. This is a great doctor as well. Okay, so how is our containment going? Still at 89. We have multiple in one cell. Dude, three gore hulks in one cell is actually making me a little bit nervous. Sammy, how are you doing? We need to convert you, like, now, because we need to use this cell for this other guy. He's not too happy about it. We now have three, six... We have eight things contained here, man. Go, Angela, go. <laughs> um, let's also reinstall this bed in the prison cell. Elon will go over there and have Angela Moore kill. We will also install this one in the prison. And Joe Bearden's bed can go into the prison as well. Ooh. Heavy rocker fin. Hope your night's going a little better. Sorry to hear that. Also, Dragon Knight. 557, thanks very much for the sub. We could... I think I'm just going to ignore whatever is probably going to be the horrible drawback of this guy, and let's just have him... I'm a, I'm on for the ride of Anomaly, even if it gives me some weird stuff. I want to experience the good and the bad. I don't want to be so afraid of the future, you know? Normal, normal, excellent, great. Okay, so we got uh, fantastic bed quality on everything. Let's build just one more in here, and uh, who cares if they build it in the... Actually, I don't really want it built in the dark. Let's build it in the light. Build it right over there. It's totally fine. See, this just speeds up our colony so much more, and we are in for such a better ride from here on in. Let's go ahead and just do a uh, little bit more in the way of floors now. Everything is going to start speeding up in the colony. Let's put in some steel floor here, paved tile, there and there. And then we have any type of blocks coming on. We should have some... Ooh, a masterwork double bed. Vortex is very astounding and amazing. We will put that into this dark room where no one will appreciate it. Sorry, Vortex. See, he does... I mean, even if he turns out to be some sort of demon... Who knows? Like, he's a little too good to be true. Elon, wake up. Deliver the bed into the prison. Also, disassemble that. Someone get him back into bed. Capture him. And then put that bed in there. All right. Everyone sleeps in these outdoor beds for just a day or two. <laughs> just ignore that. 
<laughs> there it goes, Joe's like, I need to go to bed. There we go. Okay, go to bed in there, Joe. Good job. All right. Woo, nice. All right. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, what are you doing? Okay, you are now just basically eating from our meat stores. We've got a little bit of work left to do on this prisoner, and then we can move the other guy into the actual prison cell. Because we don't really want to use this one. Ooh, okay, and now we can start to harvest the electricity from these guys soon. Let's just do a little bit more Gorhulk study, and I want Vortex studying these things as well. Isn't Vortex a great studier, though? Vortex is gifted in literally everything. We will have you be the tailor as well. Art, craft, grow, plant, cut, mine. Oh, man, it's just really an incredible skill set. We will just have you do everything. Um... Handle the studying, six hours, 1.1 days, a little bit more studying. Because I do believe that Vortex will get better research results than... Let me just see, 0.44? No, but, I mean, the research does occur at a pretty fast rate still, so that's good. Elon's also coming along. Alright, we need uh, we need some new names. Uh, what names have we lived up to right here? Alright, who is a person who is too talented at everything and amazing... And is also uh, an incredible... Ad we have named our uh, powerful colonist Phil Swift. Phil Swift. Unfortunately, not actually any relation to Neckbeards, but I just felt as though he'd, he belonged in the culture of this playthrough. And so I am going to name him Phil Swift. He is mine. There are many more bearded men. All, unfortunately, Phil Swift does not have a beard, but if he did grow a beard, can you imagine how powerful he would become? I'm just going to leave him in there as that, and then we can, you know, continue on our daily lives. But yes, this is our other colonist. We have Phil Swift, Angela Moore, Kill, uh, Milady, who needs to be fed again as we continue going on. Let's go in and finish our research here because we're about to get full power from our electronic synthesizer from these other things. We also have more bioferrite coming out. Uh, and Sammy is about to join us as well. And uh, unrecruit. Wait a second. Uh, no, I need you to... Okay, yeah, attack it to death and then eat. Consume. There we go. All right, so now we have good food... We have good everything. We have good research. We have good um, anomaly studies going on. I think at this point we can start to make either Joe Bearden, Elon, or Phil Swift into like the Nabob, the immortal light of the colony, one might say. So we will probably take one of them and then... Uh, you know, use them to abduct people from other lands and suck out their youth. That's how this playthrough is going to end. Uh, no more resistance on Sammy. Good. So that's my next plan in research. We have 28.48 out of 30. Uh, do we have any more? Come on, Phil Swift. We have... Okay, go study and then study and then study. And then... na 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 Woo. Skip's not quests. 29.70. We can start an electro harvester. Okay, so this thing should be pretty cool, and then we'll do skip abduction after this. So, an electro harvester should allow us to take some of the stability from our um, monsters and make it. And I think I'm going to do these ones because these ones are just a little bit easier to contain still. We don't need that much electricity, and these guys are already giving us bioferrite, so I don't want to lower the stability in this room too much more. Although, I probably could. Um, but I just don't want to do too too much at once. I want to, you know, take my time with it. And once we do that, then we will have solid, stable lights on. Because we've had weird flickering lights in our colony for quite some time, and I, it's been kind of annoying. Let's go ahead also, too, and maybe start with some actual research. Because, uh, like, the ritual stuff is great, but having just someone assigned purely to research would be great, too. Cool. Seems like Sammy the pig just enjoys meat. That's the way he is. Void kidnap. Yeah, I mean, void kidnapping is basically the like the go-to in this. It seems to me that in this playthrough, what you're supposed to be doing is kidnapping other colonists and like 
stealing their youth, their skills, and their... It could be that Phil Swift... <laughs> that Phil Swift has already taken, like, the skills from other abducted pawns. You know? Like, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Hmm. Hmm. Paved tile. No. Okay, I'm good here. I'm good. Yeah, his skills are crazy, right? New recruit on Sammy. Woo! All right, cool. Sammy has joined our, um, our squad. So I'm going to make Sammy because he, like, you know, he has some kind of military association. And I'm going to make him, um, colon, actually, colon... Powell. See, like, pow, like, it's violent and strong. Like, maybe he's a good fighter. He is good in melee. So he's Cologne Powell. You see what I did there? Um, you can all compliment me one at a time. You don't have to do it. You, you don't have to talk over each other. We can just take turns for how amazing my idea... Actually, that wasn't even my idea. Thank you for that one. That was kind of a group effort. That was several comments over several days put together i really do i am happy to be back here on twitch you guys have, you guys do make me laugh a lot um i don't i'm sad that my internet has been bad but it's nice to be back i missed you so much um what are we doing next so we've got uh do we have any stones left no not really we're just going to need to gather up limestone limestone private limestone from elsewhere in the world all right, very good. I mean, well, not very good, but good enough. Good enough. Cool, we've got more work to do. Man, look at how fast Phil Swift goes. Do you think there's any relation to Taylor Swift? He sounds Irish. <laughs> He's an Irish, the famous Irishman, Phil Swift. Um, let's see. Uh, available, the Nutty Prisoner. Uh, Red Megascarp, the leader of the Red Roller Coalition. Okay, so this is Tribals, probably. Wants to stash a special prisoner. Uh, I don't really want to take care of prisoners. Void Sight Serum. This probably would allow us to see the invisible things in the void. Uh, we've already had this one, right? We had Phil Swift join. Okay, the Visitor. That one we've already had, too. This guy has just sped up our colony so much. Let's go ahead and transfer this person, though, to... Let's uninstall these. Go, Phil. Go. Cool. Let's transfer this guy into the... Uh, why do we have him still in here? Uh... Strip clean clean prison cell. Ah, this is kind of odd. I've never had them not want to put a prisoner in here. This is technically... Okay, there we go. He just did it. Somebody had already reserved it. Nice. All right, we're more or less good there then. All right, just a little bit more bedroom construction stuff. And then the next research is going to be on skip abduction. So this is going to be... What is this technically? So, study of natural entities to uh, do the research. No advanced projects is available, blah, blah, blah. Um, perform a psychic ritual. But Okay, so this is a ritual. So, might be helpful to get some void sculptures. This is going to be essentially like the Naru Naruto summoning Gamabunta. Invisible creature alert. Everybody run. Uh, somebody might be trying to steal our sight. Elon, get closer to Milady. Phil Swift and Angela Moore kill and Joe Bearden come in. Cologne Powell. You don't actually have a weapon. Let's get you back your revolver that we took from you before. Uh, and Elon and Milady get just get everybody get everybody get together. Come on, let's go. That means that this thing is probably right here and moving. Yep, yep. There it goes. There it goes. All right. There's the sight stealer. Watch out for this thing. Go, Cologne. Uh, actually, what are you doing with your life? Get that good revolver over there. Let Milady handle it. All right. Let's have Phil Swift and Elon. I know it's probably not a good idea to have people shoot shotguns at each other while facing each other, but in RimWorld logic, this actually works. Headshot on this thing. Take it down. No, Joe, let them do the work for you. It's dead. 
we've been spared another day. Consume the sight stealer. Ghouls are worth getting if you kill them, but I'm not sure about the others. Can you actually bring them back to life? Can you res them? Yes, it is time to panic now. <laughs> it is indeed time to panic. Now is the right time. I love that. Invisible enemies, that's so cool. Okay, go Cologne. It's French. He's a French uh, colonist. Good. Milady will be okay. Milady is has actually regenerative uh, capabilities, so she will she will stay alive. Um, we can use her as kind of a meat shield in this circumstance. That's what the ghouls are useful for. We will just improve these corpse stockpiles. Let's go ahead and do this. So, na 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 na. Abduction! Let's go ahead and do. Oh no, Phil Swift is slightly stressed. Dark visions! Wait a second. Oh no, this is like a new type of mood break that happens. Greedy for an impressive bedroom. Oh, was he jealous? I mean, we're gonna do that. Has become overwhelmed with horrible visions, rambling about things that only he can see. He will snap out of it in a few hours. This actually doesn't seem like that bad of a mood break. It's not an insulting spree. Does he have a social log? Does he go over to people and try to tell them about it? Or does he just, like, start babbling, like, Bleh. greedy for impressive bedroom? He is greedy. This is not actually a... There's always some negative trait alongside... The other ones, so I've not seen these, like, perfect colonist. The, or the unknown colonist mood breaks and stuff like that. That is a little bit scary. So where is, uh, Phil Swift? Okay, Phil Swift, come on. Let's get put nice things in Phil's bedroom. Give maybe, like, some flex tape in there. Here we go, flex tape. I'm bringing you the flex tape, as much flex tape as you need. We'll just flex tape it all together. Don't even use hammer and nails. You just put flex tape on it. Oh, God. Whoa, what was that sound? Oh, that was probably the contained anomalies. I thought that there was a demon inside of him. Probably there is, in all fairness, but... You know, I mean, we got like 15 or 20 minutes until we probably find that, right? Uh, let's go ahead and put in a wall lamp. Good old wall lamp. Guys, this is a wall lamp. It's not actually a wall light. And, um, it has nothing to do with the mod. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, greedy, you're right. Greedy isn't that bad, because jealous that you need to make sure that their bedroom is, like, the strongest. That's true. That's true. Wait, is that the pig man? Cologne? Cologne? He looks so, like, dapper in his bowler hat. Let's also, uh, let's put some of these power lines through. If we do power, hidden conduit. Okay, we want to run these things over because now we are sapping the electricity from our monstrous allies, uh, or, like, prisoners, basically. So we will just use this. We don't really need to be worried about, uh, putting wall, like, wires through walls anymore, but I'm just going to do it anyway a little bit through force of habit. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Let's also just find a little bit more of this stuff that we can mine. Mine the vein, mine the vein, and... Do we have any steel left? Are we out of steel? Oh no. Uh, mine this vein. Mine this vein. Mine these veins. There we go. Alright, cool. And... I mean, now that we have these, like, super powerful colonists, we can start to move into mid to late game RimWorld. All right, so now we can focus on abduction. I have some research to do, so there's a, a few more tasks that are just Lars a little bit boring I have to go about, so I'll be back in a second. Oh, no. Angela Moore kill uh, has actually, is actually with child now. Oh, my gosh. New pregnancy. This actually is a... I'm not very happy about it. Okay, so we are going to have children in the colony. What will we do? We're going to have to take care of them with the whole, like, anomalies still around. <laughs> Maybe the child will turn into some sort of wizard. Oh, God. Go, m'lady. Oh, you are actually urgently hungry. All right, eat one of those guinea pigs that just showed up for your devourment. 
I think now we are at the point where we can just start to force some research here. Um, what have we got? Mm. No. Okay, just do a lot of study here. Not much else to do. Study, study, Phil. Oh, why is Phil Swift stressed? No, you shouldn't be stressed. Okay, then after you're done with that, start studying. Reserved. Let's just see how much research we can come up with in like a half hour. So everyone here is very happy. They won't snap for a while. Okay, so let's see our research. 13.5 to 14.11. This is more like the speed that we want to be getting this anomaly research at. Because now we can start to abduct enemies from elsewhere in the world, drain their brains, and sap them to take their experience. And then well, who is upset? Oh, hang on a second. Uh, oh, you were supposed to eat the guinea pig. There you go. Never mind that. Um, whoops-a-daisy. And then once we have that, we will start just massively improving our colony because everyone will be skilled at everything. Uh, we have got a bunch of, what are these, like, tieflings type of people? Impids, all right. Interesting. So we've got them coming in. Oh, a solar flare. That is not so completely awesome. Let's actually have you guys start to train in the way of the blade. I will have you equip a revolver. Oh, no. You know, we're about to get it with a... Never mind. Let's just do it. All right. Just live your lives. I'll have you guys do melee, but these people will stand here. Joe, stand here. Milady, you will actually go out and meet them once they get appreciably close in. You guys stand by. You stand there. And then you stand there. Oh, God. We have been covered in flames. I did not expect that. Run away. Run away. Run away. How did she have a flamethrower? Oh, it was some sort of, like, tribal equipment. Jeez, man. That totally threw me off, but I gotta say these RimWorld raids are getting more interesting. Okay, continue to go in because burning will be the least of our problems. Cool, just stand there. Stand there. Go in after that one. That's what I'm talking about. Accept the fire lovingly. Wow, look at that. This is why, for the record, I don't really like doing, um... Oh, look, she's just going after him. Wow. Like, even without being drafted. That is very interesting. This is why I prefer to build with, uh... Oh, what else do you have? You are Sedge... Sezjulraz Ret... That, man, these names are great. Uh, whatever is happening in the random name generator is doing it right. Quick Sleeper and Pretty. Actually, this is not a bad colonist. I've just been getting, s like, spoon-fed great colonists left and right. I will take this person and I will put them into the demon container. All right, let's give it a shot. Uh, yeah, you go in here. All right, fantastic. We might even get another colonist. This place is doing great. Moving on up to our kind of, like, late-game colonist makeup now. Nice. I have made efforts to contain the demons, however, they continue to grow worse. Uh, we have some sort of, uh, where is the flesh beast? Okay, flesh beasts are emerging from a hole, which is not amazing. Um, twisted obelisk, whatever this is, is just spawned out of the sky. All I wanted to do was convert some prisoners, and no, like, you can't just be a normal boy, you have to, you know, fight tentacle monsters and do a horrible look here they come out like three four, four more and more of them who even knows what this is they're only seven years old let's take all of our people out of containment and put them here this is bad how many more of you okay only four i suppose then we'll this hole will oh cool we do have a new recruit thank goodness because needs must be met you have no skills and nothing to offer whatsoever here have a revolver um and you are also equally useless uh actually you may not be you actually have something to offer but you know let's have everyone together now Woo. all right here we go run away and 
Perhaps the most nerve-wracking component is not knowing how strong anyone is. So come, my lady. Here we go. Come back to all of the people with the ridiculous names. And hopefully we will be able to shoot them in the face. Uh, let's go over here. Um... Oh, that wasn't so bad. Nothing. Nothing to it. All right, you get over there. Get by Jerome the Dome. No? Oh, that doesn't make a difference. No, it doesn't make a difference at all. All right, everyone out. Out, I say. Prison break. Really? Of all times, this? Uh, oof. We're about to get a situation on our hands. Let's see which side he decides to escape to. And so he's somehow gotten, like, the key. Unfortunately, the other prisoner has a revolver on him. You will regret this. Actually, let me just send the flesh beast at you. You, you will regret this. All right. Um, oof. Oh, no. Angela Moore kill was actually out there for a moment. Well, fortunately, has now made it back inside. Thank goodness, too. Uh, no, Joe Bearden... Run back. Run back in self-defense. Uh, go with Angela Moore, kill. There we go. Our combatants. Here we go. And shoot that one, too. No, Elon, run. Run. No, Elon. Don't let it happen. Like, not like this. You two get back. All right, I am really just making a lot of mistakes here. But fortunately, these things are not that strong. The flesh beast has been downed. There goes Milady. All right, and we will um, imprison it. Everything is fine. Just ignore this. All right. Um, hmm, back to normal day tasks. Uh, it is nice not having to. Um, no holding platforms available. Uh, why do I do like the Jimmy here thing? You know, like the It's Wednesday, my dudes thing. I, do, I went right into that. I make that sound. That's something that I do. I have to live with this information now. Hakuja. Ooh. Ooh, look at this. Just friendship and helping going on right now. Okay, uh, shoot him. Oh, no, don't shoot him. Never mind. Capture him, but not in this one. It's not as good. It's not as good. Go, Phil. All right, uninstall this. Okay, the colony continues. We have captured someone. Everything is fine. I mean, not really, but at the same time, we keep getting attacked by demons, so I just have to interrupt. But yeah, we're getting into like late game as far as uh, the number of colonists we have. Hakuja, I mean, despite the fact that he wasn't very happy, he had good reasons to not be happy, but he'll be happier later on. We will contain the beast. And then, uh, th there goes Phil Swift. We will work on the holding platform and maybe get us a flesh beast. Hooray. Cool. I, I think that is about it. Yeah, I just need to get a little bit more holding containment going. Okay, we have contained the flesh monster, and it is not as difficult to contain as these, uh, Gore hulks. Although we now we are getting a, quite a lot of this bioferrite from them. Fantastic, because that will help us uh, contain them in yet even more doors. We will just put maybe another one right about here. I think that's fine, and then we could just do more granite walls because we want to get all of these out of consistent materials. Medical emergency on you. I mean, you kind of you know you sort of deserve a medical. Em yeah. I mean, no one does it, but maybe this guy does, because he attempted to escape prison. Detected a logging... No, I don't want to go to a logging work facility. This is about horror games. Absolutely. No, what is this? Critical... Same deal. Everything is fine. I have to catch up. Okay, the obelisk has been activated. Everyone has a flu, uh, for God's sake. Activate. It swells with grisly energy as the air crackles around it. It's about to self-destruct in a great explosion. Before it does, it will use its hideous transformative power on any creature it, it can detect. Okay, so probably those chickens over there. A uh, guinea pig is mutated into a flesh beast. And okay, we have to harness this thing's power. It's fortunate that we have a... 
Everything is mutating into a flesh beast. Not everything. I guess we could have studied it. It left behind a shard. That's sort of nice. Um, oh, dang it. Look, what the hell is that? Bulb freak. Good thing that we have these bulk goods traders visiting. Oh no, there goes Phil Swift. Go back. Tend to Joe Bearden. Uh, hang on a second. I think he'll get back in time, but... Run! Run, Phil Swift! <laughs> Don't stop till you get home! <laughs> no! That thing is huge and creepy. Uh, I mean, that seems like that's about it, though. Where is Milady? Alright, she's indoors. We're fine. Oh no, there they go after just some normal chickens. <laughs> Who could have done this? Uh, I guess we could eat the flesh beasts. Uh, eh, we'll be fine. We just got good timing with the uh, bulk goods trader visit. Just every one of my colonists had a flu at that time. It was a, kind of annoying. All right, go trade with these people. While it destroys the flesh beasts attacking us. Uh, that seems like a bit much. Oh god, oh that's not so bad. It just mutates into three. Still kind of cool though. In the meantime, we will just trade for some neutral aiming. Okay, everything is fine. This is fine. Nothing is wrong. Good thing that this happened now, because otherwise this would have been a real pain, but I guess we were already dealing with enough of a bad event with the flus going around. A bit annoying, a bit annoying nonetheless, but uh, how is Joe Bearden? He had a pretty bad flu, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. I'm a little more worried about that. Joe Bearden, why are you cowering over there? Go rest. All right. False alarm. Just wanted to update as things got a little spicier. Oh, no. Phil Swift is moving on. Okay. Well, Phil Swift, you blessed us with all your the flex tape you could. I guess that's it. That was a lot of damage. Uh, but it is good to know that this isn't just a terrible event. This is basically a visiting colonist who gives you a bit of a... And he goes on. Uh, he, he has ascended. He has done all that he could for our colony. Oh, damn it. Why did... I wish we had taken away his pump shotgun, but... Goodbye, Phil Swift. You did great things for us. <laughs> as you have done for many. As you have done for many. Um, I don't know where we go from here because that man was strong, very strong and powerful. But we are now suffering from a flu all over the place. Uh, it's a pain. It's alright. We will just get on with our anomalous lives. Alright, another warped... Uh, all these obelisks keep appearing nearby. I think we'd probably better do some studying on them because they seem to keep spawning just nightmares everywhere. Uh... Although the game has done me a great favor by putting all of my uh, colonists out of commission. I really, this is the reason I don't play on losing is fun, because it just makes the game unplayable. I'm on blood and dust right now, but it, it's annoying because you get sent flus that just give your entire colony sickness. I use up as good medicine as I can, and we don't have, like, an actual hospital yet, but at the same time, it just puts the whole game out of commission for five hours. It's a pain in the butt, but, um, yep. That is happening next. Oh, this is very interesting. So what we can do, and I didn't do before, but uh, I'm not sure if this actually, I guess it doesn't count as more research, but he does seem to be improving his intellectual level here by suppressing this ob obelisk. Yeah, he is gaining experience, but you can bring down its percentage just so you can kind of ward off this attack from uh, the demons in the void. So yeah, we there we are. Making less sound now, back down to 1%. Perhaps you could destroy it, though I'm guessing that would also probably cause an attack. Okay, we are just barely overcoming these flus. Uh, pain in the butt. Really, flus. But it is, it is like a, a different test for your colony, I suppose. Everyone else did better, except Joe Bearden was only just barely able to overcome it while sustaining the incredible... Uh, uh, you know, I I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just so full of <laughs> I'm just so full of crap this month. <laughs> um, yeah, 
this has been a uh, uh, this has been a, a tricky one to overcome. But yeah, we have done that while managing. It, it's a unique set of challenges, though. This one, you've got to like automatically suppress these things by just having people go over them, but then get ready to confront it, and then finally we can confront these demons again. Okay, a lot of stuff is happening. Five desperate... We have uh, refugees seeking help. Uh, they will probably not stay, but whatever. We have a baby being born, and that is important to take care of. Bloodlust, beautiful masochist, incapable of firefighting. Sanguine, incapable of mining. D uh, this is the only bad one so far. Daria, unfortunately, is incapable of most important things. But another masochist, and one named literally Trujillo. Uh, incapable of caring and social, but that's fine. Nudist, pretty body purist. Okay, these people are fine, generally speaking, jolly good people. Let's go ahead and have them, like, just help take care of the colony, because we have to boost our ourselves. I know that there is crap everywhere, but everything is relatively well taken care of. So, I think from here, the answer is this. The answer is... We need to uh, boost ourselves into research. I feel like, a, a, again, much like in many normal RimWorld playthroughs, I've just tried to get to research so much of the time, but we're so close to getting all of the cool anomaly stuff, which will send us into hyperspace. You know what I'm saying? So here we go. The next time you see this colony, stuff will be had. And we have recruited Hakuja, too, which is also very good because this is going to be yet another good colonist a very good doctor mainly the most Im or perhaps the most important part here which is great all right we finally get to the point where colonists are basically just uh like of their own accord doing the studies on our uh on the demons that we have imprisoned so we are going to use these visitors to kind of hypercharge our growth like i said we have a uh, log nearby uh we are about to get the skip abduction so i think we will just perform this ritual but probably not right away, because we need someone... Or we need to be able to suck someone's brain out, basically. That, like, that is the... That, that is the, the thing we're going to do. So, uh... <coughs> excuse me. We need to... <coughs> I'm sneezing. Find someone to suck their brain out. Okay, Daria has made progress... One of our visitors has made progress studying the monolith. The structure connects... Normal space to the void, a dimension hidden in the substructure of space-time. Some powerful mind in the void is leaking influence into our reality. Interesting. Once to study the monolith, uh, this always ends something like this. Uh, the monolith continues to be a subject of study, and with these visitors, they're surprisingly contributing a lot to research. Not really what I planned, I wanted them to just clean, but whatever. Some of them just refuse to do, like, dumb labor, but whatever. It's fine, there's blood everywhere, but, you know, we're studying occult demons and uh, monolith. So, that's uh, that's basically the name of the game right now. We have uh, not much else going on. We have a baby on the way, too. This is kind of crazy, but, yeah, that's what's going on right now. We can just disassemble this, and it is nice to get an influx of labor, to just keep your colonists up to date with everything going on. So much stuff passes through the colony, and managing it right is a help. But yeah, we're now just about ready to start sucking people out of their houses, and then scooping out their brains or something like that. We always seem to get this. Don't put your door next to the containment thing, otherwise they'll stand in the doorway and let the, uh, the monsters be uncontained. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Angela Moore kill noticed activity in the warped obelisk. Some mysterious internal organism has come to life, causing her to begin to disappear. And she will soon vanish completely. No. She was just about to have the baby, too. Bruh. No, this is crazy. Wait, I've vanished into thin air. Oh, she's fine. She's just in the middle of gray door. Ooh, you know, I could look up what's happened because I really would like to know, but I think we will just go in. It's too bad that I don't have a gun because uh, whatever happens next is going to be crazy. Okay, so normal things happening at the colony 
Dude, there's gonna be some bad people in here, but what do we do? We just destroy it? Oh, she's reappeared. Has been teleported to a strange room. The walls are an unidentifiable gray material, and the air is dead still. She doesn't know where she is or how to get home. A nearby door is jammed shut, but it looks like it can be forced to open with some effort. Right-click jam doors to open them. By studying the obelisk, other cast may be able to understand what happened to her to find a way to help her. Alternatively, attacking the obelisk may provoke it to abduct more colonists. And I don't really want to abduct more. Uh, but I... Can we just study it? I mean, we could suppress it. Entity Codex. You can attack it to destroy it, but may unleash dangerous and unnatural phenomena. Yeah, we also have the Twisted Obelisk. I get there's more. Uh, send colonists to suppress it. You can also mark it for study to try to learn its purpose and perhaps make use of it. Oh, we could just study it. Why haven't we been studying it all this time? Never mind. Okay, let us study it to hopefully get her out of there. Don't try to open that. Just... Oh, wait, but you're going to be stuck in there forever, right? Sleeping. This will be a very interesting experiment, indeed. But she's also getting hungrier and hungrier in there. Elon, you're our only hope. Go study the warp the warped obelisk. I don't know how the hell else we're going to do this. Advanced plus 32. What? What? Either that or we just lose a colonist inside of here. This is so interesting, this entire DLC. Probably, like, some of the most interesting events and some of the best, like, most engaging gameplay I have seen of them all. Uh, void sculptures. Okay, let us let us return to the bli uh, research screen. Biopharite generator. I just feel like we got to save this lady in time, right? You know? Advanced psychic ris rituals. I still want to be able to suck someone's brain out. Frenzy juicer, biofire uh, serum said this is ghoul resurrection, mind numbs here and ghoul. Uh, I guess we have to keep going with it, but I mean, we might as well use it right now. Um, oh, maybe we could teleport her across. Now that would be an, uh, I was going to say we could abduct her back to our base. Biofarite shaping sleep suppressor. Bruh, not very cash money. Okay, we have two days before we can study this thing. At this moment in time, I think... I sort of just want to see what's in here. Let's force open the door. I mean, all we have are some poplar trees. She's probably gonna get taken by a demon. There's probably something horrible on the other side of this. Oh, it's just nothing. This is making me even... Well, just about as nervous. Let's, does it, like, spell a word or something? Okay, there can't be too much in this area. Maybe there's a way out. Maybe that's... Uh, maybe it's another demon behind this door. Okay, it wasn't a demon again. I'm glad I went for it because she is currently malnourished and we need to get her out of here. Maybe she just needs to find her way out of a labyrinth. That's possible. Or, like, she'll go crazy while she's in there. This is such a very interesting game. Wow. Oh, a bed. Okay. Dude, even less expected. We've created, like, the back rooms in RimWorld, essentially. Okay, I guess even more. Um, get beyond the bed. At least this is a sign of something, right? Okay, a gray box. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, it's just a shard. Okay, this is actually a rather decent area. Um... Oh, some of the doors are just open of their own accord without even needing to be forced open. So everything is totally fine in here. Oh, God. Okay, it is asleep. Run away. Oh, it's so cute while it's sleeping. For now. Um, I guess we could plant something in there. I just don't want to deal with that thing. Uh, we just have to avoid those things. A skeleton. A skeleton, my kingdom for a skeleton. I guess you could potentially, like, warp back, maybe. Either that, or maybe we should just take these things anyway. Here, get another box. Open another gray box. Maybe some food is in there. I need to get her back. Come on, man. No. We might not get back, Angela. Come on. Okay, I have located a packaged survival meal inside of the Avalon. This is so random. There are, like, two flesh demon beasts in here. 
But otherwise, you know, like doing fine. My my fiance's opinion is good, and I got some love and extremely low expectations, and I am tired. Maybe it is time to sleep. I will claim this for a moment and go to bed. Just, it is time. Eight without table is still debuffing. <laughs> Eight without a table. How, how could this happen? It dies. <laughs> no, um, one of them is awake. I would like to try to avoid confronting these things, but I would prefer to get her out rather than try to get these things. It seems that we need to be more decisive taking out these um, demon lairs, though, for right now. Very cool event, though. I like this. This is very neat. Very, like, non-rimworldy type of minigame, yet still somehow manages to nail it. Uh, and use a lot of the skills from the game, but cool stuff. Uh, okay, we can't get past there. Time to go another way. And, okay, I've found a downed marine and another uh, packaged survival meal. I guess I'll consume the rest of these. Just a very interesting minigame, I guess. Oh, they've already cleaned all the floor at the base. Everything is totally fine here, and our friend has just been abducted. Yeah, I don't like the feeling I'm getting from this. Um, yeah. Whatever. Very interesting. I will continue my quest. Okay, this thing has tainted gear, but I just feel as though this thing is going to get me uh, through the rest of this mission in case if I have to deal with anything. Just look at all the... Uh, that's a lot of stuff. All right, we are going in full... Uh, Marine gear right here. Oh wow, there's even go juice in this thing. All oh, this training has been for something. This is actually more immersive than any of the other like uh, You know what I will just take the go juice because something might happen here <sighs> man, Look at everything that this lady's got going on right now. This is so wild man Fire foam pop pack. I guess we don't really need that. Honestly the LMG might be bad here, too. Um, but, uh, oh, here we go. I gotta focus on my, my true grind. Oh, wow, a whole room of them. Oh, what was that? Okay, there's a live one in the other room. If we can't find a way out, then we have to destroy this thing to go in and get her, if there is no way out. Okay, I've totally found the way out. Let us open the boxes and probably get some more shards, pick up the Void Sight Serum. Well, this is actually some pretty cool stuff in here, honestly. Uh, I will open up this one and... Oh, cool, I have another... The Vadi Cybex of Decker. Uh, let's see if we can do that and then probably activate. Just get ready at the base in case if they all come through or something. Everybody get, get ready to go. It's go time. It's Morbin time. Okay, activate, and... Uh, oh no, I am not at home. The obelisk has begun to active. Oh, and she's totally fine. Okay, never mind. Let's destroy this thing, because I don't want more people to be alone and get abducted. I can't believe how well we've navigated this. You know, and I'll also add to this that in most RimWorld DLCs, when there is any type of new event, I always die. This time I haven't died, though. Oh, cool. She just returned and the obelisk was... The Warring Obelisk has returned your abductive shortly after doing so. It vanished into thin air. Be careful, the obelisk may have returned other creatures as well. Where is she? She is hurt. Why is she hurt? Crack. Finger spike spike. It stabbed it. Uh Oh, I didn't think that she had an encounter with those. Maybe in the last second before we... Lost her there. Oh, yep, they have totally teleported alongside her, but at least she's back on the map. Uh, go, milady. Yet Angela. <coughs> what a crazy story, man. This entire colony has actually been really interesting to play, like, the whole way through. Even considering Rimworld's random events, I do like the way that this DLC is kind of making everything seem a little bit more story-ish or linear, and not just kind of like random bad stuff that keeps happening to us over and over again. <laughs> Which is a pretty good way to describe a lot of the rest of RimWorld, but yeah, that's the way it is, I guess. Take down that one, and these should be pretty easy otherwise. 
Okay, and right after that, Angela Moore kill uh, goes into labor. So let's find out what happens here. What a crazy way to get a... Honestly, like something out of a real scary movie, you know? Like a real scary movie. Uh, she is in labor. She is even self-tending. I guess I'll allow that. <laughs> yeah, take recover from your injuries. And now... Gather a doctor and help. Uh, we have to get her going. Uh, gather for birth. Yep, here we go. Gather for birth. Okay, this is actually quite cool. Uh, so we do have the birth now. Bed health effects. 2%. The only thing we have is that this room is not perfectly clean. I think it's taking place at this bed right here. Let me just double check. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm pretty confident about this. Where is the bed? Yes, yeah, it's, it's literally this room right here. We can't get it much cleaner. Let me just see. Yeah, there's really nothing in there. We could have, like, sterilized tiles, but we just won't be able to research that in time. So, cross your fingers, and uh, we begin for the birth of the baby, which might actually turn out to be a demon. We, we don't know. Uh, the world may never know. I'll have only one spectator. Where is the dad? Attending the birth. Go to the birth, Elon. There we go. <laughs> this is such a bizarre set of events. The labor went from mild to intense. Okay, the labor just continues, and I thought it would be a little bit more exciting than that. It is just sort of like three pawns sitting in a room. Uh, wait a minute, why are you... I guess it wasn't really great to start her off hurt. Hide in room, Joe Bearden. Angela Moore, kill in labor. Happened because of poor mood. Final straw was darkness. Joe Bearden. It's okay, Joe Bearden. We'll, uh... We'll help you out. Uh, Alright, I guess we're just waiting. Not much else to do. Okay, the baby has just been pooped out. Uh, healthy childbirth. It wasn't a demon. I mean, you know, I think it would have been, like, a little bit more interesting. Baby Clayton honestly sounds like a real person. Uh, jump to location, postpone. Give him birth. What are we postponing? Temporary name, Baby Clayton. I kind of like Baby Clayton. Until one day after birth. Oh, we could totally keep doing that. Let's just name it Baby Clayton. There it is. Baby Clayton. A new child is born. Take it to, um... Yeah, get it to the mother. Get it to the mother. How is Angel... Surprisingly, everything was fine. Wow. Postpartum exhaustion. And lactating. Okay. All right. There we go. Birth has been had. Uh, didn't even mean to do the biotech stuff, but that was just totally at random. So, very cool. Uh, are we happy that the child is there? It, you probably should be happy, right? Clayton was born healthy. Uh, quite comfortable. Loving uh, night outlet. Are you happy? Clayton was born healthy. Okay. Is everyone happy about that now? That would be great. Nope. Just the parents. Everyone else doesn't care. All right. That's the way it is. Okay, we have researched psychophagy, uh, which is uh, boost the uh, ritual performer's psychic sensitivity. So now we want to do chronophagy, which will basically allow us to make our old colonists uh, younger. So anyone who is slightly like past their prime, I guess we can just uh, like basically teleport in an enemy and sap their youth. Kind of freaky, man. But, like, you know, that's the theme of the DLC. How's your day going? Um, and we'll continue doing this, I suppose. Because just imagine keeping your good colonists good for a long time to come. Not such a bad offer, right? Uh, that's the way it is. Okay, we have more chaos monsters. Uh, chimeras. Or chimeras. I don't really know how you say this word. I've, uh, uh, I'm not... I'm not kidding. I've, I've just seen this one written out. A huge creature that resembles a disfigured combination of a bear and just a bunch of other animals. It is vicious without limit. It is not known if it's a combination of natural animals or a poor imitation of animal life created by an insane machine mind. What is this uh, in our codex? So this is the first of our next tier enemies that we fought. Except for that other giant flesh beast worm thing. So what do we do? We probably want to take care of this while we still have so many colonists. Send everyone but the baby. And Elon and Cologne Powell. They are unfortunately still out there. We need to take care of this man. I need to get everyone inside. Alright, time to go. Uh, 
I mean, we've we've done well against all the other monsters that we've fought so far. Let's see if we can lure these things back in. Just having one colonist who is basically a meat shield might be the most useful thing. I never realized quite how overpowered this is until now. Okay, people, uh, melee people in front in case if they get to our back line, because we might not have enough for them. You just... Oh, you're Hakuja. Wait a minute. I need you okay, because you are going to be the doctor at the end of this, whatever happens. Everyone else, stand in line, and let's get ready to shoot. Here we go. We've attacked. We've angered the pack. Send in our people. I'm pretty sure they can't put demon versus... Oh my gosh, they've taken her out immediately. Yikes. Dude, no. Uh, go. Okay, put the visitors in front of us, because we don't want to lose our own people, uh, obviously. Let's just see if we can tie them up with the visitors. Yeah, I hate to say it, but, um, this is bad. This is pretty bad. They just one-shotted Milady. Although we can take Milady back into, um, that was her head bitten off. No! Oh, she'll just regenerate it. It's all right. We'll just put her in the fridge and resurrect her later on. Um, oh, well. Yeah. Uh, okay, everyone else, just go after them. No, not Joe Bearden. Not Joe Bearden. Ooh. Trujillo, go after. Then Nathan, and then Cox. There we go. Joe Bearden has survived a, chim a chimera. Whatever it is. He is he has outlasted. My God. <laughs> this is so cool, man. This is very cool. Trujillo is okay. Uh, actually, just go home. The other ones are really just meat shields right here. Oh, God, they've taken down the other one. No. Save him. Save him. Uh, the plan is sort of working, to be fair. Go home, Joe Bearden. This is going awfully... Uh, if I had known that they were this strong, I probably would have just sat at home. But honestly, Milady being down, maybe not so bad because uh, it, it was only getting to be a lot of micromanagement, and I think we've overcome that part of the colony. Go here. Let's go. Let's go. Chain shotgun pulling its weight. All right, we need to study this. Yikes. Well, we didn't manage to do it in time. Uh, I feel bad about that. I mean, we can get our ghoul back, despite the fact that it doesn't have its head. Let's just say ghoul corpse is going here. Alright, we're going to keep, you know, uh, oh, 6% missing. It's alright. They'll be regenerated later on when we do our research for ghoul resurrection. Um, and everything is fine. You'll see. We'll, we'll fix this. Okay, Nathan has offered to join. We will accept, because he has given so much blood for the cause. And that's fine, I think. Who is, someone is bringing him back. At least we keep getting more colonists, though. It seems as though the game is just being very generous. And I'm not, I'm not really playing on an easy difficulty. I'm playing on the second hardest difficulty. I've described at multiple points. Oh, there goes Joe Bearden again. It's okay. He's overcome multiple of these infections. He will be okay. Okay, we seem to be witnessing a new type of raid. Uh, I guess some sort of cultists. They are going to perform, like, a ritual. Um... Alright, did they get divided, I guess, between these? Nope! Something... There is, like, some sort of... Ugh, there it is. Okay, it's beginning. Oh, they're all kind of doing it. So they're, like, doing some sort of chant. Oh, hate chanting. I know. Everyone, who doesn't know hate chanting? Let's bring in our longest range people, though, and just try to get them into our, uh, like, trap area, because this is going to be kind of a pain. Now we have to draw them out. But inventive, like, you know, we have to take care of them somehow. Uh, I will grab the revolver that has slightly better range, and Nathan will grab the pump shotgun. Everybody, get ready, because they're going to... What are they going to summon? It is going to be a... Uh, louder and louder until the cult is... Psychic rage into our colonists to drive them mad. Okay, that doesn't sound that great, so, like, yeah. Um, hate chant whispers. Just whispers, though, right now. Only hate, hateful whispers. 
All right, let's give this a try. Everyone grab weapons. Go in there. You two go in this way. Is there a royal tribute collector right now? Oh, we're totally fine. Let's just wait for them to come around. All right, steady as she goes now. Who has the longest of range? You have that much range, and you have that much range. Hang on a second, I just have to handle this. All right, everyone just chill at home and wait for the chant to end while the tribute collectors come, and we'll just let them fight them instead. Annoying, but whatever, we have to get rid of these people. And, okay, uh, shooting them is not enough. We are shooting one guy just continuously. This is not working. We need to go out there and actually fight them. Like, they are undeterred by me shooting them all at point-blank range. Unexpected, but... Like, <laughs> I don't know, kind of a goofy... Kind of, might actually be a nerf in the end. And if they do charge us, we have those other people to run back to. But this is quite sad. I've just been firing at this man point-blank range, and he still refuses... There's in a trance and don't respond when attacked. Yikes. All right, well, now we're stressed because the hate chanting is increasing in volume. Quiet hate chanting. There we go. Yeah. I am a reformed individual. It just sounds like a, like a dryer exhaust vent, man. Kind of creepy, though. I mean, this is a really strange type of raid. Now they're attacking. All right, everyone go home. Time to leave. Let them fight the rich instead of us. Uh, we don't want to have anything to do with this. Go away. All right, let's go home. So hopefully this sort of kill box area should be working. Oh, look, there's Joe Bearden. He's totally fine. Like, nothing has gone wrong. All right, everyone just stay inside and don't react when they make fun of you. They're like, stoop, kids afraid to... That kind of deal, you know? All right, look at this. Oh, no, Joe Bearden, run away. Run away to the rich. They have better weaponry than we do. See, we're fine, totally fine. We just clean up and grab whatever they leave. Oh, wait, they don't have anything good. Never mind. Okay, uh, surprisingly, some of these colonists are actually decent. I've already got about as many as I can manage, but if we can get one more guy or two, it might be worth it. Okay, we have got a corrupted obelisk. These things keep showing up. Now we're getting really a lot of... Uh, this is about half of the entities we've almost uh, unlocked. There really is a lot of content here. Who knows what's inside it. Uh, we will go ahead and study it so that we can understand it better. We really didn't do this much, the last obelisk. Um, <laughs> maybe it'll help us? I mean, it does get us further to the advance of... It seems like everything is getting stronger, though, as we go. I mean, our colony's wealth also has been... Whoops, I just clicked world instead. There we go. Wealth has been rising by a lot. So, uh, keeping an eye on that. Uh, but still, I mean, we're doing better. We're just getting to late game here now. We can just pretty much focus only on research, crafting, that kind of thing. Okay, the time has come to perform a skip abduction. We're going to have several more of these things, but this is abduct a random hostile person from anywhere nearby in the world, prioritizing those nearby. The ritual induces a dark architect to warp space, teleporting a distant person to the center of the ritual circle. The process caused the target to fall into a short coma, so there's not really as much danger in this. The only thing I'm going to do before it is just create a few uh, biopharite sculptures because... I think it'll help and make it do better, so void sculptures. And we'll just prioritize that first. I guess we'll get, like, maybe some quality. We'll try to make, I don't know, between two and four of these things, depending upon how easy or hard it could be. But art, a rarely used skill, actually sees a little bit more use here, which is nice. Because, uh, it's good in some ways, but it's, it's, it's nice to see this get an actual use that could you know, help your colony function a little bit better other than just, yeah, a thousand work still. So it is quite a big ask, but this will make this ritual go a lot better. Okay, we got another prisoner named Jet. He's uh, actually going to be a pretty useful colonist. He's got crafting skill, intellectual skill, shooting and construction, a uh, hard worker, fast learner, useful. Um, uh, I think the only thing about him that we really need to handle right now is the carcinoma. 
there is a carcinoma in his right femur. So if we can successfully get this thing out, then it's going to be uh, a much easier time having him in the colony. So we will try to excise this. And if we can, then it might actually work. No medicine for... Uh, wait, whoops. We need more medicine. Yes, that will do. All right, here we go. This is going to be a pretty involved operation. See if this works. Male space refugee. He wasn't of an enemy faction, uh, but we will attempt to recruit him if this works out. If it doesn't, uh, I don't even know. He's probably just going to get a lot of issues. But, wow. Totally worked. That is rare. Amazing. All right, good job. We can totally bring him into our faction now. Didn't think that... We have a good doctor in Hakuja. Hakuja is an interesting bio. Uh, it was a, a childhood a murderer, uh, but in, as an adulthood, a reformed healer. So, like, can basically do operations, but won't care for the patients. It's kind of an interesting columnist story, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that one up. Has someone escaped? Oh, no, this was new. Never mind. <laughs> False alarm. Okay, we have triggered obelisk duplication. Uh, I don't really know what that means. Crazy stuff is happening, man. Uh, hopefully, we won't get abducted? But we could, so everyone should start to probably gear up. Problem is that we just don't really have any other research and technology. Uh, we would benefit from getting one of these rituals done. This is a thousand work, though. We're 80% of the way done getting there now. Um, thinking we can do one of these warp rituals in a second. Maybe we should just try it right now. I mean, it doesn't really matter who does the warp ritual. I think let's continue with Elon as the invoker. Uh, and then just have as many chanters as we can. Everyone's in a good mood today. All right, 33% total quality. Oh, is his psychic sensitivity. Who is the most psychically sensitive? I think that's about it. Yeah, everybody, nah, you're not as sensitive. I guess we could then take their, like, psychic sensitivity more. If we could go, like, 110% psychically sensitive. This should go poorly. Uh, who knows what could happen here. All right, let's go, Elon. We got the bioferrite. We'll just wait till that. I probably should have waited. Oh, well, too bad. We'll use it in the next one. Na -na 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 -na. It's odd that we're doing basically the same thing as the people just attacking us were. Cross your fingers and... Okay, we got a guy. Uh, this is Anarchist the Anarchist. Sounds like an enemy of uh, the Neckbeard Sigma Male Coalition or whoever we are. Let's take him. You know, he would actually be a pretty good colonist to be doing. I guess you could just use this to randomly summon colonists. Oh, he is unwaveringly loyal, so, yeah, we've got this as well. All right, it's time to capture you and then do some other things in a minute. Oh, we could just go on to the next one immediately. I thought we would have to wait. All right, let's first off take his skills and then his uh, brain. All right, let's continue. Uh, so we are going to use Jet will be the guy, and we will infuse the skills into... Hmm... Maybe we should wait. Now he's going to be in a coma for only... Uh, dark Psychic Shock for 17 days. Okay, so we can actually leave him there for a minute so that we can improve the quality of this. This is crazy. Wow. <laughs> I'm sure that's not what they say before, like, you know, most uh, dark summoning rituals. But, you know, uh, I guess that if this is where we're at, we might as well continue with the RP, right? Uh, all right, just a little ways to go before we can do this. Okay, we now have one of the bioferrite sculptures. So this is a void sculpture. Uh, it is an artwork, so technically... Uh, it does have similar traits to our other one, so I guess we put this around to our psychic ritual spot. And probably will ultimately want to do more organ decay on Nathan. No longer hide her crippling condition. The duplication process has left her body riddled with rotting organs. Oh, gosh. I think this is due to the uh, obelisk study. Replace the organs to keep Nathan healthy. You can use bionic organs or natural ones taken from donors. Okay, so the heart, right lung, left kidney, and right kidney. Wow, that's a lot. 
uh, this happens, I guess, from studying the obelisk, but we now have, like, ancient Arcotech, uh, void powers that we are getting. Uh, ooh. That is rough, man. This is good colonists, too. I don't want to have this happen. Apparently, this is what happens when you try to suppress and study the void. But how else are we going to get advanced void study? Right? So, let's have you take the organs from our, um, this poor, uh, wow. Uh, let's get organized, uh, as they say. Okay, I have had to take some time to do a lot of grinding, honestly. Maybe, like, a distasteful amount of it, because I just felt bad showing that amount of normal RimWorld gameplay on camera uh, in a video that is intended to be about Anomaly primarily. So, what I've basically done, um, keeping all this stuff the same, a little bit of a consolidation here in our, like, main inv uh, uh, fridge area, and then, like, a bit of a job specialization. I've also got some hops planted, just because I felt as though we should be moving toward, like, late-game mood management on our colonists, so that means, you know, beer brewing. Had to do a lot of research uh, on that, and now kind of nearing microelectronics, which is honestly a bit of a bare minimum, so I wish we were even further along, because... Really and truly, it would be nice to have more defensive capabilities, you know, gunsmithing and stuff like that, but uh, it, we'll, we'll move toward that. Uh, just a couple more things that they're catching up on in here, a little bit more workshop specialization, and some all-important temperature management, just because there were still so many things left off, and quite honestly, I feel that when you... Uh, wait a second, what? Okay, we have a lot of bad things coming. Uh, but we have been working on the basic outline of a kill box. Let's go ahead and just start to make some safe areas, because in this DLC, it seems to me that there is a lot of bad stuff happening. Let me just make sure that their home area... I could really just allow people to, like, expand home area. Yeah, let's clear the home area from here and... Yeah, and tell them to just stay indoors. Yeah, don't even go out there, man. All right. Everyone stays at home. This is important because there's a lot of things that will basically kidnap a colonist. Uh, and the corrupted obelisk is at 41%. But yeah, we kind of needed a kill box. Um, just some of the stuff is really strong in this DLC. Uh... Yeah, I, I am at a loss. I am. I'm just at a loss. It is difficult. It is hard. It is punishing. It is brutal. But hopefully this will allow them to just kind of take some time at home. Royal Tribute Collector relationship. Ooh, Royal Tribute Collector for someone of our... Wait a second. Let me just go back to that. I insta-dismissed it. Let's go back here. Uh, Rhodes, it is approaching. They will accept... Jump to location. Oh, they may collide with the chimeras. Chimera, whatever they are. They might collide with them. What about the message on these things? They will watch and wait for an opportunity to attack. Okay, another weird thing that happened that I didn't notice in the moment, because it was just totally normal at the time, was Nathan, the colonist, who is actually a woman, original Nathan, had duplicated herself when studying the obelisk. This is pretty weird, honestly. It is. It's strange stuff. Oh, you are actually the one with the decaying organs, so I'm not going to send you out there, otherwise you're going to easily get caught. You're at 96% movement, you're at 63, you're at 100, Nathan. I will recruit Nathan to just, like, provoke these things. We could really use a sniper rifle, though. Or, uh... I'll see how close I can get. I don't want to get too close, though, because these things are kind of fast. Just see movement. Um, move speed, 3.60 uh, cells per second, I think that is. What is your movement? 4.60 cells per second. So then I should be able to outrun these things. Let's just put you up there and maybe provoke an attack, because you do have a heavy SMG, and that has, like, decent range, right? Okay, can we do this? 
And then maybe, maybe we can run back and have the royal tribute collectors defend us. All we need to do, okay, now they are provoked. Run away, run, run away, way, run away, run, run away, way. Uh, he has an equal sign over his, no, wait a minute, that is teeth. Never mind, it isn't, it has nothing to do with math. Uh, apparently they run it faster than that when they... How fast are you going? Move speed 6.3. Okay. We need hot seniors. Uh, uh, get in. Get in. I don't really want to send everybody else out, but Joe Beard can keep working. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. No. No, get in. Get in. This is like a real live horror movie. No, 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 stop avoiding the traps. Okay, just get in the wall. Just get in the wall. Just get in. Get inside. And the tribute collectors will save you. Okay, this is bad. This is the worst, almost the worst possible thing. Save him. Save him. We aren't strong enough yet. We need to just continue relying on the kindness of strangers. Oh, wait, why do you have an EMP? Okay, hang on a second. Give you the mono sword. Ugh. All right, here they come. Get out of there, get out of there. At least they got out of that thing. They are still trying to destroy the door. Doesn't really matter. Oh, don't eat him. This is what I'm talking about, man. Oh my gosh, it's torn off his toes. What the hell? This is why I, I, this is why I needed a kill box, man. <laughs> Fortunately, we had the royal tribute collectors here. This would have saved the life of my child. Save his toes, save his toes. Not the toes. Not the toes. Hang on a second. Where is Nathan? How is your health? You are going to die in three hours. Hang on a second. Uh, Hakuja, just tend, tend on the spot without medicine. Hakuja is fortunately like the best doctor. Joe Bearden, stay back. Let the real men do this job. This is why we need snipers and a bigger kill box, which will be my answer. Save his toes. Can you save even one toe? Go stand there. Maybe get a little bit more experience, man. Yikes. Not the toes of all things. Not the toes. Fortunately, those do heal up pretty fast. All right. Torn toes is nothing to laugh at. Not a laughing matter. Uh, whew. um, none of them survived, but yeah, that's an example of, like, some of the stronger anomalies that we are facing right here. So, it remains to get the strongest of weapons. Are you slightly better? No, you are not really better. I will just continue tending you without medicine. But yeah, that remains for us to handle. I will have to give everyone bionic feet, but that's, like already kind of a rim worldy type of problem to have so life goes on um i still do need to do a little bit more research on some of this stuff but i thought i would just have like a bit of a progress update because it's usually just dealing with some crazy thing and then getting more armaments and technology but really the best thing of all is just a good kill box um and we need a bulk trader maybe yeah we have studied the corrupted obligate uh obli obelisk enough into learning to duplicate a person however like this seems good take all your good colonists and double them i think they might be flesh-eating aliens because uh we've had another event occur called gray flesh called the lark so this wasn't nathan 2 which nathan was the original colonist who was studying it was duplicated discovered a strip of fleshy like basically someone dropped the tentacle and there seems to be an imposter among us um yes among us so we either have the option of like using surgical in inspection to search someone and basically perform an autopsy or we could interrogate them my money's on nathan too Probably not anyone else. So let's try to um, imprison him and then, like, uh, see what happens. But I'm also going to have 
analysis of the flesh take place by where is Hakuja? Hakuja is the best doctor here, so we'll probably be uh, a good candidate. Either that or intellectual or something. Otherwise, I mean, like, you know, flesh-eating alien or not, uh, has honestly been pretty useful to the colony. Although we ripped up somebody's organs. Um, analysis progress. Analysis has finished analyzing the gray flesh sample. The sample carried the signature Coramite 08. Made progress in learning to identify this biosignature in living, but there needs to be more samples. Okay, so we need more samples. Oh. I guess that's it on the flesh sample then. Uh, that being said, that being said, let's just take this guy hostage and interrogate him because he is a clone and that is like a little suspicious. He's just sleeping there in his bed. We will arrest uh, who has a good social relationship with him. He has a good relationship with himself. No one else in here has a very good relationship with him. Maybe Caldelark has a better opportunity at this. Uh, he has a 68% chance of arresting him. What firearm did we give him? I'm thinking that we just have him drop it because we are technically in control of him. Like, why leave him like that if he's, you know, what he is? And we do have a good prison cell, so we might as well. I'm just going to go through this process. I got to say, this whole DLC... Like, a lot of really cool events. I'm not crazy about, like, themed mods and DLCs, but this theme seems very fun and playable. Okay, we have a ghoul attacking? Oh, no, this is just a normal ghoul. Oh, we could take him. That's fine. Totally fine. All right, send in the other people, but we will take him prisoner. And we probably need to interrogate him, but we need a, a better warden for that. So, in the meantime, uh, we have scouted like a hellcat burner from one of these things drum party no not doing that uh, there's just a lot to be done here man but it's cool stuff like what i'm trying to say is that the dlc is very interesting and uh yeah just like i'm having more fun with it than i expected i would uh here we go attack and then use the hellcat burner on this guy oh no i have burned elon he's almost totally fine Whoops. Yeah, good thing it's raining. Um, sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have used that in the rain, should I? Or, like, toward my friend here. Elon, get behind me. Get behind me. I'm more of a hazard to myself. There we go. Even has knockback. That's not too bad. We have to totally take these things out in order to... Uh, dispatch them because you know what they do. They regenerate and that is problematic and bad. Yeah, okay. That's pretty much what we wanted. Um, yeah. Go home. Okay, Clayton has grown up into a child and he has what appears to be like a powdered wig on. He's running around and he's probably gonna grab some children's clothes. There we go. Ooh, there he goes. Maturity. Independence, hauling and cleaning. We now sort of have a professional cleaner, I suppose. Uh, we should really take some time for child care and just making sure that he has enough stuff. But cool nonetheless that it has actually not totally destroyed our colony to have this. Um, he's grown to like a useful age. We'll just give him a lot of things that kids need. I guess he will have his own room technically too. So we'll give him... A lavish suite, because why not? Yes, that will be had. Okay, he has done some sky dreaming, and he is doing some reading of the Vadisypex of Decker. Um, all right, whatever. Uh, his growth tier is increasing, though. I, I really did not raise the children very well the last time, so this is... Hopefully, okay. Children progress through their growth tiers over time. I didn't mean for this to be a biotech playthrough, but here we go. Age 7, 10, and 13 uh, growth tier determines how many trait and passion points you get. Basically, the more time you have kids spend learning and, you know, the better mood they're in. I, actually, maybe does mood affect it? It may affect traits. But yeah, definitely, like, the amount of time that they spend learning affects how useful a colonist they become. And you can kind of author some of their traits a bit. And who better to have take care of the children than... Na 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 Elon! 
Uh, he is going to do a lot of social skill raising with the children, and we do have a um, a classroom now. I should probably get some actual chairs on this. I guess we could have two chairs to a desk in case if we have more children, but uh, cool stuff nonetheless. Does this actually register as, yeah, classroom? Sweet. Okay, Clayton is attempting to slay uh, the entities after having read the Vatty Cybex of Decker. We should never have allowed this. I didn't even think that this would be allowed. He looked fine. He looked totally okay. Uh, but <laughs> this is not okay. All right, we are going to uh, arrest him. You're under arrest, Clayton. How dare you? Oh no, he's totally fine now again. It happens. Send in Joe Bearden. Oh, it it perished. Oh well. See what you've done now, Clayton. Look learn your lesson. Learn your lesson. Okay, interestingly enough, I didn't realize we now have reading policies. Uh this is kind of crazy, so no no reading from the Necronomicon, Clayton. Bad child, bad child. We will give you a new reading policy. You are to read everything. Uh, I think I'm just going to rename this one. No, or children in general. Like, I don't want them reading Necronomica. Necronomicana. Necronom. Whatever they are, none of that. Don't do that. Stop. Uh, we need to reassign him. Okay. Children. There we go. Change. Much better. What is he reading now? The the Boomer's Handbook for Cooking. That's what I like to see. No tomes. Okay, I have decided to hold also regular Nathan hostage. As those two were the only ones involved in the, um... Shall we call it the obelisk incident? Uh, the, that seems to be the most likely of candidates for tentacle dropping, you know what I'm saying? In the meantime, like, we do continue to get uh, a good number of other RimWorld technologies, so this is fine, this is all good and well, but um, something is afoot in here. More gray flesh has been discovered in the cell of Nathan 2. I think that basically narrows it down. We can release Nathan 1. Nathan 1 is totally fine. So it seems to me that the one... I mean, like, who else? Unless if it's the interrogator, which I do doubt. Who discovered the gray flesh? Elon discovered the slip, uh, strip of... Okay, so Elon was the primary interrogator with the high social skills. So, me thinks it's Nathan... It's gotta be Nathan 2. I mean, why else would we have named him Nathan 2? So... Unless if it somehow takes the original, but it seems to me that it was the one with the decayed organs, you know, like, or the organ decay. So just very interesting that it spawns in, like, some sort of organ decay flesh person bad guy. Uh, or presumably bad guy, but some of the people that have seemed bad turned out to be good, so... This is all kind of annoying and problematic. We're probably gonna find it out immediately, though. Uh, I mean... Analysis complete. Finally isolated the biosignature, fusing of human tissue and metallic biofarite filaments through s which spider through the flesh and take control of the nervous system. You can now use the surgical inspection opportunity. Okay, let's do surgery on this guy, because I'm thinking this is the one. So we will do this sort of inspection, surgical inspection. I guess this is what we need to do. Take a long time to get... And the surgery is invasive. Yeah, surgical inspection, so we will do this. I've done this once before with another colonist, and it went okay, surprisingly. <laughs> okay, we have a party going on at the same time. Just everyone surround the room, because this is suspicious. Are you okay? Sorry that we held you prisoner. Oh, he's happy that the youngsters are happy. Okay, all right. Whatever. Okay, I'm having Nathan do the inspection on Nathan who is presumably his imposter. Surgical... She said that she found no anomalies. However, a doctor may lie if it is in their own self-interest. I find that suspicious. Let's have someone else do the surgery instead. This is so confusing, and then maybe we have to do it to Nathan, too, but I found the flesh tentacle in there. It's so 
agonizing. Who could this be? Okay, I'm doing double inspection. Surgical inspection results. No anomalies. That's two doctors, though. Oh, my gosh. We're going to have to do multiple surgical inspections on multiple colonists. And we are... Who even knows what this is all from, but... Yikes. It might actually not be Nathan, too, despite the extremely, like, suspicious name of Nathan, too. Okay, it's time for a surgical inspection of Nathan. I figure this is pretty much foolproof here. And the results... She found nothing, unless if it's Hakuja herself. Uh, Hakuja is the best doctor, though. I wonder if it's Hakuja. Okay, I'm going to complete a surgical inspection of Hakuja with Joe Bearden. And it also appears to be not that. I mean, is this just like if the person is their friend, they won't reveal it? Because that could be annoying because most of your colonists are friends. So I guess we'll just... And if not, then I'm just going to continue my merry way along with all my colonists probably being infected by some sort of demon. But in the meantime, we are going to give everyone a surgical inspection because that is all that has worked. Craziness. Craziness. What if it's the child? Oh no, what if the child turns out to be an alien, like, in disguise? Joe Bearden. Okay, everyone will have a surgical inspection, even Elon. Everyone is going to be inspected. Okay, it's like surgeries are us. Elon appears to be safe and well. I guess I could try every single combination, but my, that might admittedly get kind of annoying. I feel... I feel it may be easier to just go on, but this is sort of like a Twin Peaks kind of whodunit sort of thing going on. Kind of cool. Very different from any other event I have ever experienced in-game, and that is interesting, and I like it. Okay, it turns out that we found the metal heart inside of Cologne Powell! No! A metal heart? No! Oh my god, it's horrible! Cologne Powell? How could this happen? The metal horror emerged because it was detected by Nathan during a surgical inspection. These horrifying met metallic parasites live inside of the victim, taking control of higher reasoning via a network of hair-thin metallic filaments that they spread throughout the body and brain. They control its mind and compel them to infect nor Oh god, this is horrific! I wonder if we can get him back somehow, or like, res him? He's slightly unhappy. Let's get everyone out of here. We need- Well, we might still need to surgically inspect the other people, but get out the mono sword and, um, oh dang. Uh, I think you're okay though, uh, but you can't walk. Uh, uh, what do I do? Uh, no. I have to inspect everyone else. Oh god. Oh god, why bring in Elon? Oh, dear God, this is awful. Very cool, though. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, send in Jet, too. Jet still needs to be inspected. And pray for the best. Oh, there is a giant thing in there. It's sort of like a face hugger, I suppose. Okay, attack that, Joe Bearden. Attack him with your mono sword. Defend us. Defend us, Joe Bearden. Get behind Joe Bearden. Oh, this is horrible. The inhumanity. Jeez. No, no, it's so strong, too. How could it fight like that? Shoot him! Jesus, he's, like, being stabbed by this thing. What is it, even? Mature metal horror. It's down Joe Bearden. No, 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 no. No. No! How could this happen? <laughs> Send in Angela Morkill. <laughs> Is there any hope? Oh, Cologne Powell isn't dead somehow. He's He was just being, like, inhabited by this demon. Um, okay, send in Jet. Send in everyone. Even if there still is, like, a, some sort of imposter among us, this could work. Oh, God, Elon. Just attack it. Just attack it, Elon. Oh, no, it's taking down two of us. 
Jeez, this thing is powerful. This is so freaky. This is easily one of the trickiest events I have ever, like, had to deal with in this game. Come on, there are three men in a line shooting guns at this thing. Someone has to hit it. Oh, for God's sake. Alright, you two will... Hopefully, Joe Bearden will survive. Uh, we need the child to grab a weapon as well. No, no, no. No, actually, Nathan will probably be enough. There we go. Take this metal horror down! We're dealing with a monster in here, man. Okay, come on. Let's go. Chop, chop. Keep up the pace. Okay, it is dead. Jeez, man. Did anyone die? No one is dead. Save them. Oh god, it cut off Joe Bearden's left leg. We're going to have to give him a prosthetic. The inhumanity. <laughs> this is so, like, like dystopian and horrific and horrible. God. Um, very cool. Very cool stuff. Amazing stuff happening. Fortunately, this is a rather easy wound to fix. Um, because we just, like, seal it closed in RimWorld, but, oh my gosh. Alright, time to get bionic legs. Here he comes, the cyborg Joe Bearden. Fortunately, Cologne Powell, despite the fact that he was being inhabited by a metallic demon, is totally fine. Uh, we still need to do a couple more surgical inspections, but that thing was horrific and terrifying. I should have had more melee colonists ready, or just people to back up each surgery, like in case if the demon came out of them. I'm going to release Nathan, too, from the, um, from the hospital, because he just happens to be, like, a friendly clone. Um, and that's that. That's all I have to say about it. Very, very cool event. Bravo. That was very interesting. Um, and it seems like that type of event could go so many ways each time. Just, like, I don't know, man. Emergent gameplay. Storytelling. Cool stuff. Okay. I have done a lot of grinding, uh, because there was just a lot to be done, mainly in terms of research. Not really an anomaly, but just in the main game, because, you know, you get invaded by rabbits, and then it's sort of like, well, this is totally irrelevant to the DLC, so I just kind of did it all, like, on the side, because I just don't feel like it... it it's not really about anomaly. That's the only thing that always kind of happens in the world. Very fun, but at the same time, I want to highlight the DLC. Anyway, so we got up to, like, fabrication and bionic replacements, and some of the better rifling stuff. Um, but, you know, costs have been had. Uh, Joe Bearden has lost one of his legs, and it's time to replace it with a bionic leg. So I've been busy trading and getting enough for, um, unfinished bionic leg, which we're still working on, and we still aren't quite there yet with everything. But in the meantime, I have named people, um, I mean, we had two, like, fur people, so I named them Furry Girl and Furry Boy, because... Honestly, having pets is underrated. Uh, Hakuja, I've just left as Hakuja. I don't know, it seems like a, a an obscure enough name for a, a scary doctor. Clayton, I've left as Baby Clayton, because I think that name is just good enough as it is. And then the two versions of Nathan, which were both women, one of whose organs rotted and the other one was a clone. I mean, that one was also a clone. I named Sussy Baka number one and Sussy Baka number two, despite the fact that they really had nothing suspicious about them, besides the fact that one was a clone with a bunch of rotting organs. We replaced the organs, and it turned out that there was some sort of face hugger living in, of all people, Cologne Powell. Who would have thunk it? But um, that has kind of been the drama. It felt like slightly just off and irrelevant. A lot of these anomaly things are really cool. Those have just been trying to, like, pause whenever anything interesting comes up. But in the interim, we will get a bionic leg, and then I've kind of tapered it down with the research because now I've got the work priorities back to dark study. Now it's just about time to suck out someone's brain. Uh, which you've obviously, I mean, or naturally, we've been waiting on for a long time. I should have been doing advanced psychic rituals instead of this. But it's almost time to just get someone out of thin air. Except that I need a bionic leg because we've actually done too well with the number of colonists that we have. And we even have another prisoner in now named Farbug Cruncher Barkip. 
that's a name. Uh, and he is pretty decent, honestly. So if we can just get this bionic leg show on the road and then we will have an operation. Here we go, operation. We do have an actual hospital now, which is quite nice. Um, allow food lavish. We will do install. Let me make sure I get the right, the like the correct leg. This is the left leg, not replace your one good leg with a bionic leg. Yeah, here we go. I mean, like this leg will be better. Oh, hang on a second. I'm getting a call. Okay, the time has come to install the bionic leg on <laughs> the, the esteemed leader of our colony. Joe Bearden, go. We have defeated a mech class. <laughs> it's luxuriantly comfortable. Did it work? Did it succeed? It didn't look like it. Oh, he did. He got it. Okay, great. So 125% efficiency. He will be moving around even faster now. And we can more quickly dispatch the threats of the anomalies that await in our other room. Uh, speaking of which, it's time to suck someone's brain out so we're going to begin with the um we will do a skip abduction here i think we will have um elon be the one who does it again i i think generally speaking he has been a pretty good person to have do this and now we have more sculptures we could get even two more sculptures to just improve the quality of this a little bit better but um yep yeah, let's give it a shot we'll just order two more of those to be made we're basically at like full um, do we have qualities of these sculptures, too? Oh, we do actually have qualities. Normal, excellent, good, and awful. Uh, oh, well, psychic ritual quality plus... Oh, so it does actually improve the quality of the ritual. So if we can get them to better quality... We may want a third one, actually. Although they are rather expensive in the way of bioferrite to create. We probably want to put in... A bioferrite uh, generator as well. There's just been so many of these items throughout the whole entire process. Uh, nope. I oh no, we haven't researched it yet. Never mind. That's an advanced technology. Let's suck out someone's brain first. Ooh, suck their brain out. Who's this? All right, just some random person again. We'll capture him. Uh, sometimes it's worthwhile just having this. Look, this is a really good colonist. We might just, like, take him for our colony. Yeah, just, like, a really good colonist. <laughs> Random colonist generator, essentially. I mean, if you like them, keep them. And if you don't, then, you know, suck out their brain. What does this remind me of that episode of The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy where they try to get the guy's brain but that's what it is anyway lots of development here um we may still use this for one of our colonists depending upon what they're good at because it still feels bad to have lost phil swift but that's the story right here and um i need a minute because most of the uh, uh most of the colony development occurs with just a lot of like recruitment or activities that take a long time to get going you know what i'm saying but do we have anyone that's like really old age 23 no you're pretty young hakujo we might want to take a few years off of just because we will start to encounter like senior types of problems soon um no, 62 we still probably have another 10 years, so maybe not really worth it. Maybe I'll take the colonist and said, you're 56 anyway, you don't really have that much youth left to steal. Here, this one, Cruncher, who's a surgeon, might actually be worth granting some more youth to later on. Uh, but yeah, these are like all of the abilities afforded to us by the advanced psychic rituals. Speaking of which, what we do get from this is, um, or what we do get is advanced study from like stronger beasts. Another thing that we can do, though, is now attune the monolith, uh, which is a bit of a risk, and I, w I would really like to know a little bit more about, but it, it looks like we just don't, because we don't have that much information here. We have a few entities, but we're going to face some abhorrent stuff, so I think I'm just going to let them produce a bit more armor. I still have to get everyone in, like, flak jackets and stuff. I kind of skipped ahead to, like, fabrication and just 
like more advanced technology. I've got to kind of catch up with our military here. We've got a little bit of uh, chain shotgun action going on. We do have a mono sword, and we had a lucky quest with a shield belt masterwork, which is quite nice. Um, but as well as stuff like this Hellcat rifle is great for dealing with anomalies. Uh, a couple of other items that have been added in, but a little bit more to do here, and then, yeah, I think we're off to the races soon. Okay, we've just got another recruit here, a trigger-happy one, uh, a waster. May be useful somehow. Uh, good in medical and intellectual, which could be quite useful, as well as construction always. Really just getting too many colonists, which is great. Usually the game tries to kill you after, like, eight. But I just keeps getting sent them uh, through one thing or another. I still plan on sucking out someone's brain now that we uh, have philophagy. Um, if this is how this in the Latin, the how this is perhaps pronounced. But this is going to be our next one, and then maybe we'll maybe we'll resurrect a ghoul. I'm not quite sure here. There's a lot to be done. Ooh, also ghoul enhancements, but. The philophagy seems to be perhaps the most useful here. So we will pursue that end. Okay, we are just about done with all of the main research here. We are onto getting stuff like uh, uh, marine armor and cataphract armor. Like, um, it, it's getting pretty high level. So at this point, I think it is time to deactivate, which we have just discovered the corrupted obelisk. Um, who should do this? Uh, let's have Elon. He's been pretty good at this so far. Wait, has he been able to spot this? Or maybe someone that... No, I feel like since he's been with the colony since the beginning, that he should be the one to do this, take this risk on. He also has a chain shotgun in his inventory, and he has good armor, so there's good reason to... And the obelisk is fine. Trade caravan is leaving. Man, good, because they leave all of this animal stain. Okay, now on to more pragmatic use of these things. So we're going to suck people's brains out, like I said. Uh, we have basically got all our main techno uh, technology that we need. A lot of these things just amount to summon X, uh, like, random mob here. Although there are some useful ones like Bioferrite Generator, which is pretty great because you can create like a hard material from scratch which is useful because i had to wait for a bulk goods trader to get this thing happening because yeesh uh there is a lot of hard stuff that gets used up but this is my basic kill box it's by no means a very good kill box but it is a kill box uh there is not really even a box it's just sort of like a hallway and it is a very painful hallway to walk through indeed but nonetheless uh we do have a colonist now that we have brought in cruncher which is like a name unto itself, honestly. But age 69 and is beginning to grow frail in the torso. So what I would like to do is a skip abduction and I would like to do chronophagy. Um, able, you induce a distant architect to transfer entropy, yeah, entropy from one person to another. This target, cause the target to age rapidly while the invoker becomes younger, potentially healing, scarring, or age-related illnesses. The target will suffer brain damage, causing them to fall into a coma for several days. So basically, we're going to do a skip abduction. Um, doesn't really matter with who. We just somebody with like basic psychic sensitivity, and now we have all of these other uh things on the table that are improving the effectiveness uh oh we actually need some bioferrite okay i will be back in a second because i will need that for this uh ritual uh we don't have enough okay now we just barely have enough 60 so i'm going to perform a skip abduction then we'll hold whoever it is prisoner for a while and then we will do the thing at the place with the people uh, we just need maybe one more, and cool. All right, let's begin. We really need a lot of bioferrite, so we're going to be making a bioferrite generator. It's like the resource to have. It contains stuff. It's very strong. It's basically just like the greatest material that does everything. And we've had a Gore Hulk escape in the midst of that. Really? I even put it in the fridge for this reason to make it slightly better. Could you wait, man? Till the ritual is over. Come on. Get with the picture. Alright, uh... Sorry. 
I guess we need to cut this thing short. We will get out the chain shotgun over here and then you two stand in the doorway. At least we have Joe Bearden with his like mono sword, which is incredible. Literally picked that off of a raid before, uh, which was crazy and pretty great. Um, you will take maybe like the good revolver. Get the good revolver. There we go. Everyone else to the wall, to the wall. Do not let them interrupt the skip abduction. Some crazy stuff going on here. Also, that we can give a 69-year-old lady get rid of her back pain. No, don't go in there. Why would you go in there? Stand back. Do as I ask. All right, you will stand there behind him. Actually, we can get this with just him. Just have you stand there. You will stand there. And then hopefully this will be enough. Stand in the doorway. And you with the sniper rifle, do not shoot now. Okay, now you can go. We really don't need these basic guys anymore. We might just... Yeah, actually, they could be useful for bioferrite generation, but that's about it. Basically, this is the only advanced entity we have. We might end up just calling or provoking other ones. Let's see what we've got. We've got a guy named Babriel, the framer. Literally a framer. Okay, um, how much youth you got left? We'll take it. Delicate? Nah. Honestly, the colonists we have brought through have not been that bad. Uh, we, we get a free weapon with each of these things. Great bow, okay. Capture, and then we will steal your brain. There we go. Let's see. Chronophagy. We do need 20 biofer, right? What do we need to provoke the void? We actually don't need any, but if we could get something like more intermediate, intermediate, intermediate or advanced, that would be ideal because uh, we're going to need it. All right. Let's see how much like brain drain we have left. Right, now we basically just take all of our colonists and make them into, like, super colonists. I've had to... Actually, I should probably just fill this back in. Do we have... Yeah, we do have a good amount of limestone now. Maybe I will do that. All right, I've got a couple more projects to do. I just... Namely, I want to get this area kind of filled in so that I can... Um, or I could just keep this under mountain, but just... Uh, these things cause trouble, and they tend to come in and out, so I don't really want to chance it. But other than that, time to provoke the void. Let's go back in for another one. I think that we can do this. Void provocation. Or we could choose to draw... Okay, we'd still need bioferrite for some of these ones. I guess in general, we're just attempting to provoke the, bo the, the void. The void. Psychic ritual spot. What is this shard beacon? Hold up a second. Got a lot of options. A shard of dark arco technology mounted on a bioferrite pedestal. The shard focused by the bioferrite shapes the nearby dark psychic clothes. In place near a psychic ritual spot and improves the ritual quality. Ooh, would love that. Can benefit from up to four shard beacons. So even more reason to get more bioferrite. This stuff is just so useful and we like basically thrive off of it for now. So frenzy inducer not gonna be as useful, but uh, we've basically done all of the, well, the basic technology that we can get. So now it's all on to advanced, so we need better stuff. Um, I'll just continue ejecting here. See, they, they don't, like, create bioferrite that fast. They don't poop it out. Um, or whatever is happening, man. But, uh, actually, I'm just going to do this in four layers, I suppose. Yeah, let's do an advanced one. I just have to handle a few things here. All right, time for another void provocation. Let's get, um, Elon's pretty good at this, right? We will just have everyone else do everything. We're pretty good at defending ourselves now. We do kind of require a lot of traps, so that's not amazing, but whatever. Like, nah, nah, void, come on out, void. Everybody ready? It's kind of cold out. But, like, this is what a well-organized colony looks like. You know, all of the normal technology, but beyond what it already does, now your colonists can basically de-age themselves. 
I suppose like the Arco Tech ending was kind of like this, right? Where everyone just became a cyborg person or something. Oh no, I have dry I have fallen and I can't get up with my chain shotgun. Uh hopefully we will get something slightly stronger. Everyone come inside too. I don't want anyone outside of the home area for now. Not for a while. Okay, something is within. Batten down the hatches. Everyone get in a group. Keep the children safe. This is not okay. We need some sort of like lockdown room for the children, honestly, because this is not okay. I do not feel okay having little ones in this colony, man. You get drafted. You get drafted. Get drafted. Probably just another sight stealer, though, sadly. Oh, no, it is not that at all. It is a revenant attack. Okay, these things are much sneakier. Um, so they basically will hypnotize someone into, like, a coma. And, uh, okay, you back up, like, two steps. Let him get this thing. Get the revenant, get the... There it goes, sneaking away like a creepy boy. Bruh. We like right on top of this thing. No, it's under hypnosis. Another sneaky person has descended in our midst. All right. Uh, I don't, it's tricky what to do here. Like I can very clearly see it right there. Hang on a second. Okay, we have begun the analysis of the Revenant flesh chunks, which seems to be the only way. It's too bad, because I did have two proximity detectors. Like, we knew that it was there. We knew more or less where it was. Okay, analysis progress. Much longer trail. I can see it. Learn more about this particular Revenant's biology, how to identify fluids. Uh, here's leave vines that reveal it disrupt or flares. Exp Okay, maybe we could use some of the other things. EMPs, too. We do have that. Explosions or fire. Okay, we've had somebody else land on the map. Seemingly good. Uh, Lore, the Gatherer. A very neurotic jogger. This trait is super OP. This trait is honestly not that bad. This could be, like, in our entire planting plan. But, uh... Yeah, the mental break threshold is not too great, but there's enough that we can do to make up for it. And, hey, uh, it works if this person is just constantly grinding at their plants, which is a, like, fully grindable skill, so that's fine. Uh, transport by crash. Tra uh, I will accept. Oh, yeah, you're just... Join us. Join us. Oh, no, 30 days of paralytic abasion. <laughs> I guess it makes up for our hypnotized revenant people. Okay, I mean, like, was it worth it? Eh? Eh? Arguable. I'm going to take Crunch... I'm going to have Cruncher become 63 years old and Babrielle become 57 years old. So it's a six-year, like, youth drain. This is a really freaky, freaky, deaky thing, man. Uh, but that's the way this uh, DLC works. The target will suffer brain damage and fall into a coma. Uh, 11 years yo- oh wow, 11 years younger. Of course it will make- yes, it will make them angry. Who wouldn't be upset about that? Anyway, here we go, like, kind of a crazy thing. Here we go, gonna drain your youth. Ooh, here I come, give me that youth. Ooh, uh, I love that youth, love that youth. I will no longer be- I can be 69 every year of my life. Uh, I wonder if this will get rid of the- Frail torso. That is the general idea right here. A crazy, wacky idea, man. Um, here we go. Uh, it's like Ursula, man. No, oh, my torso is still frail. Never mind. Oh well. No, uh, but what happened? Okay, now uh, actually is 58. Chronological age is 69. We could basically create Orochimaru, man. Oh, wow. This is wild. 
It's interesting. You uh, you seem to have another advantage to having psychopaths in your colony or something. Now you have chronophagy guilt, so similar to the organ you're getting organized. Uh, it feels wrong to have participated in that ritual. Expires in six days, but that's the way it is. Uh, trying to keep a whole society of Orochi Mars, that's the price you pay, I guess. Kind of makes you think, though. You, you could actually have, like, a ninja guild get some combat extended. Like, like a Naruto colony. <laughs> My ninja colony. <laughs> Of the Akatsuki. <laughs> oh, this is getting really, like, off-topic. Wild. We've got an invisible creature. Uh, signal pick up again. It's time to just get everyone together. Uh, and stand in the middle together. Although this thing is probably going to pick off somebody before... Where is it? Who is it getting? Who is it getting? Who is it getting? It's getting... You. Okay, it's picked you. Dude, this thing is like, uh, what were those things from Minecraft? The the people with the, the Endermen. This is definitely, this is exactly like a, oh no, he's going to the hospital. He's, don't get lore. That's so like, such a silly target. Doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't really even have health. I mean, it has gunshots. Sentience 100%. Send in Clayton. I gave Clayton the, um, the, uh, electromagnetic thing so that he's like a little mini ghostbuster. Bruh! Not very cash money. Hang on a second. This thing is like so spooky. Look at it go. This is like one of the most interesting enemies that I've faced in this. We do have somebody with a Hellcat rifle. Um. It's like run this way and then Oh, bro. You sneaky beaky. Oh, that's what you are. You're a sneaky beaky. Hang on a second. I'm going to set you on fire. Okay, that is the only way to take care of these things. Now hit it with the EMP. Good. I didn't want him to have to, like, carry ammunition, but the EMP is fine. Electromagnetic. Whatever. Okay, send in Elon with the Hellcat rifle again. Don't go that close, Cologne Powell. No, no. Okay, here we go. Just try it again. Keep trying. Everybody just can't focus fire on it. Joe Bearden, um, I don't want you to get hit. Just stay stay back. Stay back, everyone. <laughs> Elon, go in for more, uh... Go in for more fire attacks. Oh, I got away out of range in the other side. That is so sneaky of it. Bruh, like... Either way, it did leave another flesh chunk, and it has also continued. What? I mean, it just hypnotized the same person, though. Well, whatever, okay. Still a sneaky beaky, an interesting enemy nonetheless, and very well, we will continue to lengthen our time that we study it. Good enough. You can see it getting away there, yeah. See, like, there it is, there's its tracks. Let's see how long we can track it for, just, like, manually. There it is, there it goes. And I can't see it any longer. I lost track of it like right there. I'm not sure if I'm just not seeing it. Maybe it's still there. We could like kind of go near it. Is that near our proximity detector? Maybe we could keep building more proximity detectors, but that does seem to be the area where he always attacks. So, all right, whatever. Kind of cool. Oh, you also got Revenant Hypnosis. He's going for the easy victims in the hospital, though. It's, I mean, this is like a very horror movie type of thing. You know, slowly, one by one, we're being isolated. <laughs> it's creepy. That's why we got to give everybody health ca uh, Hellcat rifles. Bruh. I've found the Revenant. If we go over here. Yep, here it is. It's somewhere, like, right over in this vicinity. It has to be. No, it's over here. It's somewhere in this spot. I'm like a ghost buster. Where is this thing? This is so weird. It is. It's weird. Maybe it's over here? It's probably like right in this spot. Nah. Oh, you know, we need like some sort of flare. Either that or we can shoot fire at it. 
Bring the EMPs. I hate to say it, but how else are we gonna find this thing? Okay, just send it. Okay, the Revenant has just been terrorizing our colonists for God knows how long, but now we have learned enough about its biology that we are able to see it when it is nearby. This gives me some sense of hope that we will be able to keep this thing within range for long enough. You guys are kind of slow, but that's only because you were at your bed over there. I think that this thing just hides out like an Enderman right by our base. It, it's probably very... Okay, there we go. It's right in front of us. Just... Okay, but don't fire till you see the whites of its eyes. You know what I'm saying? Um, we don't even need to pop fire foam anymore, although it might help. But I think we just do this now. We can just shoot it. Shoot that weirdo. Let's go. Come on. He's getting away. He's doing bad things. He's kidnapping people. He's hypnotizing them. Get him. He is annoying. Yeah, at least he doesn't do a lot of damage. He's very, very persistent and resistant, but he's not. But, I mean, we are slowing him down, for one thing. And he's also not very, like, he's not very aggressive. Like, I know he does bad stuff, but when he does it, that's it. Then he goes away. And then he just kind of, like, hangs out nearby like a, like, a strange dude. Okay, we've got some. He's a very interesting enemy, though. Very cool. Okay, we finally got this guy. He doesn't really attack us when he's in our midst. He just kind of panics when he's set on fire, so that much is good. This thing must have crazy health because its sentience is still at 90%. But I think each shot kind of slows it down and just makes it a bit less coherent. Like, it was super sneaky before, but now it's just getting less of the sneaky beaky, you know? There we go. Okay, now it, we can just hit it. Good. Okay, and then it's going to slow down more. Oh god, it's going to explode. Leaving behind its spine. Just stand away. Go, don't, do not be there. Wow, that might be the most interesting anomaly enemy we have fought so far. Uh, we will capture its spine, I guess. I do not want that thing escaping, though, man. That was... That was a, a real drag. <laughs> At least everyone's released from its hypnosis now, though. Jeez. Okay, and it looks like Lore got up from uh, the paralytic abasia. Maybe that cured the paralytic abasia. <laughs> Whatever it is, we now have the means of, uh, Revenant reformed. Oh, after Cologne Powell chained it to a holding platform, the Revenant reemerged. When killed, the Revenant's body dissolves. Leaving behind only its archa- Archa-technological spawn. The, this sp- eh, spine. This ca- ah, God, I'm getting- This cage of a slick iron waits for a chance to grow a new body. Okay. So. Uh, who knows what we'll get with this thing, but yeah, that is rather interesting. I guess we'll get, like, advanced research. We do not want that thing escaping, though. I might just keep it in its own separate cell. Alright, for all of that trouble, the Revenant is giving us 0.63 advanced study every single time that we look at it, which is going to let us uh, get a bioferrite generator. We can also modify a Revenant sp spine so that it be can be implanted into a human, allowing us to become temporarily invisible. Okay, almost immediately the Revenant has escaped. <laughs> we do have flare packs that we can now use to deal with this thing. Uh, it's not gonna be as bad this time, but man, is it a pain in the butt. All right, just go out there, live your life. We'll get biofight ferrite generation from you and your friends later. Okay, the Revenant is back. We now have incinerators, though, so we can just take it down. These sandbags are actually pretty good for it. We can just set it on fire. Uh, we also have flare packs that we're coming out with, although we just haven't built them yet. They're gonna be built in, like, a second or two. I'm a little bit wary of getting this thing in melee combat, but yeah, like, Hellcat rifles, repeated fire attacks. That stuff seems to work against these things. Oh, I'm setting our crops on fire, man. Well, whatever, that's what we gotta do.
There we go. Okay, yeah, that's what you need. You need an incinerator with these things. Send in Joe Bearden, too. Joe Bearden knows what he's doing. Okay, the incinerator in the rain is working much better. We can't really catch fire from this. That is a much better weapon for this. Look. Look at the way he is sitting. Very distinguished. Okay, don't get Joe Bearden. Stop that with Joe Bearden. Joe, Joe Bearden is... All right, this is much better. Good job, everyone. Keep being tempted by Joe Bearden. Stop burning Joe Bearden, please. All right, now it's gone for good. Maybe just keep that spine in storage. Okay, dare I say it, we have, like, sucked out someone's brain, essentially. We've fought an invisible monster. I think it's time to go in and try to, like, uh, attune the void monolith and see what is actually going to happen from this. We've got all of this, these weapons now. We've got flare packs. I think we're ready to go in there and, you know, like, make something happen. And if not, then just... Oh, God, why did it autosave? That looks way worse than what we just... We don't even have room for that. You just let out the prisoner. Attuning the model, it caused it to twist and grow once more. Hakuja caught a glimpse of what lurks beyond. She understood. The monolith is a doorway. W clearly opened wider, because now the wall is down. On the other side, Hakuja sensed an inhuman intelligence, an inhuman intelligence of vast complexity and endless rage. The dark machine god is stirring. Uh, oh, wait. Dark machine god? Hang on a minute now. And its physical influence will grow. New entities are now discoverable. Okay, cool. Very well. Um, anomaly research and the quest supporting it would be what? No, no, no. Uh, hunting with... Uh, anomaly monolith. 7 out of 17. All right, I guess we've got a few more of these things to discover. Can we just see, like, what is in my Pokédex? Um, I mean, anomaly decks. Entity Codex. It does end in Dex. Don't forget that. Now we're going to deal with some sort of ultimate. Hit me with your best shot. This thing was very cool. Metal Horror? Possibly my favorite. Having to question my own people. Um, the Revenant? Interesting. Chimeras? Just generally aggressive. The Devourer actually happened off camera. Um, they basically just eat somebody, and you have to, like, shoot them within five seconds. They're not that hard to deal with, but a very cool enemy. But kind of, like, rage-inducing, I could see. Um, Death Paul. I guess we have Death Rain or something like that. I'm curious what comes next. Mainly, I wish to descend below and fight the flesh monsters. But first... The time has come for the emergence of the flesh beasts from below. We knew this day would come. Uh, we've gathered together here. Um, it's going to be a lot of these things. So let's go ahead and like... Mm, actually don't really like this. Let's put this right like up here and then stand back so that we can avoid their crowding us out. But otherwise... Send people around. We also have flares now, which is somewhat helpful. Not really. Um, but it is there as, like, a something to have. We put you here because you are actually melee and you can engage them. Then we put in the line of the... Yeah, there it is. Yikes. All right, we can enter the pit gate. That is kind of nice. Oh, look at them, like, like booping out. With their snoots. There they go. All right. Um, Geronimo into the hole. <laughs> so, uh, just put, like, the Hellcats and the flame weapons in the front-ish area. Because so far that has turned out for the best. And try to... M try not to die. Let's just keep it at that. That's fine. Okay, this is actually fairly decent. We want to crowd it up just so that our two flame people don't get swarmed. I'm okay if one of our pump shotgun people gets swarmed. It's only a matter of time before... Uh, sussy baka. Your toes have been ripped off, though. But, I mean, as long as we allow our flamethrower people to continue their throwing of flames, we should be fine, right? Look. 
Joe, Bo Joe Bearden is fine. The toes... I mean, once you've experienced the ripping off of your toes, what more pain is there to endure in this world? We really need more melee colonists, though. I, I did not... Okay, you... Back up. Yeah, get out of there. Get out of there, sussy back up. Get out of there! I want you alive. I need you alive. That, and we should also probably get some type of like appreciable armor because if we're gonna be dealing with that level of flesh beast down there then yeah we're gonna need more melee troops or just something maybe another mono sword I don't know or just like some type of marine or recon armor you know all right let the rest of them just suffer I gotta say that while these things are annoying and how they like repopulate they are very good for target practice because they just keep reappearing. I think we gained like five or six levels total in that fight. And I mean, a few people took some damage because they were in the front, but I really just need to get better melee fighters. So let's handle some of that. Let's get some fabrication of some marine armor and then maybe head our way down there uh, because we do have the advanced components to make, I would say one set of armor. We could definitely put that onto um, Joe Bearden. That way he wouldn't really take damage in these fights, right? Like, he's just kind of been getting it beaten up. But he has the belt that he needs for victory. Clayton has also experienced a growth moment. We get to choose from one of six traits because of how amazing his childhood was. Uh, I personally think Nibble would be pretty good for a fighter, but, like, it's going to be a while till he's fighting. So, um... I'm thinking great memory is also just like an all-around good trait, so we definitely should take that, and as well as passions for traits. All of the uh, animals not as useful. Crafting is useful. We get to pick three, which is amazing. Medical and cooking, uh, not really as great to me as melee. Melee would be great. I would like one of those. All right. So he is, well, he's still not really grown up yet. He is still... But is he is he able to do like basic plant tasks now? Planting, the plantification begins. Very amazing and cool. All right, we will have him doing some stuff around because why just have him sit there and do nothing? Okay, I'm going to pull a horror movie move. I'd better investigate. Uh, in the depths of the pit, you have discovered a massive cavern system. This is seemingly similar to the gray area event. Although, ooh. Okay, hang on a second. Like, all right. Uh, inactivity is good. What happens if we just, okay, flesh mass. I always wanted to try this before. Ooh, but does it heat up? Do it heat up, dough. Okay, if we can climb to the surface, then... Hang on a second, what is this? Oh, Twisted Meat! We know Twisted Meat! We love Twisted Meat! Hold up a second. Let's just set a little bit more of this on fire. Okay, we do have activity here. We just need to, like, spray some of this. Like, it's basically Lysol. Okay, now it's getting to be 55 degrees Celsius. Climb to the surface. We can't have... Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, there is steel down here. <laughs> oh, it's the Z levels I always wanted in RimWorld. Look at that, though. Revealing more areas. That's actually quite nice. If we could just, like, set this on fire, we would never have to encounter it, I suppose. Um, where is Angela? All right, hang on a second. We gotta go check back down there, view the undercave. This is kind of like a surviving, Mar uh, surviving Mars moment. So we got 105 degrees up here. Let's just kind of leave that. We're gonna have to burn it out bit by bit. But, um, I mean, it looks promising to me. It also just looks like that the fire will naturally spread. We already pretty much got all of the fiery weapons, so they will do the things that they're supposed to do, I suppose. This looks like a huge flesh mass right here. What is this? A flesh sack. Look, everyone, a flesh sack. Although it doesn't, like, spread as much as you would think a forest fire would. Although, like, I suppose it's not exactly the same as, 
on the surface, you know what I'm saying? Okay, it's going back down. We're going to need to send down like a fire person and a little bodyguard, I think, and maybe a melee person because it looks like now they are active, but it also appears that it spreads in certain areas. This is by far one of the most interesting events. I really like this. I hope that this is used in more stuff. This is amazing. Hang on a second. Okay. Prepare the troops. We have a recon helmet on the way. For the having of. Okay, me thinks it's time. Like, we don't have to bite it all off in one p That I don't really want to use that phrase anymore. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think if we send down the Hellcat, a melee trooper, and uh, Colin Powell, then that is going to be our best shot. Let's send up, let's send up the OGs, actually. And like, maybe one extra melee unit, you know. Actually, furry girl, furry girl, you can go. Go ahead. Leave the other ones here, though. They aren't psychologically stable enough for what's coming next. Ooh, it's like this. It's like the Scooby Squad or the Solving the Mystery m m people. Okay, here we go. Um, don't let it get too hot though down there. Come home in time for dinner, you know. All right, here we go. So we have a flesh mass army. I'm assuming we're just going to be setting things on fire a few times. And whoa. Look at this, baby. It's like the whole Dwarf Fortress underworld down here. Uh, defend your friends, and also use that Hellcat fire barrage, please. Cool, that is ridiculous, man. He got burned, whatever. All right. S um, I guess we just keep setting things on fire and then we go back up, just keep an eye on the temperature. It's already 27 Celsius down here. We don't want to like let it get so hot. Hang on a second, let me just double check Fahrenheit. As an American, I demand freedom units. Although I said I committed to a non, um, where is it again? Graphics, general, audio, no, 12 hour. Okay, it's like 81 Fahrenheit. We are slightly in trouble, but not really. Are we able to just... Okay, we can attack the flesh mass that is available. An entity is escape... Just let him go. You know, just let him go. Let him have his day. He's not really going to cause any more problems than we have. I desperately wanted to study him because I found the, en the Revenant interesting. Not only because he's... <laughs> Uh, a Leonardo DiCaprio movie, but at the same time, you know, it was kind of a cool enemy, <laughs> admittedly. Yeah, these things are not that tough, though, among all of the, like, occult enemies down here. 29 degrees Celsius. I guess we just have to kind of keep a tight core when we're fighting down here. It's all about the core strength, man. Okay, 33 Celsius, so now we go here. It's just sort of like set a little bit on fire, then go back up. Don't get too carried away, though. 35, 35, that's getting kind of hot. You don't want to be cooking down here, but, you know, like, still set it on fire, man, right? 36, okay, I think it's time to go back up for a second. Maybe, like, send some people up until it gets too hot. Yeah, that's fine. Go away, everyone. I think Angela Moore kill can handle this on her own for a little while. Dude, I'm not even afraid of the Revenant anymore. It's just like kind of a nuisance. It's just like a weird guy that hangs out here sometimes. <laughs> just, <laughs> we have enough of your DNA. We know who you are. Uh, <laughs> oh God. We're going to keep your spine and use it as a trophy. Oh, look at this. Even, like, the flares stun him. How amazing these are. Although, I stand by it. The incinerator is the best weapon for these people. Um, okay, we go in at them normal boy style. Let's go. Come on. Send her back. She was psychologically stable enough. Actually, get back in there, babe. You know, that's a great idea. Get in there. I have decided that any type of flamethrower is the best way to deal with this entire um, DLC. Like... Takes out the revenant, takes out the flesh masses, takes out the zombies. Just get yourself some flame weapons 
And problem solved. Except don't accidentally hit every one of your own people with flamethrowers. That could be problematic. Um, in fact, back away. Nope. Climb to surface. Just get out of there. Just get out. <laughs> okay, that was close. Maybe like one bodyguard. All right, we have slain the flesh demons. We've recaptured the revenant, and and it's it sounds like I'm like someone out of Harry Potter now. Um, I am going to probably be more careful with my fire weapons, as you can see that did more of an issue here. Uh, we have given the last third degree burns that we ever hopefully will to our own people, and I think now I don't fear venturing down into the depths of the pit gate. Uh, again, this should be a fairly simple endeavor because it's not as scary as I thought it would be. You just kind of have to stick together with your friends um, and then all your dreams will come true. But keep running away whenever it gets too hot. But otherwise, it's mostly just a lot of mood management. Really not... Very good that you've been inspired to surgery. That's the... I don't know if I try... But we will go back down once again... Okay, I'm thinking it's time we venture down once more uh, without Joe Bearden, because why even think about bringing me... We'll just make a... Wait, really? You started a social fight? Ha okay, you two, no field trip for you. Um, you have to stay at home and be nice to each other. Managing this many colonists has just been... Pro I have more power than I really need, though. I just... I'm kind of throwing bodies at the problem now, but... Oh, well, that's the way it is. And you are just kind of slow. Why don't you stay at home, too? Because I don't want you to get in the way. It's really the colonists that we started with that have been the best all along. So it shows I made good choices. I have good judgment. And in that, I... Oh, oh, you don't have anything. Okay, you stay at home because you're a generally reliable citizen. Everyone else, go in. All right, we have entered the pit once more. And good, this is more or less what I want firing line, except you two switch places. Stand here, and then you stand here, because you're the one with the flamethrower, and you are clearly the most important. All right, good. So just stand in the middle, use the fire, and let the men around you do the shooting. And then... We shoot some fire over there. No, that didn't really work. But this is the general idea. Is we will stay in this formation until there are no flesh monsters left. It's too bad we can't just keep them in this formation because this is the general idea that I want to have going. Very cool. Like, the flesh monsters are not really that strong. We just need to make sure that not everybody gets engaged and we don't get surrounded. And then generally, we can continue discovering cool artifacts down here. But they seem to keep spawning from the walls of the flesh here and there, so we have to be careful. And there is, like, a bit of an element of fog of war happening, similar to raiding a village, I would say. Uh, I mean, we what are we getting, like, slight burning? We could do some, like, self-tending. Yeah, tend thyself. Yeah, that's about it, though. Nothing, like, really bad. Okay. Let's give it a minute. All right. Put a band-aid on it. Put some flex tape on it. There you go. That's all you need. That's all you need down here. All right, we'll just get you flex taped up, and then we'll be ready to... What are we even doing down here again? Honest, honestly, what are what are we doing down here? Who am I again? All right, there's more to be discovered. It's kind of like going down one of those large, like, uh, chambers in Dwarf Fortress, you know? Kind of sweet about it. Except that, uh, I don't really know what we're looking for here. There are some shards that we could collect, so potentially those could be useful. But I'm sort of expecting a boss, so I'm kind of on high alert right here as we go. And I don't want it to get too hot either. I think it takes the whole room. Uh, and then just, like, does the ratio of the fire to the room size. I'm not quite sure how it's working, because some rooms, if they had this much fire on them, would be, like, 500C. It would be crazy. Except I'm not getting that kind of feel right here. So, I think we're safe for now. Furry boy, go back to the surface. 
which we should probably send everyone back to the surface again. All right, we're going to have to make several trips. Everyone's like going slightly crazy from being down here, so that's not exactly okay. I want them to have a chill trip to the underworld, not like a high stress trip to the underworld, you know? Family memories. Except maybe you stay down here and maybe like one more person just so that we can take a family photo before we go home. How's that? All right, I'm out of there. That was pretty cool, but uh, man. Like, it's nice that you can actually get a view on what's going on down there. Okay, so we have more flesh bulbs on this, or bulb freaks on this side. It's about it though. I mean like shards, do the shards burn? They seem to be okay. I hope. Okay, I'm burning down the rest of everything down here. Like nothing, you know, uh, nothing left. Uh, unsizzled or whatever, but yeah, like, uh, I just need to gain some line of- Ah, uh, Never mind, I'm not gonna do that. Well, I've had to go back on a little rescue mission with, uh, Elon for Angela Moore kill. How, uh, how heroic. Here we go. Um, finally everything is tended, and I'm probably going to have to pick up, like, a, uh, an incinerator right here. Although, like, honestly, the controls and the whole quality of life have made this, um, like, work much better. Let's just go ahead and equip that incinerator. Then we will carry Angela, and there we go. Angela Moore, kill an Elon, escape the deadly flesh demon lair. Oh, there is something over there. But, like, no sign of a boss, really. I'd still say that we got a lot of the way through that, too. There we go. Joe Bearden has carried the colony. Just the the fanfic continues. Everyone is now healing. I don't really think we were prepared enough, but those those things just basically multiply from, like, 1 to 4 to 10 in 3 seconds. You kind of lose track. It seems like a simple adventure to go down there. But you kind of like lose track of it. I mean, so far, what I've seen overall of Anomaly, this is a great expansion. I'm not even really into horror, like, as a genre. I'm more into simulation, that is to say. But it just feels very playable. It feels very fun. It feels like there's a lot of new game mechanics and a lot of uh stuff that still works in RimWorld and making it into more of like a an action game or a, a bit of a puzzle or an intrigue or plot solving or something like that going on here that just overall makes the game a lot better that's what i've seen that's all these new enemy types they're all causing you to engage with combat in different ways the one thing i, I haven't really tested extensively is making someone into i just feel like <laughs> i don't want to do it <laughs> i could maybe i will um, we have that. We have a couple new serums. And, like, we've seen a little bit of sucking out, uh, another person's, like, uh, youth. That's another thing you could do. You could also suck out their skills, which is kind of crazy. Or their brain. But I think it's all working together really nicely with the vanilla stuff. I still haven't even seen all of the anomalies yet. How much do I have left to see? I mean... I've seen quite a lot, but let's just see the entity codex. I've seen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, out of 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. I've seen, like, a little over half the content, and not even the ultimate ones yet. So I haven't even seen everything here yet. I think of them all, the Revenant was kind of cool, but it just got to be kind of goofy if it stayed around for a while. I still think it was interesting, one of the... Like creepiest enemy types, especially if you don't have a lot of colonists in your, in your, uh, in your land. But I think the metal horror might be my all-time favorite now, just because of the true like. That was a truly freaky situation that we came onto when it was inhabiting one of my colonists, but not the one I thought, and just leaving flesh tentacles everywhere, and then came out of a patient in surgery, and then it's just a guy in a room, and you have to fight it. And it's a really strong enemy, too. Um, this kind of changes the whole dynamic of everything. Keep in mind, I spent probably 
18 or 20 hours. I don't know what this VOD will turn out to be, but I've probably spent that much time just developing the colony in the background. Uh, so it's no small feat. What I personally would do if I were going in to try out this DLC with uh, Rimworld would probably be take an existing colony. Unless, if, of course, you want to kind of discover it with the whole game and have that be the way that you develop your whole colony, kind of like I did. Um... I'm trying to decide, we might go, I think, for one more trip back down once everyone is like, recovered. I don't want to get all the way to the end because I want to save some. And this was kind of like the one adventure I really wanted to go on. But yeah, let's see what we can get with the uh, flesh beast thing and then go from there. Okay, I think we will go down for like one more ad like uh, exploration into the cave. And if we don't find anything, then... Uh, I guess we'll just leave it. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> if that doesn't happen, uh, we just wait around and see what happens next. Where is Joe Bearden's sword? We lost the sword. I just think that this whole cave exploration thing has been managed beautifully. It, like, it, it just works very well. And I want Z levels very badly. So I am saying it. Here we go. Come, come everyone. I've run out of silly names for you. Right, um... Oh, whoops! Man. Idiot. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, wow, we have, like, compacted machinery. Who would want to come mine down here? Although, I guess it does yield resources if you, like, win it. You know what I'm saying? Who has the... There we go. You are the one who's supposed to be firing. Please fire. There we go, that's much better. That's what I had intended, actually. All right, I just have to search a few more of these caverns now. They don't seem to be spawning from the flesh bulbs, though. Maybe we just haven't given them enough time. Here, here we go, sussy back at the second. You will be. <laughs> don't give someone with that name. Oh no, you have the Hellcat, Never mind. Oh, I have found it. It's the Dreadmeld. It has been released. Finally! Regeneration impossible, an impossibly fast rate of regeneration. Will heal, heal never, nearly every wound in Does that mean that we need- Okay, 350 HP per day. Maybe we need to destroy it. Where, where is the source of its healing, though? Supported by a distant arco-technical engine. Let's try it anyway. So far throughout this playthrough, that has- been successful as a strategy. Just do it anyway against logical um, explanations. Let's hide behind its own flesh walls and use them against it. This is so gross, man. Like, I'm actually uh, slightly perturbed. Okay, we are dealing damage to it, though. That is a good sign. Provoke pit gate. Whoa. Very cool. So this is one of the most advanced. Performance like it causes underground flesh beeps. Okay, so we can just open up another one of these at will. I don't know why you would want that. Like, yeah. Anything but that, man. Here, uh, God. Uh, they really are truly abominable. I feel as though we're going about... We are... It's not even just that I feel, it's just that this thing is going to keep releasing so many of them. I will die on this hill, though, you know that. I would die to the flesh beast. Just to... Maybe not. Retreat. They aren't fast. That's the... I mean, some of them are fast, but the, the strong ones aren't fast. Don't set your own people on fire. Flare them, even if it means slightly damaging yourself. There we go. That's what I meant to do. Don't use the Hellcat on us. This is like as bad as it gets, man. Uh, okay, you are the one with the fire weapon. Keep using the fire weapon on it. Headshot. Everything is its head. All right, it is very weak to fire. Keep that in mind. Good. It seems to be defeated. The undercave is uns- Its death has shocked the flesh mass and caused the cave system to destabilize. The flesh mass that supported the cavern is already beginning to deteriorate. Within half a day, the entire cavern will collapse! Get out of the undercave before it's too late. Okay. 
Uh, oh no, we might have to leave someone down here. Hang on a second. Just, uh, take out whatever's left. There appears to be another bulb freak around. No man left behind or woman, as it happens. Oh god, it would be awful if we all died. We might all die. We, we won't, will we? Get out, furry boy, Hakuja, and and Angela. Get out, everyone, and even bring Clayton with the Molotov cocktail. No, don't do that. Just leave him as the souls. I would rather that he go on and live a happy life. Um, but bring everyone else with all of their like Western weapons for some reason, in case if we have to liberate our own people. This is. We were horribly unprepared, but this was the Deus Ex Machina ending to the VOD that I had planned. If uh, if I do die, hang on a second. Hellcat burner. I need to save you at the very least. Oh, no. Very well. Use it on no one then. Who has anything left? Okay, try to just send out one of these things to hit n anyone but me. Anyone but me. There we go. I've stunned it, though they keep multiplying. This is what I'm s this is what I've been saying, man. Right, get out of there. Save the chi- Oh no! Cruncher has gone further into the cave and the fire! Oh, this is- uh, Unfortunately, we have no emotional attachment to this character at all! Uh, um... Okay, just run! Just run away! No, someone stay though to maybe try to get him out. Although it's already 34 degrees Celsius down here and I'm told that's very hot, although as an American I really don't have a- Felt sense of how strong that is, Carry Crunch. Try to save him for no particular reason. I still have no emotional attachment to either of these characters. Somehow you did it. Okay, save the day. That was sort of cool. It was decent. It was. It was pretty sweet. I, I gotta say though, like that was very cinematic, considering that this is just. Like, emergent gameplay. Look at this man, collapsing flesh cave. It's about, this. like, you knew that Tynan, when he created this game, he wanted to create that all along, I'll bet, you know? Like, he didn't have normal colony manager in mind. It was like, um, like, how long until I can create, like, this beautiful sci-fi masterpiece. Listen to the music. All newly orchestrated. For this, it sounds really, really good. Oh, my heart is not ready. Now, like, I know that there are more things to do in Anomaly. That is... Yeah, what do, actually, what have we got so far? Anomaly. I've got about half the technology. I haven't really hit all of the late game stuff. But if I look into the entity... Oh, wow, I... Actually, that was only the pit gate. There is still a lot more. That's about as far as I can take it for one big VOD. Um, let me know if you want to see more, and I will take this colony further. But that's about what I planned on doing, because I did want to get out some coverage of this uh, within the week of release, and it has just taken me that long to record it all, because there is a lot of content to it. So I'm actually going to leave it there. Um, I, I streamed the first part, but my internet has been crazy, so um, if you've been watching, you know I am dealing with, like, potato internet right now, so I just did most of it on my own, and there was also just a lot of grindy bits to do, so I thought I would edit that out, so most of this has been edited out, and it was just me doing research. However, this colony is very, very far along, um, but it was kind of like a labor to get it here, but I really enjoyed it. I think that this is a great DLC. It's one of the few that I got really far along in um just going along royalty it eh, felt kind of like i eh, didn't i mean it was a good first dlc i thought ideology was really good after that i think biotech was even better and i think that this one isn't like as groundbreaking as biotech but is very playable and is very fun so i've enjoyed it um this closure i did receive the key for free but i also have 800 total hours in rimworld um so there is that, and I would have bought it anyway, so, um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know, I, I hope this is an endorsement. If you do enjoy RimWorld, uh, you probably already made the decision for yourself, but, yeah, I mean, that is to say, I like it, and I like it more than I thought I would. Um, I also really like the 1.5 updates, um, but yeah, I think that's about all that I have to say about that. 
I don't want to do everything unless if you guys ask, or maybe a little bit after, but yeah. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed. Uh, this one goes out to Joe Bearden saving the colony with his immortal neck beard. And we can actually keep Orochimaroing people, so we can keep them alive indefinitely now in this game. Um, really cool stuff. Really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, Tynan. Um, and Enco at Ludeon. Now it is a team effort, really. It is a big team. But, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this series or just video or segment or whatever it's been. And, uh, yeah, until next time. <laughs>